And good Wednesday morning to you from the Fox 9 Streaming Center. Thank you for joining us across our Fox 9 digital platforms on this Wednesday. I am Paul Bloom, and this is our Fox 9 gavel to gavel coverage of the Apple River stabbing trial in St. Croix County, Wisconsin. We are getting started in just a few minutes uh, to get you ready for day three of this high stakes trial. Court is expected to resume at the top of the hour. And we, of course, will be monitoring the courtroom feed to ensure you do not miss a moment. As state prosecutors continue to make their case that the stabbings on the river nearly two years ago were a senseless, avoidable, intentional act to kill and injure. The defendant here on your screen, Nikolai Miu, now 54 years old, is facing five total counts. First degree intentional murder for the slaying of 17-year-old Isaac Schumann and four other counts of attempted first degree homicide for the four others stabbed that day, A.J. Martin, Riley Matson, and brothers Tony and Dante Carlson. And one of the more dramatic moments in court so far, Dante Carlson, who testified he initially wanted to play peacemaker and sort out the seemingly escalating confrontation between Miu and a group of teen tubers on the river that day, instead ended up right in the middle of the violent exchange. He told the jury he was stabbed and then stood up to show them his scar on Tuesday. At some point, are you stabbed? Yes. Um, I was pushed away and then I heard screaming going on behind me, so I had turned around and then I was looking at Nick and he was standing maybe six feet in front of me. He just walked towards me and stabbed me. And what do you recall happening after that? Uh, I went to my dad. Did you see what Nikolai did after that? No. Do you, do you have a memory of the sequence of when people were stabbed? Um, at first, I thought it was Riley, uh, me, Isaac, AJ, and then my brother. But as video has shown, that wasn't the order. So when you, when you were interviewed by law enforcement when you're trying to remember and tell them what happened? I yes. believe that's the order I had used. I can't exactly say I was. Were you in the hospital when you were interviewed? Yeah. It was the same day of the stabbings? I think I was at the hospital for maybe two minutes before I was interviewed. <clears throat> so at the scene, were you, how'd you get to the hospital? Were you rushed away in an ambulance? Uh, I remember leaning up against the cop car and then coming to, I was in an ambulance. And then the next thing I know is on the highway being put into, I think, a helicopter. Where were you stabbed? Uh, in my lower abdomen, I guess, my lower chest area. Can you stand up and just point? Um, right here. I mean, I can show you if you want. Are you comfortable showing your, you have a scar? Yeah. It shows the exact spot? Yeah. Is that, looks like a little bit off the center to the left, right below your rib cage? Right below my rib cage, yeah. In the jury seat? Dante Carlson, so far one of nine witnesses the state has called. Uh, we have this graphic uh, we've created on your page just to walk you through in case you've missed any of the testimony. Uh, begin upper top left, that is Stephen Kaufman. He was the very first state witness uh, after opening statements Monday afternoon. He's a campground owner along the Apple River. Ryan Nelson, a fellow tuber seen uh, in the video uh, of the uh, altercation with Nikolai Miu. Uh, and then yesterday morning, the emotion of Alina Hernandez, of course, Isaac Schumann's mom. She was uh, out for lunch in, in Stillwater, where the family lived, when she got a call from one of Isaac's friends uh, with that uh, he had been stabbed. She described a 10-minute drive uh, speed, speeding over uh, to the Apple River, only to find her son uh, deceased along the river banks. Her uh, testimony, heartbreaking, um, just a very emotional uh, uh, 15 or so minutes she was on the stand. Uh, next to her, Juwan Cockfield, close friend, a longtime friend of Isaac Schumann. 
now goes to St. John's University, college football player, wrestler he talked about, but the reason why he's so important is he shoots the cell phone video that captures the three and a half minutes or so uh, the encounter, his testimony crucial. Then as we come down to the bottom of the screen, uh, Madison Cohen, she elected not to have the TV cameras, uh, any photographs taken of her in court. That's a screen grab uh, from uh, the exhibits, from the cell phone video. Uh, it's believed uh, Nikolai Miu struck her uh, at some point in the physical confrontation that really ratcheted up uh, what would end up happening with Miu taking out the knife and then the subsequent stabbings. And then again, Alexander Vang, a close friend of Isaac Schumann, Dante's dad, Quentin. We learned it was his birthday that day on the river. His family and some friends were out uh, hoping to enjoy and celebrate their birthday, Quentin's birthday. Uh, when they came upon the Miu Stillwater teen encounter, he sent over his two sons, Dante and Tony. We have not heard from Tony. I assume we'll hear from Tony Carlson on the witness stand today. And then finally, late yesterday, uh, Landon Wire, another one of those Stillwater teens with Isaac. Uh, with that, uh, I think it's important to, uh, again, be we're monitoring the courtroom. Uh, we do see a little bit of activity, but uh, we have not gone on the record at this point. Uh, not all of the parties are in there just yet. I see. Uh, uh, one of the state prosecutors, one of the defense attorneys will get into the courtroom just as soon as it begins. But uh, let's go back yesterday. The man, the young man who shot the cell phone video, Jawan Cockfield. Uh, we uh, queued up some of his witness testimony, both on direct examination from the state and then the defense's incredulous cross-examination, asking him why he shot the video. Why was he yelling at Miu? Why was he calling him names? Here's Juwan Cockfield. Uh, why did you start recording this? Because uh, he was just kind of looking suspicious from what I was seeing. All right, did, was he, uh, you saw in the video that he was standing a ways away from your group? Mm-hmm. Is that yes? Yeah. Uh, had he been closer at some point when you started the video? Did you uh, not during that recording, no. All right. Like the first one. Okay. Uh, did you hear yourself say he's he's a, a raper? Yeah. What was that all about? Uh, he had said like a weird comment. That's kind of why I started recording in the first place. Like, cause he was having his snorkel and it was like two feet deep water. So like, like, what are you doing? And then he just said like a weird comment, something about like some little girls. Right. And then, did you have any girls with you in your group? No, I did not have any girls in my group. Did you see any other girls on the river here where you pulled? Uh, yeah, there were some girls on the river. Uh, child age girls or? Uh, not that I saw, no. Did you know Mr. Mew at all? No. Did you know whether he was a pedophile or anything like that? No, I didn't. Were you making some conclusions based on what you saw him doing? Yeah. There's some leaving. Sustained. Um, <laughs> after you, you said he was a raper, did he uh, come closer to your group? Yeah. Uh, did you restart your recording? Yeah, because after I said that, I like looked away and was like, whoa, whoa, because he looks really scary when he looked at us. And then I, uh, like, we floated up a little bit. And then, you say he looked real scary. Like, when I said that, I, you could see, like, his face look at me, and, like, you could see me go, like, oh, and then I got scared and then stopped did recording. You, did you appear to be angry that you called yeah. him a raper? Yeah. Objection, yeah. Objection. One at a time, please. Yeah. Objection sustained. All right. Uh, when you saw a look on his face, did you start recording again? Yep. And the second video, was it how long after the first video? Did Probably like 10 seconds. We had just floated a little bit further. He's moved out of your path. So your group can just go right by. True. I mean, that group came over to help us, so why would we just leave them? I want you to listen to my question. Can I hear it? He moves over so your group can go past. Is that why he moved over? I'm not asking you that. Okay. I'm asking you, you said you wanted, you were yelling for him to get away. Huh? You wanted him to get away. Yes. You said he was standing in your path, right? Yes. He moves over out of your path. Yes. So your group, you have to be excited because your group now can go right by, right? I mean, we could float by, yes. You could have floated by. Yes. But you didn't. Yes. You stayed. Yes. Okay. And you stayed as this other group comes over. Yes. Okay. And you, on 
on tape, yelled to this blonde, he's looking for little girls. Yes. You don't have that information. He said that. I remember right. him saying that. So he said that. Saying. Hold on. You don't have that on tape. Okay. True. True. It was not on my video. And you never told that to the police. True? True. Okay. When she comes over and you choose to stay instead of actually moving on with your trip, mm -hmm. you hear her yelling at him, right? Yes. Okay. And she's... Ryan Nelson described her as being in his face. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, and her name is Madison Cohen. Okay, just so you know. So you would agree that Madison Cohen is in Mr. Mew's face, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And you would agree she appears to be angry, true? Uh, yes, or concerned at least. I'm sorry? Concerned at least, yes. You don't tell her what's going on. You just say he said he's looking for little girls, right? Yes. Okay. So instead of trying to explain the situation, you're just yelling at her, saying this is what he said. Right? Yelling to her what the situation is, which would be considered explaining, kind of. So what's the situation? He said he was looking for little girls. So I told them, like, that's the main concern of the situation. And then he ran after us. So, yeah. And... It he ran after you, and instead of passing, you stay and tell her that, right? Yes. Okay. Here one moment to log in. And, then we'll and we'll just take you right into court after listening to Juwan Cockfield's testimony from yesterday. Judge Michael Waterman there on the bench. Nikolai Miu in his chair there at the end of the defense table. This day three of the Apple River stabbing trial, St. Croix County. All right, uh, we're back on the record in state of Wisconsin versus Nikolai Miu. Uh, 2022 CF 518. Uh, Mr. Anderson and Mr. Smestad appear for the state. Mr. Nelson, Mr. Trophacy are present. They represent Mr. Mew, who is also present. Uh, we are ready to begin day three. Uh, I understand that there is an issue or two that the attorneys want to address with me. Yes, Judge. And I don't know if Your Honor would prefer to take it up now or later, but so the state anticipates calling Sandra Mew this afternoon. Um, when we spoke with her, she brought up spousal privilege. I know defense can assert it. Uh, I expect she'd be at or shortly after 1 o'clock, so I don't know if you'd rather discuss those issues now or wait until this afternoon. Mr. Nelson, Mr. Shroffacy, your thoughts? Uh, if we could do that this afternoon, that'd be great. Okay. Um, I appreciate bringing it to our attention. Um, why don't we, maybe, you're planning out one o'clock? I think one o'clock, or we might have a short witness before her, but so maybe we just bring it up at one o'clock, talk about it. We should talk about it before one, but we've got a lunch break in between where we can possibly okay. uh, uh, address it amongst ourselves. <coughs> All right, was there something else? That's it for now, Judge. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Smesta, I understand you're not feeling well. I'm not, Your Honor. If I leave, that's why, and I'm, I apologize in advance if that happens. Okay. I'll, what I'll simply do then is just uh, indicate to the jury that you're not feeling well, and you may excuse yourself, just so they're not wondering why you're suddenly. I don't expect the it to be an issue, but I just wanted to let the court know. Thank you. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Let's bring the jury in. <clears throat>
please be seated. Oh, your chair's in the front. There you go. Welcome back, members of the jury. Uh, thank you for being prompt. Uh, it allows us to get uh, started right away this morning. Um, before we uh, take up the next witness, I just have a couple of announcements. Uh, first, I want to welcome uh, one of our newer bailiffs, uh, Jean Myers. Uh, you probably met Jean down in the assembly room. Um, this is her first jury trial, correct? So she is shadowing uh, Warren, who is our most experienced bailiff, uh, to learn from him today. So welcome to Branch 4, Jean. Um, I was also told this morning that Mr. Smestad is, is feeling ill, uh, so he may uh, excuse himself uh, during the trial. So I just don't want you wondering why he suddenly gets up and leaves the courtroom. Uh, so that's uh, the reason, if it happens. Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? State calls Anthony Carlson. Okay, Mr. Carlson, please come forward. A little closer, all the way up. There you go. Face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall so be that? Yes, sir. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can we actually approach real quick, Judge? There's one thing I forgot to mention. Yes. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Anthony Carlson. And Anthony, do you go by a nickname? Tony. Tony, um, how old are you? 24. And are you Dante Carlson's older brother? Yes. What city and state do you live in? St. Paul in Minnesota. And do you work? Yes. What do you do for work? Uh, I work at a lot for Recovery Industries. Is that a solar industry? Uh, no, Recovery Industries is a towing company. Okay. <clears throat> and you were tubing with your brother and other people on July 30, 2022? Yes. And at some point, did you notice, were you alerted to something going on on the river? Yeah. Can you describe what you remember about that? Uh, we were just floating down the river, and then we heard some screaming across the river, and then eventually I do remember them yelling it for help. And at first we sat there for a moment, and then my father said to go over there and help or, like, de-escalate the situation. And as I was going over there, I mean, I saw someone get hit, someone screamed, don't hit a girl, and then... Everything else ensued. And did you actually go over there and try to de-escalate, break things up? Yes. As I, as I went over there, I started uh, yelling at people to back up and get away. I don't remember exactly who I was yelling at. I know I was yelling at everyone in the situation, not just one side or the other. And, Tony, were you uh, drinking on the river? Yes. And... If your medical records say your BAC was 0 0.119, would that sound about right? Uh, yes. I don't, I don't know exactly, uh, you know, BAC and how it works. Okay. Do you think you're intoxicated? Yes. 
Uh, I would like to. I want to go through some frames with you. Okay. This is frame two five five six. I'm just gonna scroll through a little bit. Stopping at two five six three. Do you see yourself in that image? I do. And uh, which one are you? Uh, wearing the jean shorts in the back in front of Quentin Carlson and behind AJ Martin. Okay. You're just walking up at this point? Yes, yeah, trying to figure out what's going on. I just heard a bunch of yelling and such. All right. You can mute the screen. This is frame 2779. I'm going to scroll through and then ask you some questions. I'm going to stop at I'm going to pause here at 2826. Is that you walking by? Yes. <clears throat> and 2844, looks like you're getting between Mr. Mew and the guy filming? Yes. And I, and you, what, what did you say you're yelling at people to do? I was yelling at them to back up and get away. It looks like, I'm on 2900, it looks like up to this point, your attention was to somebody off to the right, now you're turning back towards Mr. Mew? Uh, I was turning back towards the group, yeah, to see who else needed to be, you know, if anybody was still escalating anything or what was going on, I was just trying to separate everyone.
and I'm gonna back up here at 2924. Looks like you're pointing and yelling at something in the direction of Mr. Mew. Yeah, um, I mean, from my recollection, I saw him like walking up towards the others, so I was going to him to tell him to stop and to walk away or get away. Mr. Anderson, I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Oh, sorry. Can you use the mic or speak up, please? Sure. Thank you. And what are you doing at this point in the video? Uh, there was a lot of yelling going on, and I was telling him to walk away, but it looked like he was walking up to the girls in my group, so I was trying to get his attention, so I just put my hand on his back. And I, for the record, I paused there at 2958. So after you put your hands on his back, telling him to walk away, what happened? Uh, at the time, I thought he was going in to try and punch me, so I tried to like, hit his hand down, and then, I mean, he went at me again. And did you act were you actually able to hit his hand away the first time? Um, yeah, I mean, it, like, I knocked it down, and then um, I have a scar right here from when I knocked it down. The knife hit and just scratched, and then after that, he came again and stabbed me. Like I said, at the time, I didn't know. I thought it was just a punch. Did you think, did you realize anyone was getting stabbed at that point? No. So what kind of fight did you think you were breaking up? I, I mean, I just thought it was, you know, something other, or like they were yelling at each other about something. I didn't know exactly what, but I was just trying to de-escalate it. And did you, did you see Madison Cohen get punched? I didn't see necessarily her get punched, but I did hear, uh, you don't ever hit a woman. Permission to approach? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's been marked as Exhibit 35. What is that? That is the scar from when I blocked the knife down. <clears throat> and is there something above that? Yeah, this stab wound. So, um, I'd, I'd move to admit and pub ask to publish, Judge. Objection. Okay, it's received. Go ahead and publish. I'm going to do it on my computer. I'll let the clerk know when I'm ready. All right, can we show my screen? So you, you said one time you kind of blocked it. Uh, which, which injury is that on here? Uh, the lower one. The one that kind of looks like a V? Yep. And then yes. did one strike actually was penetrate? Yes. And where's that one? Uh, under the bandage there. It looks like, is, it, is this after you're at the hospital? Uh, this is right as I'm leaving the hospital, yes. If you know, is that, is it look like it's bleeding through the Band-Aid, or is that just the tone of the Band-Aid, do you know? No, it was bleeding a little bit through the Band-Aid from the stitches. <clears throat> Did you, um, did you, do you remember ever seeing the ni a knife in Nikolai's hand? No. And is, have you watched and listened to the portion of the video that I just went through with you? Um, yeah, if you would like, you can play it again, though. 
do you do you um, hear yourself in that video saying back up or get back something like that? I believe I do, yeah. Okay, could I have the screen, please? Back to the frames. While I'm doing this, Tony, um, is it fair your memory is not perfect from that day? No. <clears throat> is there a lot you don't remember? Yes. Okay, I'm on 2942. Scroll through. So, at this point, two nine five nine. Are you off screen to the right? Yes, I can see my left hand and uh, right over his shoulder. Okay, and you don't know the guy's name who's filming, right? No. So you got the, I'm just going to put a C for it. Should we have a package of fresh markers in there? Yeah, open them up and use them. I'm just going to put a C for cameraman, fair? Yep. And so if that camera is 
facing that way. And then you got the frame. You got you somewhere there and you're somewhere off to the right of the frame. Uh, can, can I see the, the screen back up? Yeah. Okay. That is correct. I just put a T for Tony, but I wrote it sideways. I want to keep Did it. Did you see the diagram? <coughs> I'm going to keep scrolling here. Now, at 2993, um, those aren't your hands, are they? No. Do you know who was there? Uh, now I do, yes. Okay. At the time, you didn't know who that was? No. So now, you, now you know it to be Isaac, but you had no yes. idea who it was? at the moment. So, would he have been kind of just to your left? It just seems, yeah. Foundation. Sustained. Well, Earl, a few frames ago, you were off. Were you off frame to the right? Yes. Isaac here is off frame to the right. Yes. Objection. He has no foundation. He doesn't have a memory. If I well, hold on, hold on. I'll, sustain, I'll, sustain on foundation, but I think. Oh, the questions are being being framed in a way that's leading us to this place. Sure. If you can just rephrase your rephrase your questions, it might help. Judge, I'll I'll just move on. All right, you can take it down. So I want to. I forgot to ask you a clarifying question about your that the V-shaped wound. Um, so do you remember how his hand came at you when you kind of blocked it away? Um, I mean, it, it went like this, but at first, I mean, I just thought it was a punch. I didn't. I think he was just going for a low jab, but uh, I tried hitting it down with my arm. And okay. then he came back up. The second one is the one that got you higher? Yes. Do you remember um, telling law enforcement that after he, Nikolai, stabbed you, you punched him? I do. And is that on the video? No. Do you believe you're mistaken on that? Yes. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Thank you. Sir, you said you're, uh, you were intoxicated, though, right? Yes. Um, you were with a, uh, some of your family and other friends, correct? Yes. You were there on the river um, celebrating, correct? For my father's birthday, yes. Um, you were also there with Madison Cohen? Yes. Um, celebrating her birthday as well? I mean, I came there for my father's birthday. Understood. Um, yeah, no judgment in it, but others were celebrating her birthday, correct? Yes. She was celebrating her own birthday, correct? Yes. Um, there's a photo that I think we've seen of the ten of you standing on there on the river. Have you seen that photo? Yep. You remember that yes. photo? Yes. Uh, you and I think three or four other people are uh, holding a beer up to your lips, and it looks like you're consuming the beer at that time. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, part of that photo was to document your guys drinking alcohol, correct? I'm going to object on waste of time. I'm sorry. I'm going to object on waste of time, and I think it's cumulative. It's established. I, I got this witness. Overruled. Um, you were document the, the photo was to document all of you together, correct? 
Yes. And for whatever reason, four of you decided that when the photo was taken, you wanted to make sure that you were drinking a beer, right? Yes. Okay. Fair to say that you wanted to document your drinking beer. It was not it's more or less that we wanted to document it. It was just that we were having a fun time with our family. Sure. And in that moment, we all just made the decision to have it set. Okay. And um, you have a brother, Dante, right? Yes. You're, a little, you're older than him? Yes. A little bigger than him? Yes. Uh, he was drinking? Yes. You were drinking? Yes. A.J. Martin was drinking? Yes. Riley Madison was drinking? Yes. Madison Cohen was drinking? Yes. Again, I'm sure you weren't keeping track of everybody else, but it looked like everybody else was consuming at about the same rate that you were consuming? No. Do you know who was doing what? I don't, know. Okay. Um, so they could have been drinking more, they could have been drinking the same, they could have been drinking less, you don't know? Uh, based off of knowing them in the past, I know they don't. Okay. You're the bigger consumer? Yes. Okay. Um, you talked to the police um, when you got out of the, that same day, or the next day on July 31st, is that right? I believe it was the same day. That I, I don't remember exactly. You didn't stay overnight in the hospital? I, I don't believe so. Okay. So it must have been the same day and I got my date wrong, which is fine. But you did speak with the police, right? Yes. And you realized that that's uh, recorded, correct? Yep. And if you, as part of your preparation for this, did you get a chance to watch that recording? No. They didn't show you that? Uh, I believe they did uh, a while back, but I don't, I don't remember it now. Okay. I just want to go over some of the things that you said to the police then to see if those, how they track with today, okay? Okay. Um, one of the first things that you said to them is, um, I don't remember much about it. You told them that, correct? Yes. You also said, uh, I don't remember a lot, but what I remember is floating down the river, and then you started to give some of the details, or some of the overview of what you remember. I believe so. Makes sense? But again, you said the second time, I don't remember a lot, right? Yes. Um, and you spoke about that for about 30 seconds to 60 seconds, and then at around the four-minute mark, you said, that's all I remember. Agreed? I don't remember, so I, I don't know. And right after that, you were telling them that you have a certain medical condition. Is that right? Yes. You do have a medical condition, correct? Yes. And I don't want to pry too much, I, but it results in your having the potential for seizures, correct? Yes. Um, and obviously you're aware of that, correct? Yes. And I would imagine that medical condition uh, probably changes how you go through life, correct? I would say yes. You try to avoid certain things because of this fragility that you may have, correct? No. You, you don't want to have seizures, right? Yes. And there are certain things that you know maybe make you more vulnerable to seizures, correct? Yes. And I would imagine you probably go through life trying to avoid those instances in which you would put yourself at risk of a seizure, correct? What, what are these instances? I, I don't know. It's not my Wait, yeah, stop, stop, please. I've got three people talking at the same oh, time. Okay. I can't have that. And you have to speak up, Carl. Sure, I, can't, I can barely hear you. I have even lost track where we are. He says, well, let me just go. Start let me over. Skip ahead and go to something. This condition, you told the police, um, you said, uh, I was on the verge of having a seizure, and every time I have one, I just don't remember anything, and I was blanking out a lot. That's what you told the police, correct? Yeah, if that's what the report says, I don't remember. Okay. Um, you don't remember telling them, you don't remember that you blanked out. Yes. Okay. Um, your experience is, though, when you're on the verge of having a seizure, that impacts your ability to remember things, correct? After I have the seizure, yes. Okay. Sure. It, then your, whatever your memory was, it's kind of erased, right? Not erased. I mean, once things are explained, I do re reconcile throughout my memory a bit, and then okay. it is brought up. In and is it actual? Is it in a memory, or do you just deduce what must have happened by using deductive reasoning? 
or do you actually have a memory in your head of seeing something of that happen? When, when certain things are brought up, I do have slight memories of things like reconciling in my brain. Okay. But what you told the police is you were blanking out a lot, correct? If that's what the report says, yes. And that's, as you sit here today, you remember that you told the police you were blanking out because you were, in fact, blanking out a lot on July 30th, 2022, when you were on the river in that stressful situation? No. You weren't blanking out? Uh, not in that moment. I mean, obviously, it's been a long time now, so the memories are flawed, I would say, but in that moment when it happened, I was not blanking out or having a seizure onset. So. Do you know why you would have told the police, uh, I just don't remember anything and I was blanking out a lot? Yes, because afterwards I was holding my friend's intestines. And I appreciate that that was a traumatic experience for you. I didn't mean to imply that it was anything but. But what you were saying is the blanking out happened with your dealing with the after effects of this event. The trauma, yes. Okay. Um, All right, I want to go through some of what you said here. Um, what I know for sure is you said you never saw the knife, correct? Correct. Um, you went over there, you must have seen some things, correct? What do you mean by that? Well, we saw the slide where you walk over, and you're kind of coming over late compared to when everybody else is there. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, and when you come over, at some point, you see who you now know is Mr. Mew, get hit, correct? Yes. And you, you see it's your brother that's hitting him, correct? I didn't at the time. Okay. You just knew somebody had hit him, correct? Yes. And you knew, you said, you said, I was yelling at people to back up, I was yelling at everyone, not just one side or the other. That's what you said, correct? Yes. And let's just talk about the sides here for a moment, okay? On the one side, there was 13 people. Agreed? I didn't know at the time, but now I do, yes. And on the other side, there was Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And so when you approach, you see Mr. Mew, the, the member of one, he got hit, correct? I, at the time, I didn't know who had gotten hit. I just was telling everyone to separate. Sure. You saw a person that got hit, correct? Yes. And that person was Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And that person was down in the walk, correct? Yes. And people on the other side continued to hit Mr. Mew, the one person that was down in the water, correct? By the time I was over there, I didn't see that. I was just separating people. But whatever it was you saw at that point, you, you were yelling back up, telling people to stop, correct? Yes, because I saw a large group together. I just saw a you bunch saw of bodies together. I didn't see right. anything specific. And those bodies were all around Mr. Mew, the person who had got hit and was in the water, correct? I didn't know who was surrounding who. Right. Well, you agree that one person can't surround anyone, agreed? Yes. So you agree if there's somebody being surrounded, it would be Mr. Mew, correct? Objection. He has an answer. He said he doesn't know who was being surrounded. Sustained. So I just want to make sure it's clear. You don't know who was being surrounded, but you saw somebody being surrounded, correct? No, I just saw a large group in a, like, a huddled conversation. They were all yelling. Like. Okay. And then did you see this before or after you saw Mr. Mew get hit in, in the water? Like when I saw him, I didn't see him get hit. I just saw someone get hit. Okay. You saw the after effects of someone getting hit. Yes. And what that was is you saw that someone falling into the water. Yes. And then you saw that someone being converged upon by others. Yes. And then you saw that someone essentially being surrounded, correct? Yes. Time-wise. Sustained. We've been through this. And when you see that someone being surrounded, Objection. that's... He said he doesn't remember that. He just uh, answered... Wait, wait, please. Please. Let's get the question out. If there's an objection to the complete question, make it. I'll make a ruling. When you saw that one person being surrounded, that's when you started yelling at people to back up and get away, correct? No. The testimony is you didn't know if anyone was surrounded. You went up to a group of people. 
So it is repetitive, sustained. Next question, please. You had said you were uh, trying to separate everyone. Well, let me take a second. We watched through the slides starting at 2779 through, I think, 2924. Do you remember when he went through those slides? Yes. And at one point there, you said you were trying to separate everyone. You agree that's what you said? Yes. And when you were trying to separate everyone, what at that point you had observed is one person getting hit, correct? I didn't see him getting hit. I just saw that he was on the ground for a moment and I was focused on telling people to back up. What we know is you never saw him with a knife, correct? Yes. So you weren't telling people to back up from him because you were worried about him. You were telling people to back up from him because you wanted them to stop beating him up, right? No, I wanted everyone to step away because I didn't know what the situation was again. And what you saw was someone was getting beaten up. I saw a lot of people around each other. Obviously one was in the water, so I just told them to back up. Now, I want to just go through a couple of other things. You, when you were there, did you hear the you said there's one side and another side. Did you hear one side yelling, predator? I don't recall. Did you hear one side yelling, he's looking for little girls? I believe at one point I heard someone not yell that over to our group. Okay. You don't know whether that's true or not. Agreed? I didn't give it much thought, but no. I do you not just know, know if it's true or not. You just know you heard that, correct? Yes. Whether it's true or not, that's for somebody else to decide. Agreed? Agreed. You... Uh, did you also hear them screaming when you got over there? We got it on camera. We got it on camera. We got it on camera. Did no, you hear I that? I did not hear that. Okay. You don't know whether that's true either. No. You also heard you said um, he hit a woman, correct? Yes. You don't know whether that's true, do you? No, I don't, but I mean. You didn't see it, correct? Correct. All you know is you heard somebody say something on the, re right? Correct? Yes. And if you've watched the recording, correct? Yep. We've heard lots of things on that recording, agreed? Yes. You don't know whether those things that the people said on the recording are true or not, do you? No. If you see it, I would imagine then you know it's true. Hard not to if you see it. Agreed. Um, you, when you spoke with the police, you were asked some questions and you said, uh, on direct, you'd said that you told the police, I punched the guy, correct? Yes. And by the guy, you meant Mr. Mew? Correct. The one, correct? Yes. At that moment, when you told that to the police, you said that because you believed it was true, correct? Yes. <coughs> now, today, 20 months later, you believe it's not true, correct? Yes. And the reason you initially said it, and now, oh, I should say, the reason it's changed is you've watched the video? Yes. Okay. So, for whatever reason, you got it wrong to begin with, correct? Yes. And you could have got it wrong because you were intoxicated, right? That could be one reason. You could have got it wrong because there was a stressful situation, correct? Yes. Uh, you, I can't imagine, but you could have got it wrong because you just told an untruth, correct? Yes. It doesn't sound like you would tell an untruth to say you punched a guy when you didn't. Make sense? Yes. Um, but that could be another reason, correct? Yes. Is there any other reason why you would have said something happened when it didn't happen other than those that I've given you? Well, after, you know, having my memory refreshed with the video, I believed that I thought I had punched him because when he had stabbed me, um, he was pushed back, and in my memory, everything happened so fast, so I just thought maybe that was me that had done that. Okay. And I thought maybe I had punched him. Yeah. And on that day, I'm sure you were still processing all kinds of things out, right? Yes. And on that day, you hadn't had a chance to watch the video, correct? Yes. On that day, when you said those things, you weren't intentionally lying, correct? No, I was not. I think, as you've said already to the jury, like, my memory might be flawed, correct? Yes. Just like, probably like anybody else's memory in that sort of situation, correct? I agree. You might say things that un you don't intend to be a lie, but just are wrong, correct? Yes. Because you're trying to explain this 
traumatic event that happened, correct? Yes. All right. The extent of, we saw the picture of you and there was the scratch on your left hip, right? Yes. And then there was a bandage on your uh, torso on the left side, correct? Correct. Those are all in the front of your body, correct? Mm -hmm. Your injuries were to the front, correct? Yes. They were, they were when the two of you were in contact with each other, facing each other, correct? Yes. And the extent of your injury in that situation was you got two stitches, correct? I don't remember how many stitches I had. Okay. Uh, would the, if you, I told you the medical record said two stitches, would you have anything, reason to disagree with that? I don't remember, so no. Sound about right? Yes. All right. And what we saw in the video, do you have a memory of that, or are you just telling us what you saw in the video? I, I, let me back up. That was a poor question. I want to ask you about the time just before you uh, put your hands on Mr. Mew, okay? Okay. Do you have a memory of that, or are you just, for lack of a better term, and maybe there's a better term, narrating what you see on the video? No, I remember. Okay, so you remember that he's got his back to you, correct? Well, I don't necessarily remember that he had his back to me. I do remember separating everybody, though. It okay. wasn't, you know, intended at one person or the other. It was towards everyone to back away. Okay, so you remember approaching a person, a someone, correct? Yes. And you put your hands on, one hand was on the person's back, correct? I mean, I gave him a light tap because there was a lot of yelling and I was trying to get his attention away from the girls that he was walking towards. the image 2942 up there? Yes. That's you, correct? Yes. That you reaching your left hand out in the direction of what we now know as Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And as I slide forward, that's you pressing your hand up against him, correct? Yes. You can see your hand, your fingers making an indentation in the, his back and his skin there, correct? Yes. And then as we slide through, you put your then right hand on his right upper arm. Agreed? I can't see that. You see your right hand there? I, yes, I do. You see it then going against his arm? It's blocked from the frame, but... Okay. Do you remember pushing him in that moment? No. You would agree that's not gentle what you're doing right now? I would say it is. Okay. And as you're here, this is where we see your face, correct? Yes. Are you now yelling at him? I don't remember what I was saying at the moment. I do remember. I understand the content. The volume was yelling. Agreed? I think I was trying to raise my voice enough to where over everyone else screaming and yelling yes. So you agree that the volume was yelling? Yeah. There may be reasons why you wanted to yell, but you agree you were yelling. I, like I said, I don't remember. The, if you could play it, I could tell you if I was yelling or not. Okay. I apologize. That's all right. Um, and this is where your, you see your hand now on his upper arm on the uh, right side there? With yes, you. I do. And it's this moment where you have come up from Mr. Mew from behind and put your hands on him and if not a push, you've certainly pressed against him. Agreed? Agreed. And it's in this moment when you're coming up from behind, yelling at him, pressing up against him, he's already was previously down in the water. Agreed? I mean, I'm not pressing against him here. I was directing him, I guess, away. Okay. All right. Let me just um, 
turn the screen off for a moment. I want to show you some more pictures of just something before that, okay? This is photo 2831. That's you in the jean shorts, correct? Yes. Yes? Yes. And that's Mr. Mew down in the water to your left? Yes. Uh, you know now as you watch the video that this is the second time he's been pushed down into the water. Agreed? Yes. At that time, you also knew, because you remember seeing... Somebody hit him and pushed him down, then AJ pushed him down. You remember he'd been knocked into the water a second time as well, correct? Jackson, the testimony was he saw. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on up. Let's continue, Mr. Nelson. Thank you. So, continuing questions here on at this time, if you could put yourself back, and I understand you might not be able to, you had knowledge that he'd been knocked down into the water two times. Fair to say? At that moment, I did not know he was knocked down two times. After rewatching the video, yes. Okay. So, it, again, back on July 30th, you know he's down in the water at least, correct? Yes. He's down in the water, right? Yes. And you're near him, correct? Yes. And as I scroll through this, we can see that he reaches his left hand up to grab onto you, correct? Did it, that would appear to be? I didn't know if he was grabbing for me, but sure. I, I don't remember. We don't, you don't know other than it didn't cause you harm, correct? No, Re it did not. It didn't cause you pain, correct? Correct. He may have been trying to grab a hand to lift himself up. He may have been trying to push you over. He may have been trying to slap you. You don't know. It just didn't cause you harm. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Now, just before this, where we see that, it appears as if somebody's kind of pushing you out of the way. Does that look like that's the case? I think I was more or less like traveling through the water and walking my way through them. Sure. And it, we see a, a dark arm pressed up against you, correct? Yes. And we see you making an expression that appears as if you're not liking whatever contact you're receiving. Agreed? No, I think at that point I'm yelling. Okay. Or telling people to back off. You're telling people to back off, right? Yes, everyone. Back off, get away from the guy that's down in the water. I didn't, I was telling everyone to get, get back. Sure. At that point, there's one guy in the water, correct? Yes, but I wasn't focused on that. I was focused on separating everyone. Okay. And now as we scroll through, Mr. Mew here has the knife in his right hand, correct? You see that? Yes. And as you're just before that, that's your foot, that's your body, you're right there, correct? Yep. You are not wounded in that moment, correct? Correct. You're right in his, near him, correct? Correct. He does not reach the knife out and stab you, correct? Looks like he's trying to hold himself up. My question was, he doesn't reach out and stab you, agreed? Agreed. Um, you are not, you don't receive the wound that is the, causes the two stitches until after you've approached him from behind and tried to redirect him while you're yelling, correct? Yes, correct. So it's not until you engage with him that he engages with you. Agreed? Agreed. Nothing else. Mr. Anderson? <sighs> so... You told law enforcement you didn't remember a lot of this. Uh, is that right? Yes. You didn't tell them you didn't remember anything? No. And you did tell them what you, what you did remember? Yes. And you said you blanked out a lot, but not all of it? Yes. 
and did you describe the guy who stabbed you to law enforcement? I don't remember if I did or not. Would it refresh your memory to see the a transcript? Yes. Can I approach? Yes. Page two, just read it and look up when you're done. Does that refresh your memory? Yes. Did you describe what you could remember about him to law enforcement? Uh, he was wearing cargo shorts. And do you describe his age? No. Say, do you describe older or younger? No. Um, I'm going to show you again. You agree you actually did say... Oh, I'm again. sorry. Yes. And do you recall telling law enforcement what you heard specifically when you went over? I just... I believe I said I you never hit a girl, and that's when I reacted. Uh, I, mean, I mean, before you walked over. Like what you heard being yelled that caused people to walk over? Uh, sorry, I'm getting a bit uh, mixed up here. I don't remember now. Okay, would it refresh your memory to see the transcript? Yes. I'll just have to read it to yourself and then look up when you're done. You might have to turn the page. What page are you at, sir? Two, bottom of two. Thank you. Uh, does that refresh your memory on what you heard? Being it yelled? does, actually, yes. What was that? Uh, they did yell help. And this interview was when you were still at the hospital after being transported there? Yes. If that is the transcript from this room. Uh, That's the only interview you called doing with law enforcement, right? Yes. Did you describe to law enforcement about when you got stabbed? I don't remember if I did. Uh, it's it's hard. I apologize. Yeah, My that's right. Not. That's right. I don't want you to be asked. Can we approach? This? Yes. Judge, we're just going to play the interview. Any objection? No objection, Judge. All right. <clears throat> I'll let the clerk know when I'm ready. start at one o'clock to skip past some personal details they go over fair no objection. okay okay i'm ready so starting at the one minute mark okay um just kind of formalities that i've like to everyone know before I ask them questions. Um, I wasn't there, right? So I don't know. Frequently when I talk to people, they say he, she, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you know their names, please use your name. Um, if it's the person that 
stabbed you. Um, I'm fine with you using whatever term you want. A lot of people have been I saying. I the, old, the older guy in the cargo shorts. I, I, I don't know how this is going to go. That's perfect. I gave him um, and then if you can add as much detail as you can, even if you think it's something that I don't, I don't care about, I might. Um, I, I can tell you, I don't remember much, but I'll, I'll tell you yeah, I okay. um, And then also, if I say something that's incorrect, feel free to stop me. Say, no, nope, that's not correct, and correct me, okay? And then if I ask you a question that you don't know the answer to, perfectly acceptable to say, I don't know. Um, I don't want you to just give me an answer because I think I, I want to hear it, okay? Um, now, it sounds like I just learned that we do have video of the incident, um, which is good. But I still want to talk to people and ask them their yep. series of events as, as they portray well, them. Okay? Um, so we can just kind of start from the beginning, uh, go through the middle, all the way to the end with as much detail as, as you can. Well, like I said, I don't remember a lot but what i remember to from the start uh we, we were just floating down the river and you know we were all in our tube at that time uh well not all of us we were some were just standing up in their tube because it was shallow water and we just heard someone scream help and dad taught us you know someone screams help go help and so I, my little brother ran over and and your little brother is Dante. Dante. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, Dante uh, Carlson, he ran over, and as soon as I saw him run over, I got up and started to run over because he's just my little brother. And when I got up out of my tube, my friend AJ Martin, the one that had his stomach sliced open, he ran with me, and he got there before me, and he tried to grab the guy, and the guy, I thought he just punched him, but he swung and sliced his stomach and then I went to go and grab his arm because I didn't want to like have him punch me and like I was I didn't even know there was a knife in his hand and I like went to like grab his hand and uh, his hand stopped like I stopped his hand right. here right. and I felt something help me but I like I had adrenaline rushing through me so I didn't really think twice of it and like I like I punched the guy and like ran away from him and I turned around and I see my friend like literally with his stomach like in his hands and I ran over to help him. And that was AJ? Yep, yeah, AJ, sorry. And I went and grabbed AJ and like there was, I don't remember who was with me, there was some girl, uh, just a random girl I came with and she came over and helped carry him to the shore practically and like lay him down and just I sat with I sat with him, kept his head held, held up, and then that was pretty much it until the paramedics came by and they took him, and then they took me, and that that's all I remember. But that's, I know it's not a lot, or I wish I could help more. But. Do why, and I don't mean this in a demeaning way or, or whatever. But why do you think that? You can't Sorry, remember a lot. Uh, just the stress, the trauma. Know. Did you get some medication so, or uh, something? Yeah, I, I got. I took Keppra, and uh, I have seizures. Okay. And so, like the entire time that it was happening, I was like on the verge of having a seizure. I know. Every time I have one, I just don't remember anything. I just, yeah, I was blanking out. A lot. How do you? How do you feel right now? Do you feel okay now? I mean, I'm fine. I, I took my Keppra and everything, and I just, you know, I'm just shaking. But I'm fine though. Yeah. And where where were you? Let me get to my right page. I assume your injuries are all bandaged up now, right? Yeah. I, he just got me right here with it, and then I think that's like what happened when I like went to block it, and then when he like tried to actually grab it, and that's when I pushed his hand down. That's when it hit me right here, and I can't tell you what happened. It might, it might be a little bit. Um, but, yeah, and then he, well, they they couldn't stitch it completely closed because otherwise it couldn't cause infection and such. So they just put two stitches in it and called it good. But, yeah, no, they said that the, my ribs stopped the knife, I guess, from entering anymore. Do you mind if I take a quick photo of that? No, that's, that's fine. Do you want me? All right, Judge, that's uh, Exhibit 78. Okay, 78 is marked and received. I don't have anything else.
Mr. Nelson? Briefly, um, you can talk about it in that interview, and I just want to make sure your dad told you to go over there, correct? I'm sorry, what? When you were in the twos, before you went over to the other group, where there was a bunch of people that you said, right? Before you went there, your dad had told you something. Agreed? Yes. And one of the, what your dad told you was, go make sure they don't attack that guy. That's what your dad told you. I don't remember what he said exactly. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. You may step down. Is he released? Um, no. All right. Please see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll tell you what to do next. Who is the next witness? Riley Madison. Judge, could we take a short recess? How much time do you need? Less than five minutes. Sure, why not? Uh, five minute recess. Uh, please take the jury out. All right, for the jury. We will resume at 9-10. And good morning again from the Fox 9 streaming studios. I am Paul Bloom. We'll uh, take this moment as the court uh, takes a five minute recess just to uh, reset where we are uh, this morning. Obviously, uh, the latest witness, this is the uh, state's 10th witness, Anthony Tony Carlson. Uh, Tony was with his brother, his father, and a group of about 11 tubers that day. These are, uh, for the most part, uh, uh, young, uh, young, me uh, young men and women, 20-something uh, sort of the young adults uh, that uh, Isaac Schumann's group uh, sort of beckons, asks for help or assistance as they're having their uh, confrontation or encounter with Nikolai Miu on the river on July 30th, uh, 2022. I do want to point out, uh, just before they did take that recess, uh, we learned that the next witness coming up, also another one of those people stabbed, Tony Carlson was stabbed uh, during the encounters, Riley Matson. And I would just point out, if you have been following our Fox 9 uh, coverage of this case over the last nearly two full years, we did speak uh, with Riley Matson uh, via video Zoom at the time uh, when she was at Regions Hospital. Uh, she had her uh, diaphragm badly injured, uh, bad stomach, uh, stab wound. Um, so we have, uh, we have talked to Riley in the past. Uh, so I will be curious now all this time later how she recalls the events of that day. But I do recall her telling me at the time she absolutely responded in that altercation when her friend next to her, Madison Cohen, was, was punched or slapped or hit uh, by Nikolai Miu. But of course, our conversation was not under oath. She will be in this courtroom in mere minutes. Uh, and while we take uh, this break, I am now joined by our legal analyst today, uh, veteran trial attorney Michael Brown. Ryan, thank you so much for checking in with us. Uh, Michael, I don't know, did you catch uh, much of Tony Carlson on the witness stand? I think he's a key figure in the whole altercation, but as you heard there, uh, if you were listening in throughout, uh, apparently has some sort of seizure condition. His memory's not great. Uh, just wondering your quick knee-jerk reaction to his testimony this morning. Well, he, he seemed very uh, competent. He uh, answered the questions. Um, he did forget some things, which is why they played the video of his interview. But overall, I mean, he seemed to tell a story very uh, in line with everything else. I think his dad testified yesterday 
Um, and so he did a good job of just basically going through the, the, the key elements that they needed. Totally agree. Uh, you know, he kind of wanted to play Peacemaker at the very beginning, and I think um, certainly very composed in the body camera footage interview outside the hospital there that they played. That's the first time we have seen sort of that type of video. I'm curious, Mike, as these, uh, as a trial comes together, and, and then obviously none of us are as experienced as you being in that courtroom, uh, but, but th that body camera footage and that in interaction with the police, I thought was absolutely crucial to see. We get a lot of these, especially under cross examination you said this to police you said that to police back in at, at the time why don't they play these these interviews uh, maybe some of them aren't recorded I guess but why not play the interview and just let the jury decide what was said back then rather than oh off of this paper you said this here uh, is there a simple answer to that well in this day and age you know we're seeing more videos um, where we used to get transcripts um, that you know, people gave statements and they're written out. But basically, they're used in one of two ways. They're used to um, to refresh people's memory about what happened. So they go through and they say, "Now that you said this, and this wasn't under oath." You get the the jury will get two instructions: one for statements that were not under oath, and statements that were under oath if there were depositions, which you see in some cases, and you wouldn't probably most likely see in this case, but. Um, they, they're used to, to refresh people's memory or they could be used to impeach somebody. And what that means is you said something different on this date than you're saying today. And why are you saying that different or what's different about what you're saying? And the jury uses all of that to decide credibility of the witness. And Mike, this is your first day joining us. If you've been following along on our live stream, I've tried to have some different experts each day just to get some different takes. So we had a law professor yesterday, a criminal defense attorney on Monday. And I'm just curious, uh, just your gut reaction. I know you've watched this um, cell phone video that's obviously this whole case is really ultimately going to come down to what, what you see on that video, what you don't see. I'm just wondering your, your reaction to what you see in that uh, video. Do you see a, a first degree murder case at this point? Do you see... Uh, a case of self-defense. Where have you fallen on your quick assessment uh, of that three and a half minute video? Well, I mean, that video is going to be interesting. The jury's going to watch it so many times that by the end of it, you know, they'll probably be numb to it. Um, but you know, the video does have different that it does. And, you know, things that are said in what they do, the defense is going to try to keep playing up that the kids were saying these mean things to the guy. Um, but, you know, the reality is, is I think the whole thing is going to be when and if he testifies, which I assume he'll have to. And then we'll see what a jury does with his testimony. And you absolutely agree, right? Uh, he does have to tell his story at some point. Uh, I mean, his, his, his attorney alluded to him telling the jury during opening statements. So um, just with the way this case is developing, this claim of self-defense, he has to he has to tell the jury what he saw what he was thinking why he was so scared what had him so nervous to pull out the knife correct i can't hear anything oh did did we lose you can you hear me I'm yeah sorry. i couldn't hear what you had said yeah we were playing the video so may perhaps the audio interferes with it. i was just saying you just following up on your point of him eventually having to take the stand when the defense gets this case I, I, my gut is he absolutely has to go up on the jury uh, on the witness stand and tell this jury what he saw, what he was thinking, why he was so nervous, um, why he pulled out the knife. Uh, this afternoon we learned uh, his wife or now ex-wife is going to testify. So um, I guess I'm going to have to cut off my question there as Judge Michael Waterman is back on the uh, the bench. Um, so why don't you stick around? We'll see you at the next break, and you can, uh, again, elaborate on why, why uh, Miyu eventually does have to tell his story to this jury. We are back on the record. The attorneys are present. Mr. Mew is present. The jury is present. Let's continue. Um, is Ms. Madison in the courtroom? Okay. Uh, please come forward. That's good. Uh, face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you back? Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson, 
Can you please state your first and last name and spell both? Riley Madison, R-Y-H-L-E-Y-M-A-T-T-I-S-O-N. And Riley, how old are you? I am 25. And how tall are you? 5'5". Five, five. And how much do you weigh? About 110 pounds. And were you about the same in July of 2022? Maybe 115. <clears throat> were you tubing on the river that day with friends? I was. And were you drinking alcohol? I was. Using any other substances? I was smoking marijuana. And do you believe you're intoxicated? <clears throat> I do, yes. Was that your first time tubing on the river? Um, I've been on the river before, but I've started at different points with friends, so I've never really been on that part of the river. Okay. If your medical records say, well, I'll, let's see. What do you, do you remember at some point, um, along the river that something catching your group's attention? Not specifically mine. I was just kind of hanging out with my friends on the tube and we had stopped. Um, and so I kind of asked why we were stopping. Um, and I heard somebody mention something about a group looking uncomfortable. Um, I hadn't got off right away, so. Did you walk over after some other folks? I did. Um, I kind of was like, what's going on? And then I had told Janelle, like, let's kind of go over there and see what's going on. And what do you, do you remember everything sequentially perfectly or is it I, It's very choppy for me. Okay. So what do you remember next? Um, I remember getting off the tube, walking up to Mr. Mayu, um, and I just remember Maddie being there and yelling at him. Um, I remember her being punched in the face. And then I remember being stabbed, and that is completely it. So you don't remember, did, did you see or don't you remember anyone else stabbed? No. Then do you know if it's because you don't remember or you didn't see or? I just, I think I was just focused on myself, doing what I was doing. I was not really paying attention to anybody else at all. And what? When you saw Madison get punched, can you explain that in as much details as you remember? Um, I, I barely really remember that part. I just remember him staring at us and then not saying anything and punching her. And I was just like shocked, like, oh, oh my God. Um, and that I don't, right after that, I, I literally remember being stabbed and that's it, so. With him punching her, do you remember any more details than that? Like what hand he used no, or how the punch all. was? Not at all. And what else do you remember about you getting stabbed? Um, I just remember seeing Nick's face very blank and not lunging at me, but just kind of poking me and I held my side and I was like, ow, like Janelle, I think he punched me. Um, that really hurt, like, and I looked down and I was bleeding out and holding my stomach and it just like, didn't feel real. Like it was just a lot of shock. And from there I was walking around the river asking for help, like just asking somebody to help me. Um, I told Q that I felt like I was dying because I just was losing, like I was losing so much blood and every time I'd walk, I just felt like I was getting weaker and weaker. Um, so another group down the river had put me on a tube and kind of pushed me down to kind of get away, away from the scene. And then um, they were holding my side and just kind of keeping me awake. And then when the cops had showed up, they took me off of the tube and put me on the ground. Um, and I just remember like Janelle coming over, you know, asking me to stay awake and the cops trying to ask me what my name was. Um, and then just being put in the ambulance and going to the hospital. And when you, when you touched your side, do you remember feeling anything? Um, no, I just was, I thought I was punched or something. I didn't really know. I wasn't really paying attention and it, it really didn't hurt. 
Um, but when I looked down, I was instantly like, I believe I was holding my stomach. I think Janelle was coming to help me to hold my stomach and hold my side. Um, and then just blood kind of going. And I didn't, I didn't want to look down because it freaked me out. And I didn't really want to touch it either because I didn't, I just didn't want to feel anything. So I kind of just barely held my hand on it. I just didn't want to feel it. Do you remember telling law enforcement that you felt like something was coming out of the wound when you touched it? I don't remember that. And did you have any So as after you were brought on the tube to shore, you said people were telling you to stay awake. Did yeah, you like just asking me my kind of asking questions and like my name, like who are you, just kind of what's going on, anything that would make me stay awake. Um, and I just remember being super tired and I'm like, I just want to be left alone. Did you have trouble breathing at all? Um, not right away. Uh, slowly but surely I did and then once I get got in the ambulance and actually got to the hospital I like felt like I couldn't breathe at all um, but it was it took a little time before that to actually like happen for me I don't know if I didn't realize it right away but and where where were you brought if you remember when you're brought to shore were you brought to the grass the pavement I was laid right on the blacktop because I remember saying, oh my God, like this burns my back. Um, I believe, I just, I remember the bridge, so I know it was right before like the bridge, but I don't ex like know exactly where, but I know it was up right on the asphalt, I believe on the road that like the cops would drive on and the ambulance and everything. And were there officers or an officer there with you? Um, I believe I had one officer um, holding, helping me kind of put pressure on my side and talking to me, yes. Permission to approach? Yes. Anyone that's been marked as exhibit 68. Um, is that Is that a photo, or is that an image of you on the blacktop? Yeah. Should I move to admit and publish 68? No objection. 68 is received. Go ahead and publish. I'm going to do it digitally. <laughs> Did you mean on your laptop? Yes. I'll tell you when I'm ready. You can take it down. <laughs> Riley, at some point were you transported away from the scene? Yes. Do you remember how? An ambulance. Were you brought to a hospital? Yes. And did you go immediately into surgery? I believe so, yes. Um, 
I just remember the ambulance telling me there's going to be a lot of people asking me questions. Um, and I just remember being put on a bed and that's literally all I remember. I mean, them asking me kind of, you know, who you are, what's your name, what's your birth date, and I wouldn't answer, and I just kept saying I couldn't breathe. And that was the last thing I remember. Until after surgery? Yeah, I barely even remember waking up from surgery. Permission to approach? Yes. Do what's been marked as Exhibit 33. What's that? That is um, the incision where the doctors had to cut me up to put my stomach back in. I'd move to admit and publish. Did we approach? Yes. Judge, we have no objection to the uh, introduction and evidence of Exhibit 33 and Exhibit 79, and no objection to publication. All right, so 33 is received and may be published, and 79 is in your hand? Yes. All right, 79 is received. the screen. And for the record, this is 79. And Riley, what are we seeing in this photo? Um, that is, the bigger one is the stab wound, um, and the little one is from a chest tube. And how about in this one? Um, this is the one where they had to cut me open to get my stomach put back in. And so like here where the mouse is, that's from surgery? That's all from surgery and then the staples. And then on over here? Yep. What's that? The incision wound? This, this stitch is right here. Is that the stab wound? Yep, that's the stab wound. The one we looked at? Prior, yep. Okay. Oh, and are you in the photo? Are you taking this in a mirror? Yes. So the which side is the wound actually on? On my left side. So it's reversed in this photo? Yes. You can turn off the screen.
and I think you testified that you remember him looking at you and then reaching over. Do you, do you recall telling law enforcement you don't remember if you hit him or said something to make him angry? I do remember saying that. Um, I think I was trying to maybe find a reason why he did what he did to me. Um, or, you know, after he had hit Maddie, if I had maybe put my hands on him because he had hit Maddie. I think I was just finding a reason. Do you, from what you remember of being stabbed, do you have any memory of actually hitting him or saying anything? I don't remember saying anything, hitting him, touching him, nothing. I'm going to go through some slides with you. There's some still frames from the video. I'm on 2496, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Riley, are you in that photo or that image? Yes. Okay. Is that your arm there? Yes. Okay. Can you turn off the screen? I'm going to go to a different one. I'm ready. All right, I'm on 2458, and I'm going to scroll through. And actually, th your arm again? Yes. Stopping on 2470. Uh, what are you doing in this image? Um, I'm not sure if I'm just touching his shoulder if I'm going to push him. Twenty four ninety two. have you removed your hand at this point? Yes. Did you see a push? I mean, kind of like a little, I guess I don't know what to call it, but just kind of maybe brushing his shoulder. Um, I guess a push, yes. Do you want to see it again? Objection. Cumulative. Sustained. Sustained. <laughs> Pausing on 2531. Did you see the knife in his hands when you're standing there? I don't remember. Is that your... Do you know if that's your hand or Maddie's no, hand? No, that is Maddie's hand. Okay. How do you tell the nail polish? Yeah, I don't wear nail polish.
And do you see yourself in that image, 2662? I do. To the left of Dante? I do. To the right of Maddie? Yes. Can we mute this, turn off the screen? I'm going to go to another image. We have the screen. This is 2861. Riley, do you see yourself in this image? I do. <clears throat> Where are you? I am standing right behind Nick Miu. What uh, color swimsuit? Uh, blue with flowers. I'm going to scroll. Stopping on 2948, do you see yourself in this image? I do. Holding your side? I do. Let me keep scrolling. And I, you said one of your friends came to your aid after you were stabbed? Uh, yes, Janelle. Is she in this photo? She is. She is in the black swimming suit. Okay, I'm going to keep scrolling. Do you remember retreating or recoiling from Nikolai at that point or no? What do you mean by that? And these, I'll back up a little bit. Okay. So I'm on 3017. Like running away? Yes. Yes. You can turn off the screen. Thank you. Do you remember Nikolai saying anything at all when you were standing in front of him? Not one word. Did you have any indication or did you see anything, hear anything to indicate if he was with a group? I had no idea who he was. I didn't know if he was a part of the group we were going to. I had absolutely no idea. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Yes, thank you, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. I want to ask you some questions about your intoxication and your memory, okay? Okay. You've, you've made lots of statements in this case, is that fair to say? Yes. You spoke to the police a couple of times, correct? Yes. You spoke to uh, Care 11 News, correct? 
Yes. You spoke with Fox 9 News, correct? Yes. And one of the things I think you've consistently said in all of those statements to the police, to the news, is you're basically like, I was drinking a lot. I don't remember much. Correct. Fair to say? Correct. And the reason that you consistently said that is because that's the truth, correct? Correct. You were drinking a lot, right? Correct. You were intoxicated, correct? Correct. Uh, you were also smoking the marijuana. Correct. correct. And that, I'm sure, impacted your ability to perceive things as well as remember things. Agreed? Agreed. Um, and I think what you've used different words to say, like, things are blurry, correct? Yeah, I think I just have kind of like a specific patchy spot that I've been trying to figure out what's what happened in that little spot. Sure. But the words that you used, I think you used on direct, like, you see chunks almost, right? Right. And then also what I'm gathering is the chunks that you do see, those are blurry. Yeah. And then in between the blurry chunks, there's just blank spaces. Correct. Okay. And you don't know whether those blank spaces in your memory are because of intoxication, correct? Correct. Or perhaps because of, uh, imagine that was a stressful event for you? Yes. Even before you were uh, cut with a knife, you, uh, you lacked some memory before that, correct? Yes. And I would imagine some of that before that was a little bit stressful, correct? Yes. Obviously, the stress increased once you were injured, right? Yes. But nevertheless, the stress that you were under may have caused you to not remember certain things, correct? Correct. Um, you've probably talked with lots of, lots of your friends about this event, correct? We've talked, yes. Yeah. This was, and then again, I'm not trying to judge. Just in fairness, this is a life-changing event for you, right? Correct. And for your group of friends, correct? Correct. Imagine when you get together, you chat about it. Yes. Right? People share their experience, correct? Correct. And maybe you help each other process what the experience was, correct? I wouldn't say necessarily process it, just kind of, I mean, in the beginning it was more of like, this is what I remember, like, you know, how, what do you remember? I wouldn't say we were trying to give each other answers, but... But you had gaps in your memory, correct? Yes. And, again, you don't get into specifics, but other people, when you were talking to that, that were there, they had gaps in their memory. Yes. And so sometimes you would share information with each other to try and maybe fill in the gaps, correct? Sometimes, yes, but I never really took what they said and put it together. I just remembered what I remembered in. And I appreciate that. You've been very clear about that. But I just want to make sure that we know that you've, you've got other information, right? Yes. And part of that is because is you want to know what happened, correct? Correct. And there's still some things, as you sit here today, that you don't know, correct? Yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah, all right. Um, and just the human condition, at least for you, is you mm -hmm. want to try to make sense of it, correct? Yes. And sometimes you, I would imagine, like the rest of us, you use deduction to try to put things together, correct? Yes. Even if you don't necessarily have a memory, you try to deduce what it is that happened, right? Yes. And so here in court, when we were talking, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to focus on the memory. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Because um, some of the things you might have said or you might talk about are from things that you've kind of, you think because you've deduced it. Would that be fair? Um. I guess. Sure. Well, let's talk about this. Like one of the, the one of the issues in the case is, um, what happened to Matt, right? Yes. And one of the first things that you told the police is you said, "quote I thought he slapped her because, like I said, it was just kind of not comprehending." You said that to the police, correct? I don't remember, but if I did, yes. And since then, you've said. She was punched, correct? That is correct. And today when you were asked, tell us the details of that, you were like, I just want to make sure I get it correctly. You said, no, not at all. I don't remember the details. I don't. And you've been very honest about that. We appreciate that. What I'm trying to make sure is that when you say you don't remember the details, like you don't have a picture in your head about Maddie getting punched, correct? I shouldn't have said punch because I don't remember if it was a punch or a slap, but I do remember her being hit in the face. Okay, so Mr. Muse had some sort of contact 
with his hand to her face, correct? correct? You don't remember which hand it was? I do not. You don't remember the context under which it was, correct? I do not. You don't remember if it was in response to something that she had done, correct? Correct. Um, and right now, as you say that, you don't have an image, a picture in your mind about what it is that happened, correct? Correct. Fair to say, and again, that what you're telling us is you kind of deduced that something happened to Maddie based upon all of the other circumstances, correct? I know I saw Maddie get hit. Okay. And when you say you know you saw Maddie get hit, you can't put a picture in your mind that you can tell us, though. I cannot. I just know even waking up from surgery, like my story was, I remember that. Sure. And your original story was, at first I thought he slapped her. Like Correct. I said, I don't know if it was a slap or a punch. So. Okay, just some sort of contact. Correct. So I want to walk through some of the things before that, and I know you may or may not have a memory, so we've got the video, right? Yes. And you've been shown that video before? Yes? Sorry. And you've been uh, shown some of the slides before? Yes. And by slides, I mean we broke the video up into different frames. I call them slides. Does that make sense? Yes, I just kind of really saw the video. Um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of the slides other than yesterday when I was here. Okay. Yesterday somebody showed you some slides? No, up, like up on the screen oh. when you guys were doing them. As a, uh, you were just here watching the trial? Correct. Which you have a right to do. Um, and that's when the first time you saw the slides come through, yes. correct? But before that, you haven't been shown the slides? No, just the, like just the video, basically okay. the part of myself. And you... Just to kind of, I want to get us into the space that we, I think, is the important space when you're right in front of him. Okay. And so if I get there too quickly, tell us. But okay. you, Maddie and Dante are there first, correct? And when um, I say there, there's a, let me back up. There's a group of six teenage males, okay. correct? Yes. And then there's Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. And then there's you, got, you're in a group which we'll call the Carlson Cohn group. Is that fair? Okay. And there's about 11 people in that group, correct? Correct. Of your group, the first two people that leave your group to join the other group are Madison Cohen and Dante Carlson, right? Correct. At some point, you go over and join Madison and Dante, correct? Correct. Prior to that, do you have a memory of what you observed? I did not observe anything. I remember coming down the river and our, stu our tubes being stopped. Um, and like I said, I, I just asked what was kind of going on, why we're being stopped. We literally just got back on our tubes. Why, why are we stopping again? Um, and I heard, I don't know who, but somebody say a group looks uncomfortable. Okay. I did not hear anything coming from the back of us from the group. I didn't even see the group. I was not even paying attention to them. I was just hanging out with my friends. Um, and I... You didn't hear anybody call for help, correct? I did not hear anything. And I think what you told the police in one of your interviews is you even questioned some of your friends, like, why are we intervening? Yeah, well, I kind of asked Janelle, like, what's going on? Why? What are they doing? And why? then I was like, let's just get up and kind of go see. Okay. So at some point, you and Janelle and Gabby, you're the next three people that joined Madison and Dante. Is that right? I'm not sure if Gabby came with us, but Janelle and I for sure did. Okay. And do you remember there was a time when you were walking over there? Do you remember Nick Mew standing up and looking upriver and waving his hand? I do not. And do you remember then that as soon as that got done happening, Madison Cohn turned to you and Janelle and she waved her arm to have you guys come over? I don't remember that, but maybe that is why we got up. Does that make sense to you why you went there is because Madison's I mean, like, yes, come yes. on over here, right? Yeah. And then you went over, correct? Yes. And then there were times that we've seen in the video where you're standing in front of Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. Prior to your getting there, would it be fair to say that Madison Cohn was yelling at Mr. Mew? I mean, I didn't hear, like I said, I didn't hear anything. I had no idea of the scene. Did you see her standing in his space? No. Okay. Until I got over there, yes. Once you got over there, you then saw her standing in his space. Yes. And you then saw her, and probably heard her, yelling at him, correct? Yeah, I didn't, I can't really, like I said, I don't make out what she said specifically, but yes. So you don't know the content, but you know the volume was high. Yes. Um, and would it be fair to say that she was in his face? 
Yes. And at some point, as we saw in there, you went up and stood next to Madison, essentially right in front of Mr. Mew as well, correct? Correct. And Dante was, if you're, if you're here, Madison's next to you, Dante's over in this area, fair to say? I did not remember Dante being even around us. Okay. I just remember it being Maddie and I and then Janelle. Okay. And you remember, as we saw on the screen, that when you're standing there, essentially you, you weren't asking questions, right? I don't think I asked questions. I, yeah. I might have yelled, you know, the same things they were yelling, but I sure. don't remember. And so while you went over there with the intent to figure out what was going on, as soon as you got there and you saw Maddie doing something, you basically joined her, right? I think that's exactly what I did, yes. Yeah. You just, whatever my friend is doing, I'm going to join her and do the same thing, correct? Not just Maddie, but everybody else kind of yelling. I think yeah. maybe I was listening to everybody else yelling, and I just kind of... Joined the crowd. Joined the crowd, yeah. Yep. Um, that's sometimes what happens in a crowd. Yes. you agree? Yes. Um, and when you joined the crowd in that situation we saw on there, that's when you reached out and started putting your hands on Mr. Mew, correct? I don't remember putting my hands on him, but in the video, yes. You saw yourself, and as you described it, you kind of kind of pushed him, as I think the words that you used, right? Yeah, I mean, I can't really tell. I just see my hand, you know, on his shoulder, and I don't really see him fall back or anything, no. but... But it, it, it moves his person, not his feet. Right. Right? And then, uh, I don't know if you... Do you remember then standing next to you, as you're doing that with the left hand, Madison Cohen is putting her right hand on his left shoulder Correct. and pushing him back as well. Correct. Correct. And that, I think on the still frames, it's hard to know, but that's at around the 144 second mark. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's at about 145 where we see the picture of Mr. Mew standing there with uh, the knife in his hand in front of him, correct? Yes. So he's not hiding it, agreed? Agreed. You, for whatever reason, didn't see it, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, and it's while he's standing there holding the knife, with, that's the time that you're pushing him on the one side, and then just after that, Madison Cohen's pushing him on the other side, correct? I believe so. And it's a right around there, too, in the middle of that, where he raises his left hand and calls back to his upriver to other people, correct? I, I mean, in the video, yes, but I don't remember okay. that. In that moment... I'm just going to jump down the line of question. I think the video speaks for itself. He's entitled to ask questions. <clears throat> Overruled. In that moment, did you understand that the man that you're standing in front of who's looking past you is waving to people behind you? I did not. Okay. Did you ever think, hey, maybe I should just let him go in that direction? I mean, I'm 110 pounds. I feel like he could have walked right past me. He could have, um, right? Um, you don't know who was to your left, correct? Correct. <clears throat> There's a group of six teenagers there. Correct. And those six teenagers are screaming, predator, 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 correct? I didn't hear that, but in the video, yes. And to your right is Madison Cohen. Correct. And somewhere around in that area is Dante Carlson. Correct. Anthony Carlson. Correct. A.J. Martin, correct? Correct. So it wasn't just you, 110 pound. No, but at that moment, it was Maddie and I, so I just mean he could have walked around. But At least that's what's captured on the camera, right. correct? We again, we've seen some other. Um, Can I have exhibit one hundred four, one hundred five? Yeah, permission to publish one hundred four, Judge. Yes. Exhibit number one zero. Oops, I gotta. That didn't work well. You said you were here in court yesterday? I was. Did you see exhibit number 105 when we talked about that? I believe so. There's been a lot, so sure. Yes. Um, and you can you can't see on here, but um, 
This is uh, from frame 2592 at a minute 49. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm sorry, is this 105 or 104? This is 104, Judge. Thank okay. you. I apologize. And you see the uh, red J, the red circle with JC in it, with an arrow around it. Correct? I do. That appears to be about the camera angle, correct? Yes. So again, there may have been other people not photoed, not in the photo, but they'd be around that area, correct? Correct. You have every, you have no reason to disagree with the positioning of people in this at that time, correct? Correct. Okay. So. After the, he gestures to other people, you guys continue to stand in front of him, correct? I believe so. And this is where, again, something happens and you don't have a memory of it, or you're like, he had contact with her face in some way, right? Correct. Right. And you don't necessarily know the context of that, right? Correct. Um, I want to, if I, hold on a second, switch to my computer and I'm, Uh, yes. I want to show you some photos <clears throat> here starting at 2643, okay? Okay. Um, the person, uh, is that you in the bikini bottom with the tattoo on your right leg? Correct. And then uh, we can see a bit of blonde hair and an elbow here. Is that Madison Cohen? I think so, yes. Okay. And as I scrolled through, that shows then Madison Cohen, correct? Correct. And then I'm going to scroll forward to 2655. Do you see that? Yes. At least is 2655. I'm going to move one more, I believe. Is this your elbow underneath Maddie's uh, left hand, yes. which is holding the can? Uh, yes, I believe so. That's your elbow? Yeah. So in this moment in time at 2656, we have to watch the video. Uh, between, you're in between Mr. Mew and Madison Cohen. Agreed? Right here, yes. And so is Dante Carlson. He's in between Madison Cohen and Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. All right. And you don't have a memory of exactly where people were or what happened just before this other than Mr. Mew's hand went to her face in some manner, correct? Correct. Gonna just scroll forward here to get to some other pictures quick. <clears throat> okay, before I get to the next section here, I just the photos that we saw before, you were essentially leaning in towards Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. And then after that, we're going to see a photo where you're, if we can actually pull it up now, 2857. That's your um, leg with a bikini bottom behind Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. So in between the photo that we saw and this photo, you don't remember what you were doing, correct? I have no idea, no. Correct. There's nothing to indicate that you were tending to your friend Maddie Carlson, correct? Correct. Because as we saw in the photo before this, you weren't actually going to your friend, you were going to Mr. Mew, correct? In the photo it looks like that, yes. So whatever happened to your friend, it wasn't something that caused you to say, I better take care of her. I think I just was shocked that he had hit her, so I just, I don't, like I said, I don't know if I reacted. I don't really know what I said. I don't know. Whatever it was, 
you didn't focus your attention on your friend, I correct? Did not. Obviously, this is somebody that you care for, right? Yes. You worry about her, right? Yes. And if you were worried for her safety, you might have had an instinct to turn to her right away, correct? Correct, and I, and I don't know if I did say something right away and then just... All we know is what's in the photo, and that is you don't turn your attention to her. You're focusing your attention on Mr. Mew, correct? correct? Um, so now in 2857, um, you're behind Mr. Mew, correct? Your back is to him? Yes. And his back is to you, correct? correct. All right. I want to just go through these quickly here, the next couple of slides, okay? And I want, we want to focus on what you're doing then. I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? Okay. So you've, you came out of the last frame that you're in is 2866. Is it, do you agree? Yes. So I'm going to go back to 2858. As we scroll through, does it appear as if you are turning around your body? Yes. And you would be then going back in a direction towards Mr. Mew, correct? I don't believe that I did, no. Okay. Well, let's... You're turning, let me go back again. Here. I'm turning so just, around, yes. I don't know where I'm going, though. So we agree that you turn around, correct? Well, yes. We don't know how far you turn around, correct? Correct. We know at some point that you and Mr. Mew are really close, correct? Yes, I believe he walked up to me, though. Okay. And when you say belief, you don't have a memory of it, correct? Correct, but I've seen the video a lot, and I'm not facing the way he's facing. I'm facing the opposite way. Okay, and let, we're going to go through that, but just as we go through this right now, this isn't a memory you have, right. correct? correct? This is, again, something that you've used your deduction to try to figure out what happened, correct? correct. And the story that you've, I don't want to say told yourself, but is that fair? Yeah. The story you've told yourself is he came up to me, correct? But um, not came up to me, but we were standing in front of him, and I thought after the punch with Maddie, I thought he stabbed me right after that. Okay, and so... But when you were saying, like, I didn't walk up to him, that's something, that's not a memory, that's just you're doing some deduction to right. get there, correct? correct? The story that you've told yourself. Correct. And in that, what you've told other people was, he was close enough to literally where he just put his hand up and kind of poked me on the side, right? Correct. You said that to the news station, agreed? Correct. Um, you'd also said to the police, this isn't in relation to anything. You just volunteered this information. I don't know if I reacted like hitting at him or yelling at him. That's correct. correct. And then you said he poked me, correct? Correct. Um, and then you'd said, I think as well to the police, I was close enough that he could pretty much go like that. Agreed? Correct. And when you did that, you're on the video, you've got your right hand and you move your right hand I think like maybe three inches forward, yeah. is that fair? Yeah. Is that a fair demonstration of what you did when you said he went like that? Yes. Am I doing that correctly? Yes. So when Mr. Anderson demonstrated something before and he swung his arm around, that's not accurate? I wouldn't say that's not accurate. I just that's felt like it was literally a poke in my yeah. side. Sure. And the poke in your side is on your left side, correct? Correct. And it's, if you, could you just for a moment can you stand for yes. a moment? And again, obviously keep your, your jacket on, right? Can you just touch on your, with your right hand where it is? Right here. Okay. Fair to say that as you stand there right how you are right now, your left arm is protecting that area. Yes. And if you raise your left arm, push it up, raise it, show it. Is that area now exposed? Yes. Is it now vulnerable to being cut? Yes. Is it vulnerable to being cut where you're at right now? No. No. And so from deduction, would you agree that maybe your hand was out stretched towards him in that moment? I do not agree to that. Sustained. Okay. You don't have a memory of it. I do not. All you know is you couldn't have done it when your hand's down at your side, correct? already said that but okay let's move on
Nothing else. Thank you. Oh, okay. I apologize. Yes, I do have something else. Sorry. Um, sorry. <clears throat> go back uh, to the slides here. There's one other thing I want to ask you about. Okay. Ready? Yes, please. So this is 2859 where we talked about before. I want to focus on something else though, okay? Okay. As I move forward here, I want to ask if you uh, remember Maddie behind you. Is this in the green suit, is that Gabby? Correct. Do you see a, a leg with a navy blue swimsuit bottom? I do. I do. Was uh, Maddie wearing a navy blue swimsuit bottom? Yes. Think that's Maddie? I do. Uh, and in that photo, does it look like you're tending to her? Not at that moment. And in fact, this is the stretch where we see you turn around, correct? Correct. You're actually turning away from her, correct? Correct. It looks like right. she's walking the opposite yeah. way. So whatever was going on with Maddie, you weren't worried about it. You were going in a different direction. At that point, yes. And uh, if we can have the slides off here. This is slide 2969. That's you after he'd made that little jabbing motion towards you, correct? Correct. This is you with the injury that we just talked about, correct? correct? Can you see your friend Janelle there in the background? Yeah. She's clearly reacting to you, correct? Correct. And then she goes and she gives you uh, attention, for lack of a better term, correct? Correct. Um, it's at that point that Janelle was prior to that. You can take it down. Prior to that, Janelle was turned facing towards Mr. Mew and kind of everybody. She was kind of in the background. Is that right? Yes. Um, you didn't see Janelle go tend to Maddie Cohen, correct? I don't remember. Sure. What we know is when you were injured, she went and tended to you, correct? Correct. But prior to that, she's not tending to any other women. Agreed? Correct. After... Um, At some point after this, you walk over to your group, what I'm called group two, correct? Correct. And as you're standing over there, um, some people are tending to you, correct? I don't know if I walked over to the group. I walked kind of a little away from him, I believe. Sh I'm, I'm, hold on a second. Can I have the screen back up again? This is slide 4511, okay? Okay. I'm going to zoom in so I can ask you some questions about that, okay? Okay. The person in the yellow shirt, that's Q, is that right? Correct. The person in the green bikini, that's Gabby K. Correct. Agreed? And the person over here in the navy blue suit, that's Madison Cohen, correct? Correct. She appears to be on her phone, correct? Correct. Holding a beer in her left hand, correct? Correct. So while you're, you're, you're injured, correct? Correct. Um, and looks like Quentin's coming over to, again, care and attention to you, correct? 
I believe so. I remember, yeah, I remember talking to him. Then. Okay. And do you see here, do you remember Maddie standing there with the phone in her right hand, the beer in her left hand, and her glasses on her forehead? No, I don't. I just remember Janelle screaming to call for 911 and then and then ask, asking, just like I said, kind of walking around and asking for help. Okay. So you don't know if in that moment in time, Madison Cohen had both of her hands full with the items that she'd had previously? I had no idea. You don't know what the condition of her sunglasses were that were on her head? No. Objection. She doesn't remember. Yes. Do you see sunglasses on Madison's head there? I do not. Can we take the screen down? Yes. So when I was first questioning, I asked you what you remember specifically, your personal memory, and you talked about him hitting Nikolai, hitting Madison, and Nikolai stabbing you. Is that right? Correct. And then on cross, defense asked a lot of questions about the video and what you asked you to interpret things in, from the still frames. Objection mischaracterizes what I would again, again, please. I'll just say this for the jury's benefit. You are the judges of the facts. What the lawyers say is not evidence. So you can just disregard whatever they say. Focus on what the witness says. Next question. The, apart from what you remember that you've testified about, is the, the video is the best evidence. Would you agree with that? We don't need her to say what the best evidence is. Again, please, no speaking objections. It's a leading question, sustained. When you spoke to police originally, did you tell them that you saw Nikolai hit Madison? I believe so. Do you believe you told that to the law enforcement in the second interview as well as the two media statements? I'm not exactly sure, but I believe so. Defense asked you about how you described first to law enforcement about that hit. Do you recall that questioning? About it, do you recall the questioning about you saying it was a slap and that was the, how you first described it? I really don't remember being questioned in the hospital. I was just coming out of surgery. And Would seeing a transcript help refresh your memory on how you first described that to law enforcement? Yes. Permission to approach? Yes. Showing you the transcript. Um, it says Location Regions Hospital, August 1st, 2022. I'm going to have you read from the beginning until you get to the point where you first describe that to law enforcement. Okay? okay. Bottom of page two. I'm going to read it aloud. No, just read it to yourself. Well, she's doing that. Can we approach her? Yes.
How long did you want me to read it down to? Till the end of page three. Does that refresh your recollection of how you first described it to law enforcement? A little bit. And what was it? How did you describe it? The, what word? the um, hit of Maddie being hit. Yeah, did you say punch, slap? I said he went to go punch her in the face. Defense asked you about Exhibit 104. Can we turn on the Elmo? And defense asks, you have no dis reason to disagree with this, and you agreed. Do you recall that? What did you say? Defense asked, do you have any reason to disagree with Exhibit 104, and you said you have no reason to disagree with it? Do you remember that? Yes. Do you have personal memory of who was where and at that point in the video? No. Can we bring up my screen? Yes. So this is the image of your surgery scar and then you can see the stab scar on the side correct and are you holding your phone up when you with your arms here correct and your stab wound is visible in this photo correct so defense asked you if your hands are like this that area is protected if your hand is like this it's not correct well, your hand could be a lot of places and it could be correct. exposed And you don't, you, do you remember where your hand was? I do not. Do you remember hitting or pushing Nikolai before he stabbed you? I do not. What do you remember doing before he stabbed you? Nothing. Just standing there? Just standing there and being stabbed. Can we bring up my screen? So we're on 2860. This is that frame where defense asked you about the Navy swimsuit where you can just see the very edge on the top left. Do you recall that? Correct. And defense asked, 
So we can deduce that you didn't go to Maddie, do you recall that? I do, but this was a while after. And I'm gonna go backwards in the frames. And here, do you see yourself? I do. And do you see another leg, somebody standing right in front of you? I do. So we could also deduce you did go to her? Correct. Nothing else, Judge. Can you keep that up? Mr. Nelson? Do you know who's standing in front of you? I don't. You see a white leg? I do. There were 13 people. Uh, 14 if you include Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. We know it's not Mr. Mew, correct? Correct. We know it's not Janelle, correct? Correct. We know it's not you, correct? Correct. We know it's not Dante, correct? Correct. There's lots of other legs that it could be, correct? That is correct. You don't know whether that's Madison or not? I don't. Uh, the only reason you were able to identify Madison and the other one is she's the only one wearing that navy suit, correct? Correct. All right. Um, what I want to ask you is about some things that you'd said previously, okay, just to make sure we're on the same page okay. about, uh, firstly, about what happened with Madison, okay? Okay. You told, Fox 9 Noon in an interview from the hospital bed, you said these words that okay. are on the recording. Quote, at first I thought he had slapped her because I was like, like I said, I was just kind of not comprehensive. You said those words? I guess so. Um, now I want to ask you about the, your interaction with Mr. Mew. Okay. okay. Um, what you said to Fox 9 News during that same interview is, I don't know if I had hit him to have him upset. You said that, correct? I believe so. To CARE 11 News, you said, I'm not sure if I hit him because I was so upset. Okay. Agreed? I guess so. And then to the police, you said, I don't know if I reacted like hitting him or yelling at him or something. Correct? Correct. You mentioned to CARE 11 News, Fox 9 News, and to the police, at least your opinion at that time is you might have hit him. Correct? You actually asked an answer. That's all three already. Sustained. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Madison. Thank you. You may step down. Uh, please see the witness coordinator in the back, and she'll give you instructions. Uh, it's about 1030. Why don't we take our mid-morning recess? We'll reconvene at about 1035. Please take the jury out. I'll rise for the jury. are in recess. And good morning again from the Fox 9 Streaming Center. You are watching the Apple River stabbing trial. Uh, Riley Matson, uh, just off the witness stand, the 11th state witness called so far in this uh, murder case against Nikolai Miu. Again, Miu facing five counts, including first degree intentional homicide. A conviction on that top count alone would send Mr. Miu to prison uh, for the rest of his life. There are also four counts of attempted first degree uh, homicide, uh, including one of those counts, uh, the stabbing of Riley Matson. As you listened into the questioning there, there were references to Fox 9. I would just point out at this point, uh, soon after uh, the stabbing had occurred, I uh, spoke via Zoom, a video Zoom connection with Riley from her hospital bed, asking her uh, her memory of what had happened. Uh, she walked me through uh, the stabbing, and as you heard there, a, a lot of uh, 
discussion. What the defense really wants to parse out is what happened uh, between Riley's friend Madison and Miu. Uh, Riley couldn't recall at the time two years ago when we spoke, whether it was a slap, a punch, and you can hear now that issue remains uh, front and center uh, in this trial. And Aaron Nelson, uh, Miu's defense attorney, uh, was just trying to create some doubt as to what happened, some confusion, some chaos. Uh, and we left it there, Riley Matson, now off the witness stand. And with that, perhaps uh, worth uh, showing you, we've created a graphic here because there are several different groups of, uh, of tubers we've been talking about. There's obviously Isaac Schumann and the Stillwater teenagers at that Isaac group in the top right corner of your screen. Of course, Isaac killed. We heard from Landon late yesterday. Ryan was the first uh, witness the state called. We still have to hear from uh, Owen, uh, Owen Peliquin. Owen is the young man who called uh, Schumann's mother uh, from the river that day, Juwan Cockfield there. He took the cell phone video. And then Alex Vang going right to left across your screen, the Isaac group. Then there's a the Carlson group. This is the group of, the, of young adults, if you will, uh, uh, Quinton, uh, Carlson in the yellow shirt and sunglasses, uh, back row center of that Carlson group. He's the father uh, who sends his two sons. It's Quinton's birthday. They're on the river having fun, clearly drinking. That also has become an issue, the amount of alcohol consumed. Um, we heard from Tony and Dante Carlson, uh, Quinton's two sons. Uh, Tony was on the stand this morning. You can see Riley with her friends there. Uh, Madison in the full navy blue swimsuit uh, in the front row. And then Nikolai Miu's group. Obviously, we haven't met nearly. Uh, we, we only really know Nikolai Miu at this point. Uh, his wife uh, in the tube there in the middle. We will hear from her this afternoon. We have been told she has since filed for divorce uh, from her husband. But we will hear from her a little later today. With that, let's bring in our trial attorney, Mike Bryant, joining us uh, via Zoom. Mike, you've been listening in to Riley Matson. Um, your thoughts on, on her testimony and what the defense uh, tried to prove there, that, uh, uh, you know, that her memory isn't great. Did she hit Nikolai? Did she not? Did Nikolai hit her friend Madison? Did he not? Uh, your thoughts on her testimony wrapping up? Well, it seems like the defense is trying to create as much chaos or as much combination that everybody's kind of working together against their their client. Um, and, you know, as pointed out by the photographs, these are different groups. And that's what the prosecutor's pointing out. I mean, you know, we just heard her testimony that she had no idea who anybody was when she first shows up. Um, and you have the bartender that testified, the bar owner yesterday that testified, and then I believe his son testified today that, um, you know, they just heard somebody calling for help and they were going to help whoever was calling for help. And so there's just a whole combination of, of different mo or different, uh, positions being taken with the prosecution trying to point out it's all different groups doing different things and they weren't all together and the defense trying to create chaos with the whole group all together. And listening to all the testimony of these uh, first, we're on day three now and seeing that video, to me, there seems to be really two main areas of focus. Uh, um, as we watch the Cockfield video, what really prompts Nikolai to come running up? You know, that shot where he's kind of kind of lifting his legs up out of the water, coming towards them. I mean, we know uh, Jawan has admitted he called him names, but he also said when he first snorkeled past, Miu snorkeled past him, that Nikolai said something about, I'm looking for little girls. So, you know, you could see a 17-year-old reacting in a way that, you know, might kind of go chirp back at him, like, what's that all about? And then all of a sudden we see Nikolai come running up. So I think there's confusion as what brings Nikolai into those tubers right away. And then this idea of what then um, sparks the real physical interaction most people have been saying, and these are state witnesses, these are, you know, obviously we, we haven't heard from Nikolai, but the state witnesses seem to all say that Nikolai does something to Madison, a slap, a punch, hits her in the face, and that's when everybody sort of goes to protect the woman in the crowd. Um, how important are those questions uh, to be answered? Uh, what is the jury looking for? Who, who do they want to believe here? Well, the, the jury is just trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, you know, they're coming into something they didn't know anything about or knew very little to begin with. And now they're given different pieces, including the video, to try to figure out where it's going on. And um, the, 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 the state is trying to point out the different groups doing different things, some of which were helpful, some of which 
probably in the end weren't helpful in and of themselves, but none of them, according to the state, will justify someone being stabbed and someone actually being killed. The defense is going to create this overall just chaos that there's all these people coming at him and he's just trying to defend himself and protect himself as best he can, you know, and you'll get into this issue of, you know, the, 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 the response that the the teenagers had when they were talking about him hitting a woman and, you know, they're getting into the woman and, you know, uh, did that justify what was done to him? And then in response, does that somehow give him some kind of, of protection on what he did? And I know we cut you off earlier this morning. We had some technical issues, I think, there. But I did want you to answer, kind of elaborate on on why this jury will eventually need to hear from the defendant himself. Yeah, the defendant has a he doesn't have to testify under the Constitution. He's not required to testify. Uh, you're not required to testify against yourself. But this seems like a case where the jury's going to have to hear from him, where he's going to have to explain what he did and what he was thinking, and if they believe him. And they believe he was scared and they believe that he was trying to just protect himself you know they may uh they may give him a pass on a lot of things um but it's going to be you know with all these different parts and all these different people um i don't know it's going to be quite the interesting testimony from him and i know mike you're a defense attorney by trade um obviously taking nothing away here from where i sit and, and watching this case and uh, take nothing away here from the, what the prosecution has done so far as they sort of chronologically lay out the case and then uh, they have to tell you know through their witnesses what happened it was confusing it was chaotic it was loud it happened fast and even though that's three and a half minutes of video um it's really the whole thing comes down to 25 seconds you know where where um um where the knife is used but getting back to my point here is the defense is really doing an effective job during cross-examination sticking to trying to create confusion like whose legs are in these photos and, and you know riley will say you know she thought it was her and madison squared up against me you but now all of a sudden the defense attorney aaron nelson there has her believing well there are people to your left to your right they're not in camera angle their legs you don't even recognize how can you tell this jury now you are the only two in front of nikolai i just think they're really doing an effective job of, of cross-examination here thus far well, well we'll see how it all comes together but i i still think in the end it'll come down to what um they hear from the 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 defendant about what he was thinking while he was doing what he did yeah. Well, let's take a moment here. Again, I just want to call up the Carlson group one more time uh, before because we have uh, Tony Carlson's um, uh, a moment, a minute or two of his testimony scheduled uh, or, or lined up to, to play back during this recess. Mike, I'll get back to you in one second. But again, taking a look at this Carlson group, uh, Quentin Carlson, kind of the, the fatherly figure in this group, if you will. It's his birthday. He is the one who sends his two sons uh, if you're looking at your screen, it's on, on your right upper corner, the two brothers there, uh, Tony, um, and, uh, excuse me, Anthony, and um, I'm blanking on the other one's name, uh, Dante. Uh, Dante Carlson, Dante testified yesterday. But so let's take a, a look back. Again, the, Quinton had sent his two sons over there, uh, over to the group, Miu and the teenagers, uh, to quote unquote, play peacemaker, see what was going on. It seemed like the teens needed some help and he sent his boys over. Let's listen to what Tony had to say uh, earlier this morning. You said you never saw the knife, correct? Correct. Um, you went over there, you must have seen some things, correct? What do you mean by that? Well, we saw the slide where you walk over and you're kind of coming over late compared to when everybody else is there. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, and when you come over, at some point, you see who you now know as Mr. Mew get hit, correct? Yes. And you, you see it's your brother that's hitting him, correct? I didn't at the time. Okay. You just knew somebody had hit him, correct? Yes. And you knew, you said, you said, I was yelling at people to back up, I was yelling at everyone not just one side or the other that's what you said correct yes and let's just talk about the sides here for a moment okay on the one side there was 13 people agreed i didn't know at the time but now i do yes and on the other side there was mr mew correct yes and so when you approach you see mr mew the the member of one he got hit correct at 
at the time I didn't know who had gotten hit. I just was telling everyone to separate. Sure. You saw a person that got hit, correct? Yes. And that person was Mr. Mute, correct? Yes. And that person was down in the water, correct? Yes. And people on the other side continued to hit Mr. Mew, the one person that was down in the water, correct? By the time I was over there, I didn't see that. I was just separating people. But whatever it was you saw at that point, you, you were yelling back up, telling people to stop, correct? Yes, because I saw a large group together. I just saw you a bunch of bodies together. I didn't see right. anything specific. And those bodies were all around Mr. Mew, the person who had got hit and was in the water, correct? I didn't know who was surrounding who. Well, you agree that one person can't surround anyone. Agreed? Yes. So you agree if there's somebody being surrounded, it would be Mr. Mew, correct? Objection. He has an answer. He said he doesn't know who was being surrounded. Sustained. That's just a little flavor of uh, Tony Carlson, Anthony Carlson's uh, testimony from this morning, uh, criminal uh, defense attorney or veteran trial attorney Mike Bryan joining us. Thanks, Mike. One thing we haven't talked about today is we were just kind of waiting on official word from the courthouse on the jury makeup here. So, t so take a moment to let this th sink in, Mike. We, we, it's eight men, six women. Uh, the age diversity kind of runs the gamut here. But there is one, one person we are told are in their 90s. I've never heard of a juror. Um, being that old, uh, with all due respect to age uh, here, but we are told there is one juror in their, their 90s. And I'm just wondering, as I think about a self-defense case and what happened on the river and, you know, the loss of a son and, and, and the stabbing and how it unfolded, drinking, partying, you know, just that river scene, just your, your, your quick thoughts, 8-6, it's, it's close to 50-50. We don't know what, what two uh, are the alternates at this point, but... Um, uh, do you do you think about the, the jury makeup at all as as it relates to to, to a, a way a male a man or a, a woman may 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 take a look at these facts or, or what we see uh, in these videos? Oh well, yeah, I mean they they have an effect, and their own life experiences come with what they have. And I've seen some people that old um, in certain areas of the state. You'll see that. Um, here in Minnesota, but that being said, um, it's it's it, it's got to be a relatively unique thing overall for the country, and uh, different people come different ways and they see different things. And jurors or lawyers sometimes will get testimony in certain ways just to make sure that they can get the testimony in properly or that it'll be heard by by a particular juror in a certain way. I know there's still a couple more people. I've shown those graphics of the various group, tube groups, uh, tubing groups, and then there are certain people we have not met yet. Would you expect that we would sort of hear from everybody uh, before we sort of move on to maybe the next phase, perhaps the medical evidence or, or the law enforcement investigative evidence? Do, do you think we'll kind of hear from everybody we see in those photos who are sort of immediately involved in what took it's place? Not, it, it sounds like it. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of witnesses, and that's why it's going to go as long as it is. Um, so we're going to get different views from our, all sorts of people before we're done. And I would just point out at this point, just from the reporter in me, uh, the state has submitted a witness list to the court and then and uh, the, the defense. Uh, they list 44 witnesses that they absolutely expect to call. We're through about we're through 11. Uh, they list 44 they want to call. And then there are about another 20 that are maybes, although we've already had one of those maybes uh, testify, Stephen Kaufman, the campground owner. But again, 11 witnesses through, uh, you know, maybe upwards of 50 or so. Uh, the prosecution did say they feel confident in the way uh, the case has, has started, that they're, they're on time uh, in what has been described as a two-week uh, trial. So uh, the courtroom is back live. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Perhaps we'll see you at lunch, and we will go back into Michael Waterman's circuit. We are back County on circuit the record now. with the jury. Everyone is present and accounted for. Um, Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? AJ Martin. Is Mr. Martin in the courtroom? Okay. Mr. Martin, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Some will be that. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your... I'm going to ask you to state your first, middle, and last name. Uh, Alexander James Martin. Do you go by a nickname? Uh, AJ. Yeah. And AJ, were you tubing with friends on July 30th, 2022 on the Apple River? Uh, yes, I was. 
and you're friends with Tony? Yeah, we were uh, roommates in college, and then that was the first time we'd seen each other in like three years. Okay. And what, what college? Uh, River Falls, Wisconsin. What city and state do you live in now? Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Hey, do you have any prior criminal convictions? Yes, uh, two. And what do you do for work? Um, I'm an electrical apprentice. I install solar panels. And how tall are you? Uh, five, nine, and three quarters. And how much do you weigh? Uh, 160 now. And how much, on, if you know about, on July 30, 2022? Uh, 170. What do you, at some point when you're tubing on the river, did something catch your attention or people's attention that you're with? Uh, yeah. What do you recall about that? Um, just a lot of loud noises, screaming, yelling, uh, someone asking for help, and then um, I had seen Maddie get up with someone, and what I thought I, re or what I remember was getting up, and I think I had got Dante up with me, but then I turned around to also get Tony up, and Dante was over there. Um, I turned back around from trying to get Tony up, and uh, I believe I saw Maddie get pulled in the back of her hair and then punched in the face. Um, it could also be that she just got punched in the face and I had seen like the after, like her face get flung and that's why I thought her head got pulled. Um, and then. So um, do you recall like how far away you were when you saw what happened to Maddie? Uh, I was probably about halfway in between the groups I was or maybe a little closer to um, we're group two right so I would be a little closer to group one the, the teens group still on your way over yeah and after that did you hurry over um I mean yeah I, I was after I saw him punch her I um, wanted to get over there but I didn't I wasn't yeah I, I tried to get over there as fast as I could I guess And what do you recall after that? Um, well, after he had hit Maddie in the face, um, I saw someone else hit him, and I wasn't sure who. Um, I saw him fall into the water, and my intention was, because I used to work at elementary schools and had experience breaking up fights with little kids and stuff like that, so my intention was to um, go over there and try and break it up. I saw him in the water and I saw people going around him, so I went to push his shoulder in the, the front, but ultimately didn't. Um, but I was going to try and just get him to stay down for another second and then tell everyone to back up and then we could have figured out what was going on. But as I reached down to push him in the shoulders, he reached up and um, I guess, I don't know if you call it a stab, but got me with the knife. What was your injury? Um, well, there was a lot, I guess. Uh, the most um, apparent thing, obviously, was that my stomach was open and my intestines were in my hands. I don't know what other parts were there, but, I mean, they were in my hands and, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I know that and from there, but afterwards with like the medical records and stuff, I know other injuries. I don't know if you want me to go into that or not. Um, did you, after you're holding your intestines, did you see much of anything after that? Not much. I mean, after that, I remember screaming pretty, pretty viscerally, I think is the word. Uh, and then I remember kind of scooping it together with my left arm and putting my right arm down and standing up and then falling down and 
standing up again. And I think I fell down and stood up one more time. And then I was kind of, I mean, I was still conscious. I was, I was talking. Um, but after that, really, all I remember is that and then telling Tony that I was going to die and him telling me I was going to be fine and that I wasn't. And my response every time was, uh, like, 100%, I'm, I'm going to die today. And then I remember waking up in the hospital with a breathing tube and my parents looking at me. And... Do you know how long you're in the hospital for that first time? Yeah, 27 days. And after, when you woke up the first time, was that after surgery? Yeah, it was around 11.30 that night, I believe. Did you have follow-up surgeries? Um, a, a few, yeah. Did they, was your wound Stitch closed right away? No. Um, they put what they call a wound vac on it. Um, I assume that acts as kind of like a fake flesh or skin. Um, and they left that on for about a week, doing other exploratory surgeries just to make sure that they didn't miss any other lacerations or injuries. And then after almost a week or so, they uh, had Intern done internal stitches, but left the top open so that it would heal better, and they put a, another smaller wound vac over that. Did you have to have um, any sort of devices to assist with digestion, eating, feeding? Um, yeah, I had uh, a few feeding tubes, um, some NG tubes to help with uh, just the extra fluids in my stomach. Um, but yeah, I had the feeding tube because uh, after the surgeries, I had developed a hematoma in my uh, intestine and it was completely blocked off. There was no food, no water, and the IV, tr IV nutrition wasn't doing enough. I had lost 50 pounds in that 27 day stint. AJ, were you drinking on the river that day? Yes. Do you believe you're intoxicated? Uh, probably, yeah. Did, do you recall how you got to shore? Um, no, not really. I, uh, didn't know that I did really. I just remembered the standing up and the falling down, and then I know people did move me in the end, but I don't remember it. I couldn't, I couldn't see or feel anything at that point. And you don't remember the. Do you, well, let me ask, do you remember much of anything or anything from the point where you're on shore till you wake up in the hospital? No, um, I think I had lost too much blood at that point. I mean, I, in the past I've lost a lot of blood from an injury when I was younger and I lost sight and vision, or I mean, I lost sight and hearing from that too. So I know that like once you do lose enough, Certain parts stop, stop working because your body's trying to keep you alive, not your senses. You talked about a artificial skin they had on at the hospital. Oh uh, yeah, the wound vac. We approached. Yes. <clears throat>
AJ, uh, this is a graphic photo. I warned you first. Yeah. What? Just can you just tell me what that photo shows? Uh, shows the the wound vac and I guess the extent of the wound. It, I mean, you, yeah. Is that a photo of you in the hospital? Yeah, that was the uh, the next morning. Okay. Judge, I'm going to move to admit this now. I'm not going to ask to publish it. Any objection? Uh, other than those noted, and as long as it's not published, they can solve it. All right. <clears throat> it is received. So what was the number? Oh, sorry. 29. What was it? 29. 29? Correct. So 29 is received. AJ, do you recall telling law enforcement, um, I don't think I touched him, but if I was, my hand was on his shoulder, it wasn't forceful? Yeah. And did you tell law enforcement your, your goal was to try to break it up? Yes, I, I remember that. I'm gonna go through some slides with you. Ready. <clears throat> Twenty-five seventy-three. Are you in this frame, AJ? Yeah, in the yellow shorts. Okay, you can take take this screen down, please. Can we have it again? I'm just going to go scroll from 2673. 2680, is that your shorts? Yep. Stopped at 2,800. That f section of frames I just went through, AJ, are those, is that the part where you got hit yeah. with the knife? Yeah.
And that, you, did you know that guy's name at the time? No. Now, you know, know him as Nick Lamu. Yeah. And I want to ask you a question quick before I, this, this exhibit, um, 29, if you know, I don't want you to speculate, but do you know if that's, and again, don't answer, if you, if you don't know, that's fine to say you don't know. Is that from the slice or was it, did you have further incisions from surgery? No, that's all from the slice. There's, um, it actually goes from, like, you can't see it super well in the picture, but it goes above my rib cage too. They, they didn't have to open me up. I was already open. Do you know, can you show with your hands about how long the laceration was? Uh, yeah, about that. I mean, it's below the belt line to above my ribs. Are you comfortable showing? Do you have a scar? Yeah, quite a quite a big one. Are you Are you comfortable showing the jury? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. It actually might be faster to just don't tuck it. It stops right there. There's a little gap there because it hit my ribs, but that's okay. it. Thank you. Now, I'm going to show, don't turn the screen on yet, please. It's going to be frame 3111, and I don't want to show it gratuitously, but I want the jury to see it. So if we could just turn it on for a second, turn it off. Yes. I don't have anything else. <clears throat> Mr. Nelson. <clears throat> Mr. Martin, my name's Aaron Nelson. I want to ask you some questions, okay? Yep. I understand watching the video and seeing the pictures is upsetting to you. Is that fair? Yes. I'm going to try to do it without the photos, but if you need to see one, we don't need to display it. Just let me know if you need something to refresh your memory. I'm happy to show you on my computer or some other way. I want to do this as easy as we can. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I want to ask about some of the things that you initially told the police about what happened, okay? Okay. Fair to say that your memory is spotty? I wouldn't say spotty. I would say I remember everything up until I got stabbed pretty well, at least everything that I saw. Okay. For the most part. In, in 
Fair to say that's not what you told the police when you first met with them. I mean, it was days after and I was on a bunch of pain meds. It's pretty understandable, I think, to not have the greatest memory at the time. Maybe. I'm just trying to establish the fact that at that time you didn't tell the police of certain things that you remembered. Agreed? Sure, yeah. Since that time, what you're saying is your memory is improved, correct? I think that shock has worn off and I was able to remember things that I might have subconsciously blocked off, yes. Okay. So again, I understand you have your reasons to explain why you think your memory got better, but we can agree your memory has changed from when you first talked to the police to what you're telling the jury today. Right? Yeah, I, I just said that in different words, but yes. And in that time frame, I would imagine you spoke with your friends and family about what happened, correct? Uh, I mean, a little, I guess, you know. I mean, I'm not, this is a life-changing event for you, correct? I mean, it was, it was posted everywhere. People knew before I said anything, so. I imagine probably a day doesn't go by where somebody asks you questions about it, right? Maybe not so much now, but when it happened, yeah. And amongst your group of friends, it sounds like you're really close with Tony Carlson, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, do you live with him now? Yeah. Okay. And as a result of living with Tony now, I imagine you've still, uh, you also see his brother Dante Carlson, correct? Uh, a few times, but he lives in Wisconsin. I've only seen Dante maybe three or four times since the incident. Okay. And that includes yesterday. All right. Um, how about uh, Madison and Riley? Did you, did you know them before July 30th? I didn't know Maddie, Riley, Scotty, Janelle, um, Sheena. I didn't know any of them before that day. Since then, because of this shared experience, have you talked with them about it? Um, Maddie, not so much. She's kind of hard to reach. Um, and Riley, uh, again, not so much. It's pretty traumatic for both of us. We didn't really want to, you know. Understand, but you've definitely talked at different times with p other people that were out on the river there with you that day, correct? Yeah. And you've seen the, other than today, had you seen the video that's been marked as exhibit number two and entered into evidence? Yes. How many times did you watch that? Uh, two or three a month ago or so, and then, excuse me. Um, another few times going frame by frame, and then, oh. yeah, okay, and then all yesterday too, I guess. Um, you were here in court watching the what was happening here, correct? I thought I was gonna be up here yesterday, so yeah, I was here. Yeah. Um, so I want to just make sure that when I'm asking you questions and you're giving answers, if you could do everything you can to say what you remember, the image that's in your head, as opposed to necessarily just something we can all watch the video of. Make sense? Yeah. What we know is when you spoke with the police on July, excuse me, on August 4th, you spoke with the police that day, is that right? Uh, I think it was that day. All I really remember is saying that um, Biden was the president. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the date. Okay. Um, do you remember this? Young man over here in the gray suit sitting off to the side with the computer on his lap. Yes, sir. Um, that's the uh, investigator Schultz who you spoke with on that day? Yep. Whatever day that was in August, correct? Mm -hmm. And what you told him was, quote, the suspect had one of the girls, Maddie, by the head with his hand, and then I watched him pull her hair. That's what you told Mr. Schultz, correct? I'm pretty sure that somewhere in there I had mentioned a punch, too. But this, I, I want to read you if you said this sentence to him, all right? Did you say to him, the suspect had one of the girls, Maddie, by the head with his hand, and then I watched him pull her hair, and then I looked back, and I was like, Tony, we got to do something now. And so, like, I just wanted to go over there and break it up, and the, by the time I got over there, Maddie had gotten away. Okay. Then That's what you said, correct? Sounds pretty accurate, yeah. So when you first said that to the police, you don't mention in that sentence anything about a punch, correct? I, I didn't in that sentence, no. I you might said, have later on. You said that uh, he had her by the head, and then he pulled her hair, correct? Yeah. 
And as you sit here now, can you describe to me how he had her by the head? Uh, well, from what I remember, she had nope. already kind of started to walk away. Uh, and then he grabbed her by the like ponytail and okay. pulled and then punched with his left hand. Okay. And that was how he hit her in the left cheek and why the glasses weren't affected. It's because he was from behind. Okay. Um, so your memory is she's turned and walking away. I'm just trying to break this yes. down. And she's got her essentially back to Mr. Mew, correct? That was what I remember seeing. And again, all, we, all you can do is tell us your memory. Yep. Um, and as she's walking away, your memory is that he reaches out and grabs the back of her hair, correct? Yes. And do you know which hand he grabs the back of her hair with? I would have assumed the right, because I, okay. I, th I believe he punched her with the left. Okay. So. And so did you know that at that time when at 149 in the video, the, bla the knife had already been shown at 145 in the video? I didn't at the time, but after watching the video, yes, I But your remember. memory is that whatever he had in his right hand, he still managed to reach out his right hand and grab her by the hair with his right hand. Yeah. And then he pulled her back? Yeah, he pulled back and punched. So he punched her as she's facing away? Well, when you pull someone's hair back, their head moves, so sure. her head turned towards him, and then he punched. And no, this isn't fair to Mr. Trophacy, but if... I'm pulling him back. If I'm Mr. Mew and this is Maddie, the punch is coming from this direction? Okay, but he wasn't pulling her like that. I understand. Mr. Trofsey does not uh, look like Maddie for lots of reasons we're not going to talk about. But Right? His hand's up here? Yeah. And the head's coming back? Mm-hmm. And then the left hand comes around? Yeah. Okay, and that's the manner in which you said that he hit her? That's how I remember it. And yes. then it would be upon her left side here. It's probably in this area right here. Okay, and you're Maybe making up it to the jaw or the cheekbone, but in this area. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure we get uh, what you said down. And so you're describing an area to the front of the ear, correct? Front, yeah, front of ear area, yep. like sideburn area. Sure. Where on you, you have some sideburns coming down, correct? Yes. All right. And where on you wearing glasses, it was below the frame of the glasses, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Is that a yes? Yes. Sorry. That's all right. Um, so that's your memory of what you saw, <coughs> is in pulling her hair with one hand and punching with the other, correct? Yeah, but also when you were pulling back on him, you have to remember she had, uh, not trying to be rude, but like she has the hair you know yeah and yeah. so you also have to you have to remember too though that her ponytail might have been not centered so when he pulls she's not necessarily going straight back yeah. she and could I'd, be going to the side she could be going to the other side i'm not trying to be if it sounds as if i'm being trying to be critical mr martin i'm just yeah. trying to gather the facts no i don't i don't think that i just felt like i wanted to or needed to say that okay that's fine Fair to say that the description you just gave now isn't the description that you gave to the police back in August of 22. Agreed? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Um, another sentence that you uh, told to the police, you were talking to the police about um, your understanding that the suspect, Mr. Mew, had been making advances on one of the girls there. Is that right? Uh, I didn't really know. I didn't know if that was what was happening. I was, I had heard the other comments that the other group was making. So I, I didn't even know if there was a girl in their group at that point in time. Um, I was just going over there because I didn't think that it was super smart to let two girls go and approach a 250 pound man by themselves. So just a lot to unpack there again. Lots of things were said and you didn't know what to believe. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. But when you're describing this to the police, you're describing, I'm just trying to set this up where you, you say something to the police. Does that make sense? Okay. You say, I heard they were making advances on one of the girls there. Make sense? Something along those lines, yeah. And then the police officer says, they're like, yeah, the guy's hitting on her, she's not of age. The police officer says that to you and in response you say, I saw him grab the other girl by the head. So it didn't really matter at that point. 
those are the words that you told Investigator Schultz, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, yes. Okay. Other things that you said on that day were that you didn't touch Mr. Mew, correct? I said that that was a possibility. You read that earlier. You were asked, were you touching him when you were getting stabbed? The answer, no. Do you remember? Answer, I don't think I ever did. If I did, like my hand was on the shoulder, maybe, but it wasn't forceful. Yeah. Those so, are the words that you said? So I had said possibly not, but I also did give credit to the fact that I could have touched him. I understand that. I'm asking, I'm just trying to gather what you exactly said to the police. Yeah, I answered. And the third thing that you said to the police regarding those things is you, uh, you said that you saw, I think you said in your words, the, the black guy hit him, correct? I thought it was him, but I wasn't sure. Okay. And you've learned since then that it's your roommate's brother that hit yes. him, correct? Yes. But that's not what you told the police, correct? It's not what I remembered. Do you have a memory of the black guy hitting him? That's what I thought I saw, but there was a lot of people standing close to each other, okay. so it was pretty, I think, understandably pretty easy to get confused. Understood. So you thought you saw him pull her hair and punch her with his left hand, right? Uh, yes, you I thought did. you didn't touch him at all, right? I, and you, I gave, I didn't think that I didn't touch him. It was, I could have possibly not. And you thought that the black guy punched Mew, correct? Yes. Those were the memories that you shared with the police in August, correct? Sure, yes. Fair to say that all those memories are wrong. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would. Uh, yes, you agree that those memories are who, wrong? I would say, no, I wouldn't say that the second one is wrong because like I said, I gave credit to both the possibility of okay. me hitting him or, or pushing him and the possibility of me not touching him at all. Well, let's pull that one out and let me just talk about the other two. Do you agree the memory that you told the police that you had of Mr. Mew pulling uh, Madison from behind by the hair and punching her with the left hand, that's wrong? I mean... I guess I can't say yes or no because it doesn't really show that in the video and I, I mean my memory about that hasn't changed so okay that's still how you remember it that's how I remember it yes okay. and the memory about uh, the black guy punching Mr. Mew that's still how you remember it that's no not I mean I I don't know exactly what I saw I saw him close to him and it could have been his arm that hit him but I really didn't know what I saw at that point so Okay. All right. Um, I want to go through um, a portion of what I think is on the video to just ask if that is what you remember happening, okay? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Because as I think you told the police during your interview, you said to the police, "I wanted to get, I wanted to get the, get the guy away from us, but I wasn't going to try and like punch him. I'm not a fighter. I'm tiny. That's what you told the police, right? Yeah, I was okay. the biggest I'd ever been in my life, and I was still not a super big guy." He had 80 pounds on me. I understand. I'm just trying to, again, the words that you said to the police were, I'm not a fighter. Yes. All right. At some, we saw in the slides there that at some point, Mr. Mew goes down into the water mm -hmm. from Mr. Uh, Dante Carlson punching him, right? Yes. And just to put it into context. And then we see in the slides, your leg you kind of approach and stand over him, correct? I wouldn't say over him. I would say I'm to the side of him, and then he starts moving, and okay. my body position plus where he moved himself would make it appear that way. Sure. He's on the ground, correct? Yep. In the water, correct? Yes. You're standing on two feet, correct? Yes. You weren't leaning over him, 
but it might appear that way if somebody is down in the water looking up, correct? It could, yeah. And when that happens, you don't push your friend Dante away, do you? I, uh, uh, I didn't even know that Dante was there at the moment. I didn't see the second hit or slap or the third one. I had wet hair, my hair was hanging down, I was looking down, I wasn't focused on other people, I was focused on getting this man away from everyone else. So this man... This man, Nikolai that, knew. Yeah, this man, at that point, you knew he had been punched and knocked to the ground and he's in the water, correct? Yep. And you're telling the jury that you, what you were trying to do is you were trying to get him away from other people while he's down in the ground in the water. Mm get people away in some way, shape, or form. It didn't need to be him. I wanted him to stay down so he couldn't go and punch another person. And then I was going to tell everyone there to back away because, okay. you know. So there's a lot to unpack there again. You could, you, as you said, you wanted to get other people away, but you didn't go to the other people. You went to Mr. Mew, correct? Yeah, I went to the guy who was punching people first. Correct. Um, again, based upon your memory that he pulled someone's hair and punched them from behind, correct? Based on the memory that I know that he punched someone, yes, okay. it doesn't matter how he punched them. I know he punched them, and he shouldn't have. Okay. Um, and you were going to make him pay for that? No. So when he's down in the water on the ground and you're standing there trying to be the peacemaker because you're not a fighter, you thought it was going to be peaceful to you to keep him down in the water? I mean, it was shallow water. His head wasn't below. All we needed was an extra second to get people to move away from him and then he could get up and we could possibly have a conversation but I mean he hadn't used any words up until that point so probably not. So when you're standing there next to him when he's on the water you don't see your friend Dante come up and smack him across the face a second time. You don't I, see that. I saw him get dropped into the water and I was looking down at him my hair was over my eyes here. I mean it was shorter than it is now but you can imagine. So you didn't see him go back into the water the second time in response to Dante hitting him? Didn't, you didn't uh, see that? He went down into the water and then he never got up. Sure, because Dante until hit him he, when he was in the water, correct? Okay, but you said the second time he was in the water, that's the first time still. The second time came after he stabbed me. Okay, understood. Um, his uh, first time was in the water was extended for a longer period of time because Dante smacked him when he was already down in the water. Sure, yes. And you're saying you were standing right there, but you didn't observe that. No, like I said, my hair was in the way and I wasn't really focused on Dante. I didn't know where Dante was. I was focused on the man who was hitting in the water. people, who was hitting people, not. Well, at that point, the man that was hitting people was Dante Carlson, right? Sorry, should I, I will rephrase. The man who started the physical altercation. Okay. Um, that was what, that's what essentially your opinion is, correct? I mean, I would say that the first person to throw a punch would be the first person to be aggressive, regardless of if um, there are other people slightly touching his shoulder. I mean, even you were talking about the consent to touch thing. And, he touched other people without their consent, too. So, I mean, if you want to go that way, we, we can, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not trying to go anyway, sir. I'm just trying to gather the facts. So the person that's punching Mr. Mew, you don't see that, correct? I saw Mr. Mew fall into the water, and I didn't see anything after that and when, in terms of him getting hit. And when you saw him fall in the water, you went up to him from behind. No. I apologize, but I'm going to need to show some slides. Yeah. I mean, I can explain what I did. That's good. I'm going to just we'll go through some slides. Show uh, my screen, please. <laughs> Showing you what's 
2705. That's Mr. Mew in the water, correct? Yes. That's Dante Carlson swinging and, to hit him, correct? And my leg in the bottom. That's court. your leg in the bottom, correct? Yep. You're moving towards Mr. Mew, agreed? Yes. I'm moving at him from his, what would be his front left side. And then eventually you come to be behind him, correct? Uh, when I would still say I'm at the midpoint of his body, he just sat up. That wouldn't necessarily constitute being behind someone. I mean, yes, I, I was, I guess, technically, but he wasn't there when I walked there. He moved himself to have me behind him. You moved yourself, correct? No, he moved. I, I moved, over, I walked over there, yes, but I was standing right at about his <laughs> hips, and then he or sat up. So is it your testimony that in some way Mr. Mew was aware of your presence and intentionally turned to have you behind him? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying he did it intentionally. I'm just saying that that's what happened. Okay. So, again, you're behind him, correct? In uh, sort of on his side. <coughs> Until he this starts... This is you with your left hand on his back shoulder yeah, and his but... right hand on his back shoulder... You're behind him, correct? Yeah, I have both hands on one shoulder. If I w I'm not completely behind him. You can see I'm somewhat on the side. But yes, I'm somewhat behind him due to his repositioning. You're pushing him, correct? Yeah, I, that's where I had said that I thought I'd push him in the front left shoulder to keep him down, but I was there too late, so I didn't get that shoulder. I guess I got the back of it. and You said you're a peacemaker, right? Do you like to mediate? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. You can understand how somebody who'd been down in the water and hit two times, getting pushed from behind, may not understand that you're trying to mediate. It goes to his mindset. Overruled. You can answer the question if you're able to. Sorry, what was the question? Sure. As a, somebody who likes to mediate and was attempting to mediate, you can understand how a person in Mr. Mew's position who'd been hit twice in the water might not understand or appreciate your intent to try to de-escalate by pushing him in the behind. I guess. Might misunderstand that, right? He, he could misunderstand that. Sure. But, I mean, could have been solved if he tried to use words at all, too. Could have. And let me just go from 2745 to 2747. Do you see that? That's you still, that's your body behind him, correct? Yes. That's your right hand on the right side of his back, correct? Yeah. Um, That's your left hand on the left side of his back, correct? I'd say right's more in the middle, but the left one is definitely on his left shoulder. And that's your friend, your friend, your roommate's brother, who is your friend, Dante Carlson. That's his hand that we can see underneath your underarm there that's hitting Mr. Mew, correct? Uh, like I said, I didn't see it, but the video showed it, so, I mean... So your based, face, off, based off of memory, I can't say yes. Okay. Your face is right there, and you're saying you didn't see Dante hit Mr. Mew there. No, like I explained, my hair was down in front of my eyes. It's wet. My hair's thick and black, so it's not super easy okay. to see through. What you did say is Mr. Mew wasn't saying anything. You could agree that in this position, with somebody pushing him from behind and somebody hitting him in the front, it might be a difficult time to use your words to make peace. Yeah, the right time to use your words would have been before he punched a woman in the face. We can get to that later. Um, you extend your body to, in an attempt to push him down, as you say, correct? Well, I was pushing down and then he got up and I <laughs> fell forward, so. I was asking about your intent. Your intent was to push him down in the water, agreed? It was to push his shoulder down so that he stayed down and I could tell everyone to back up, yes. So you agree, your intent was to push him down and keep him in the water? To keep him down, if the water, I mean, if the ground was there, I would have done the same thing. It didn't, I wasn't worried about there being water or not. It was shallow, his head wasn't going below. He was gonna be okay. You can understand how perhaps somebody in the position getting pushed from behind in the water might not appreciate that you were trying to protect him and keep him okay, right? I Is guess. His head appear to be getting wet there? 
not his face. That's where your mouth is. I, I don't, I see maybe the right cheek dip in a little bit, but as soon as go, go a few slides further and you'll see it sit back up again. Sure. Safe as can be, right? I, I don't know. It is. Yeah, please, let's, let's focus on the facts. Just sure. Clean Q&A, please. Just back up a little bit more here. When we, you said his head didn't go in the water. Fair to say that's his head making a wave, correct? I would say that's his back making a wave and okay. his head still not in the water. Have you ever fallen back after getting laid out in the water like that? Yeah, I have. Okay. Did it feel like maybe the water was coming up on you even if it technically didn't? Uh, no, I mean, I, water usually has a pretty sure. distinct feeling on okay. your skin, I mean. And when you had that experience where you got laid out and fell back into the water, did someone come up and attack you a second time in that situation? Sustained. So I'm gonna go forward back to the position where we were before, I apologize. So again, you'd said here at 2754, you're attempting to keep him down and he manages to move away from you, the person who's pushing him somewhere in the back area, right? Yes? Yes. I was trying to push him in the front left shoulder and I got the back left shoulder. Sure. Because he was getting up and I was not fast enough to get the front left shoulder. Um, and I'm gonna go through some other photos here that might be difficult. Are you okay with that? Yeah. In this position now, you that's you in the yellow shorts, correct? Correct. And to your right is Dante Carlson, correct? I believe so. I don't know. I, I, I don't remember seeing anyone else there. I remember pushing down and feeling this, strange. Sure. Is this person, you knew what Dante looks like, correct? Uh, yes. Is that Dante in the two-tone gray shorts with the truly in his hand? Uh, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> and then that's the same person that's legs are right there, correct? Correct. So you and Dante are standing very near Mr. Mew as he's beginning to try to get up out of the water, correct? Correct. And as he begins to get up out of the water, you move towards him, correct? Yeah. You didn't know that he had a knife, correct? No. Nope. You were going at him, correct? I don't know. I don't remember anything okay. after your first push. This is where you're trying to, you push him down again, correct? Um, I would say we kind of attacked each other at that one, if anything. But I mean, okay. I didn't, I, I don't remember this, so I can't okay. tell you. I don't, but you're, I didn't, he, he got me before I did anything to him, so. This is oh. your hands on him, agreed? Okay, maybe my, my hand is on his arm, yeah. This is you, as you said, attacking him, correct? I didn't mean attacking, sorry. Those are the words that you used to the jury. I, I mean. You were attacking him. I wasn't attacking him. Okay. You were trying to push him down in the water. I was trying to separate, every, or get him isolated so that we could separate everyone else from him. So we could get everyone away and then we could figure out what was actually going on because you hear Teenagers asking for help. You hear people yelling that he's a whatever. And you, I mean, at that point, and you see minors, you're going to be more worried about getting him away from them before you ask the questions. And you chose to do that by using your hands on his body to push him, correct? Uh, yes? I tried to keep him down with my arms, yes. And then I was going to tell everyone to back up and give him some space so as you said you're not a fighter correct yes you were trying to mediate correct all right I, we've been through this before let's move on to a new topic please. you'd heard that he w people calling him a predator correct I don't know what I heard I heard just I heard them saying stuff about a little girl and I heard I, I just I don't know what else it was I, don't know. I didn't know if, like I said I didn't know if there was a girl in that group I wasn't worried about whether or not there was, I was worried about getting the person that they were calling a, 
pedophile or a raper away from the minors. You can you agree, have a conversation about that later. You agree that even though you're not, as you say, you're not a fighter, you pushed a man from behind while your friend was smacking him in the front. Agreed? I would. Hold on, hold on. Sustain. We, we've been through this before many times. Please. You have an ex Please. I am speaking. I'm sorry. I Please did. move to a new topic. I apologize, Judge. I thought you were done. Do you have any explanation as to why you pushed him while your friend was hitting him if you're not a fighter? Objection to I already answered well, no, this. No, please, please. Asked and answered. Sustained. Was it because you got caught up with the crowd? It was because I couldn't see the person in front of me because my hair was blocking my vision and I was focused on the man who had just punched a 23-year-old or 22-year-old girl in the face. That's all. Mr. Anderson? Nothing else. All right. Thank you, Mr. Martin. You may step down. Is he released? Okay. Please see the witness coordinator in the back. Uh, do you have another witness available? Can we do can we approach? Yes. Osri Osimpour. Osri Osimpour. That does a lot of practice. She may have stepped downstairs. We've got folks looking for her. Okay. We can take so While we're in between witnesses, if you want to stand and stretch, please do so. It just might be a moment or two before she uh, comes back upstairs. What I'd like to do is get as far as we can, and then we'll break for lunch. Close <coughs> to you. You'll let me know when the lunch arrives.
Right. Ms. Kazari Nazimpur, yeah. please come forward. Right into about the middle section here, and then you can face the clerk, raise your right hand, she will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smesta. Oh, would you please stay your, say your name and spell your name for us, please? My name is Gabriella Kazrein-Azenpour, and how to spell Kazrein-Azenpour is K-H-A-Z-R-A-E-I-N-A-Z-M-P-O-U-R. Um, how old are you? 25 years old. Uh, what do you do for a living? What? What do you do for a living? I work as a phlebotomist at Octopharma in Maplewood. Um, where do you live? What town? I live in Centuria, Wisconsin. Um, were, were you um, part of a group uh, with the Carlson family tubing on the Apple River back on um, July 30th of 2022? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I can't hear you. I'm, I'm going to pull the microphone closer. Sorry. Do you, do you have some hearing loss? Yeah, I was deaf as a baby. Okay. Um, were you part of the of a group of people that were tubing down the Apple River um, back on July 30th of 2022, including the Carlson family? Yes, I was. Um, uh, if I can approach, Judge. Yes. <clears throat> Do you go by a nickname? You can call me Gabby. Okay. Gabby, I'm going to show you what's been marked as exhibit number 26. I'll ask if you recognize that document. Yes. Can you tell us what it is? It's a picture of me and all my friends on the Apple River. Is it from that day, July 30th, 2022? Yes, it was. Uh, which one are you? I'm the one standing next to Q and Dante. Is there any, a yellow label showing your name? Yes, there is. Uh, in that picture, are you drinking any alcoholic beverages? No, I am not. Uh, had you been drinking that day? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, do you remember what you had to drink? No, I do not. Uh, do, you remember, do you remember how many drinks you had? If I had to guess, maybe five. Right. And is that five over the course of the day? Yeah, throughout the whole Apple River, tubing down the river. All right. At some point as your group is going down the river, did you come across a disturbance of some kind? Uh, yes. Uh, what did you see yourself? I saw a group of kids asking for help. Did you know who these kids were? No, I did not. Um, did you, could you figure out why they were asking for help? They said that they were, this guy was sending, saying that he was a pet, they were, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Slow down, we're all, we got time. They were asking for help because he said he was a pedophile. All right. He said that or they said that? They said that. All right. Um, did your group stop when you came across this disturbance? Not originally, no. It took us a little bit before we did stop. All right. Eventually you did, did you stop? Eventually, did your group stop? Yes. Um, did uh, someone from your group go over to uh, this group that was asking for help? Uh, yes. Um, do you know who that was? It was Madison. All right. Did you, uh, what did you see Maddie do? I saw Maddie ask this guy to leave multiple times, and he chose not to. All right. Um, did he react to her telling him to leave multiple times? Eventually, yes. Uh, what, did he, what did you see him do? I saw him hit her in the face. All right. Um, at that point, were you on your tube or were you in the area? Where, where were you located? It was probably in between the tubes of where my group was and then where, the, where uh, everyone else was dealing with the situation. All right. Do you know about how far away you were uh, when uh, you saw Maddie get hit by the, the other person? Maybe from me to you. Um, did you see uh, what happened to Maddie after she was struck? I saw Dante punch him in the face and he went down. All right, did you see where Maddie went? I saw Madison was still standing behind, far away from the situation. All right. Um, do you know, or were you close enough to see what hand he used to punch her? His right hand. All right, and did you see what, what part of her face that he uh, struck? The side right here. Okay. You're saying, are you pointing to your right cheek? It would have been her left. Left cheek? Yes. <clears throat> Do you know whether he used a fist or an open hand? Uh, I don't fully remember. All right. Um, after Dante, uh, you said you saw Dante punch the gentleman. Did he fall down? Yes, he did. Um, eventually, did he get back up? Yes, he did. What did you see him do when he got back up? 
Um, I don't really remember what I saw. I just blinked and then everyone was bleeding. All right, did you see him stab anybody? No, I did not. Right. I'm gonna show you a still frame from uh, the video. Are you aware that there was a video taken that day? After the math, yes. All right, did, did you, uh, have you ever seen it? I saw it for the first time on March 18th. All right. Your Honor, I'm asking to show it. It's, it's uh, slide 2993. We're ready. So, Gabby, on, 20, on 2993, do you see yourself in that picture somewhere? Yes, I do. Uh, can you explain to us where you're at? I am behind Riley holding the phones. All right. And what are you wearing? I'm wearing a green swimsuit. All right. Um, when you say Riley, which person in this picture is Riley? Riley's the one with her mouth open holding the side of her body. All right. Who's the person standing right behind Riley? I have no idea who that is. Was he part of your group? Uh, no. We're going to move ahead to 3024. All right, Gabby, we're showing you uh, slide 30, 24 from the video. Do you still see yourself in that video? Yes, I do. Um, is that you in the middle, still in this, the green bikini? Yes, sir. Um, the gentleman that you don't, didn't recognize with the sunglasses, uh, where is he located in relation to you? No relation. I don't know him. I mean, but where is he located? In uh, front of me. Um, who's that directly to his, would be his left? With the swimsuit? Right. That'd be Riley. All right. So this, did, did you see this gentleman walking into the group? Not that I recall, no. All right. But you see him there now? Yes. <clears throat> Was he part of the group of children that, or teenagers that had been calling for help? I do not remember. All right. We're going to go forward. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to scroll through, and we're going to try to stop at 4511 here, if you can just watch the screen. Okay, we're ready. Gabby, we're showing you the uh, frame 3029. Um, are you in that frame, if you can tell? I think I'm behind the guy in the black shirt. All right, the black shirt and the sunglasses? Yes. Did, did he appear to be walking up to Mr. Mew? Yes. Do you, do you remember that, or are you just remembering it because it's on the slides? Just because it's on the slides. Okay. At the time, did you make a mental note of who is this person? No.
I may have already asked you this, but you didn't see Mr. Mew stab anybody? Correct. Um, at some point, did you realize that some people had been stabbed? Yes. Um, was one of those folks Riley Madison? Yes, it was. She came up to me. After, when did she come up to you? Well, I was on the phone with 911. All right. Um, it's, that's my next question. At some point, did you call 911? Yes, I did. While this incident was going on? Yes. Um, when Riley came up to you while you were on the phone with uh, uh, 911, what did she look like? She looked like she was having a hard time breathing and was bleeding down the side of her. Did you see where Mr. Mew went after he stabbed these folks? No, I did not. Uh, were you recording anything? No, I was not. Um, did you have your phone out for the purpose of nine, the 911 call? Yes. <clears throat> did you um, see if people stop to render aid uh, to folks who were injured? Yes, I did. Sustained. All right. Did you see anybody else stop? Yes. What were they doing? They were helping us with everyone that was bleeding. Oh, we're ready. <coughs> Gabby, I'm showing you a, a, a zoomed in uh, view of slide 4511. Uh, do you see yourself on that slide? Yes, I do. Uh, whereabouts are you located generally? I'm on the, with the green swimsuit, looks sunburnt like a lobster. All right, are you to the left or the right of uh, the, the gentleman in the yellow shirt? I'm not good with my left and rights. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> do you see a gentleman in a yellow shirt? Yes, I do. Do you see a person that's off to the... I'm behind. Someone who appears to be on the telephone? Yes, that, that's me. All right, is that... What are you doing with the phone at that point? I think I'm on the phone with 911. All right. Do you remember how long you were on the phone with them? No. All right. I don't have any other questions. <clears throat> Officer? Ma'am, in terms of your, your memory of what had happened, uh, tell me if I have this right. You have a recollection of it up until what point? What do you mean? Well, I think you said uh, you, you blanked at some point and, have no mem and don't remember what happened after a certain point that day, right? Is that true? Yes. Okay. Do you remember when that was? Um... Probably the most I don't remember is when everyone was getting stabbed. Okay. Um, you do remember floating and hearing people, I think you said the, the group was saying that he was a pedophile. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And that certainly made you feel a certain way, right? Well, yes. Okay. How did it make you feel? Uncomfortable. Okay. Concerned? Yes. And... It, It got Madison Cohen off of her tube. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And I think you heard, or you, you indicated, that Madison asked him to leave multiple times. Is that right? Correct. Okay. You didn't hear Madison attempting to figure out what was going on, right? You just heard her tell him to leave. Is that true? Correct. Okay. And to be fair, if we're being fair, she's yelling at him, isn't she? Yes. Okay, she's swearing at him, isn't she? Yes. Okay. And if we're being fair, she doesn't have any information, to your knowledge, as to what's actually going on, right? Correct. Okay. So if I said she's jumping to a conclusion, in your mind, is that fair? No, correct, Your Honor. Sustained. You would agree no one in your group had any information as to what actually had happened, right? Correct, yes. Okay. And you don't see or hear Madison Cohen ask Mr. Mew 
his side of the story, do you? No. Okay. So she walks up and immediately starts yelling at him to leave. True? Correct. Okay. And you'd agree, she doesn't have any authority to do that, right? Objection. She wouldn't know what authority to pass by that. Sustained relevance. He can be wherever he wants on the river, right? Correct, yes. And she can be wherever she wants. Correct, yes. Okay. And when she's yelling at him and, and telling him, swearing at him to leave, you'd agree he doesn't react in a violent manner, correct? Eventually he does, yes. My question to you is when all of this is, when she's telling him to leave and swearing at him and walks up to him, he doesn't react aggressively, true? Yes, but he doesn't say anything either to us. Doesn't act aggressively, yes? Yes. Okay. And he doesn't, ver he's not verbally aggressive either, right? He doesn't say anything. So that would be not being verbally aggressive, right? Correct. Okay. And you know there's six people, six of these people that are asking for your assistance, right? Yes. Okay. And then so more of you come over to help, is that right? Yes. Do you see um, Madison wave you guys over? Is that why you come over? Do you see that? No. What do you mean? Uh, there's been testimony and videos and stills of Madison waving, like using her hand like I'm using it now, waving your group over. Okay. Is that why you went over? No, I just followed her. You just followed Madison mm -hmm. over? Okay. Do you get involved right away? No. Do you, Are you jumping to conclusions as to what has happened? No. Come on up. Would you agree that Madison Cohen is in Mr. Mew's face when she's yelling at him? Yes. Okay. And you had said um, on direct examination that you observed um, Mr. Mew punch her, right? Yes. Okay. And you said that he used his, his right hand and punched her on the left side of her face. Yes. Okay. And that's how you remember it, right? Yes. Okay. You told the police that he smacked her across the face using his left hand, actually, though, <coughs> didn't you? Yes, I did say that. Okay. But that's not what happened. So when you were talking to the police, you weren't telling them the truth? No, I was. It was just, there was a lot that was going on. Have you been watching this case? No. Okay. So... Do you have a specific recollection now, 21 months later, that Mr. Mew didn't hit her with his left hand, but hit her with his right hand? Can you rephrase this? Up? I can re-ask it. Yeah. Do you have a, a specific recollection now after 21, about 21 months since this happened, that Mr. Mew didn't <clears throat> use his left hand, but in fact used his right hand? Yes, he used his right hand. Okay. And when you had said that he smacked her across the face, when you, t when you told... That's the drilling I was warning you about. Hopefully it's going to be mitigated. When you told that to the police, is the word smacked uh, and across the face, is that an indication from you that he's using an open hand? Yes. Okay. Um, so when you tell the police that he uses an open left hand, now you're saying he used a closed right hand. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And you've watched 
Have you watched this video all the way through? Yes. Okay. So you're aware that when he's stand, when Mr. Mew's standing in front of Madison Cohen, he's holding the knife in his right hand, right? You're aware of that? Yes. Okay. And it's your testimony that holding this knife in her, his right hand, he still punches her in the face with this hand. That's your testimony? Yes. Okay. And that she was holding her left side? Yes. Okay. And you would agree that your statement to the police was she was holding the right side of her face, right? I don't remember. Well, if I told you that you indicated the male suspect smacked Madison across the face using his left hand, your name, Gabriella, then advised that Madison walked away holding the right side of her face. Uh, I'm very bad with my left and rights. So it could it was with his right hand though. And I'm gonna show you, can you go to 2573? I'm gonna show you um, just one or two stills, okay? okay. I'm going to tell you, that's, I don't know if you know this, the guy in the yellow shorts is A.J. Martin, right? Yes, it is. Okay. okay, and he's walking toward Mr. Mew and toward Madison, right? Is that fair? Maybe. Okay. Not really facing that direction to see. You're standing there just watching what's going on, is that right? Yes. Okay, and if I <coughs> submit to you that this is a moment before you're saying this punch occurs, you're not looking at, at what's going on, are you? Not in the picture, no. Okay. And you're holding a telephone? Yes. Are you recording on that telephone? No. Okay. Um, when you walk over there, can I walk? When you walk over there, you know that Mr. Mew's alone, or you believe he's alone, right? Yes. I think it's up under the bottom of that. Okay, I'm going to, may I approach it? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as exhibit, moved actually, as 104. Um, I would submit to you, tell me if this is fair. You believe this is a, a photograph of Madison Cohen and Riley Yes. And this has been uh, introduced into evidence as to the general location of folks um, as this incident was going on. Okay? Okay. I think you are represented by GK there. Okay. Okay. Do you think that's a accurate representation to the best of your knowledge as to when Madison and Riley were in front of Mr. Mew where everyone else was kind of situated. I don't remember where everyone was situated when it happened. Okay. Um, you were off to their, <coughs> off to Madison and Riley's right-hand side though, right? Yes. Okay. And I think you told uh, the state that you are, I don't know the distance here, but you're 15? That you told me how far how far yeah, away were I'm not good at math, so I don't know. You're a little distance away. Yes. Right. Um, and there's there's thirteen of you. There's been testimony. There's thirteen of you when this goes when this happens. Did you say that's fair? Yeah. Okay. And the person that you've been asked about meaning the person wearing the black shirt who kind of comes in at the end, who's blocking that picture of you. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. You didn't see him during this incident, did you? No. Okay. To your recollection, he wasn't there to assist, meaning he wasn't present to assist Mr. Mew when this was going down, right? No. 
Okay. So to the best of your recollection, it was Mr. Mew alone in the situation. True? True. Okay. You remember, tell me if this is fair. You remember Dante Carlson punching Mr. Mew in the face? Yes, I do. Okay. And do you remember seeing Mr. Mew fall down? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you recall Dante Carlson smacking Mr. Mew across the face again? No. You don't recall that? No. Okay. Do you recall A.J. Martin pushing Mr. Mew from behind? No. Okay. Do you have any recollection after that as to kind of what happened? Like what happened during all of that? Yeah. No. Okay, that's okay. I'm, just, I'm not being critical. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting what you know. Okay. okay. Ma'am, I don't have any other questions. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Just a couple, Judge. Yes. No, I'm afraid. Um, Gabby, that's attorney asked you a lot about uh, which hand he used, what you told police. Can you hear me? Yeah. So regardless of what hand he may have used, do you have any doubt that Mr. Hughes struck Gabby? The face? Oh, he did. Um, the, uh, Mr. Trophacy had, had said things to you like he wasn't acting violent when uh, Maddie was telling him to get out of there and swearing at him and such. But then he asked you if you were aware that he was holding the knife when that happened. Yes. Um, did you see him holding the knife? No, I did not. <clears throat> I'm going to show you um, some slides starting at 2504. We're going to scroll through from 2504. And before we start, do you remember this moment in time? On the river, or, or it looks like Riley's in front of him, looking at him. No, I do not. All right. Can you, as we scroll through, I want you to look and see what's in his right hand. Judge, I'm going to object. She has no recollection of it, and the video is the face. Like, wait, I don't like speaking objections. If you want to talk, come on up, and we can talk all you want. <clears throat> Objection is sustained. Let's move on. Did you know he had a knife in his right hand? No, I did not. We're going to continue scrolling through. Eventually, we're going to see you in relation to these folks. And we stopped at 2563. Is that you? Yes. And at that point, is your head turned off to the to where your group is? Yes. Uh, had he punched Maddie yet at that point? Objection, Judge. She doesn't since you didn't. Uh -huh. So objection. Oh. Objection noted in this circumstance overruled. At that point, while your head was turned, did he punch Maddie? While your head was turned? No, I saw him punch Maddie. Right. Nothing else, Mr. Trophacy. When. This is fair. When he, when you're saying that he struck Maddie, Maddie was in his personal space, yes? Yeah. And I know there was a question about holding the knife. He never threatened anybody with the knife uh, when he pulled it out, right? Yeah, right. Overruled. You don't have a recollection of him showing that knife and trying to no, intimidate people with it or no. anything, do you? That's all I've been. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kazri Azampur. You may step down. Uh, please see the coordinator in the back. She'll give you further instructions. Uh, it's a little afternoon. I understand lunch has just arrived, so we're going to break. 
Uh, just to remind you, uh, do not begin your deliberations. Do not discuss the case with yourselves or with the attorneys, the public, the media, or anybody else. Uh, do not conduct any independent research or investigation. Uh, do not watch uh, or read any uh, accounts of this trial on your devices. Uh, the bailiff will take you downstairs for lunch, and we will reconvene at 1 o'clock. All rise for the jury. Please be seated. All right, we are outside the presence of the jury. Um, Mr. Anderson mentioned this morning that one witness scheduled for this afternoon may raise uh, spousal privilege. Is she still on schedule? Yes. Okay. Have the attorneys talked about this topic? No, other than yes, we agree that we don't agree with the state. Yes, we're going to raise privilege. Okay. So I, Go ahead. To outline our position, when Nikolai came back to his group of tubers, he said some things to the group, which his wife heard, and he also made statements to her on jail phone calls, which are recorded. Statements can only be privileged if they're private. Right. Neither of those are private. You disagree, Mr. Nelson? Correct. We assert privilege. Well, here, what, what time is she scheduled for? We were going to call her at 1. We couldn't change things up. No, what we'll simply do then is uh, we'll, the attorneys will come back with the witness at, um, let's say, 1250. Uh, I'll take a short record outside the presence of the jury, uh, figure out what exactly these statements entail, whether or not they're private, and whether or not the privilege applies. That's how we'll do it. Okay. All right. That's all. 1250. 12 Enjoy your lunch, everyone. And good afternoon from our Fox 9 streaming center. Uh, lunchtime, as you've just heard, uh, in the Apple River stabbing trial of Nikolai Miyu. Uh, some fascinating uh, um, legal issues uh, developing uh, here in a moment. Uh, I know we have our legal analyst on standby in a moment. Before we do, I do want to just show you a quick graphic now at the end of uh, this morning's witness testimony. We have now heard from uh, the surviving, all of the surviving stabbing victims uh, injured that day. Of course, Isaac Schumann, uh, the 17-year-old, was killed. A.J. Martin, badly injured. He would spend 27 days uh, in the hospital, disemboweled. He spoke on the witness stand of literally hol holding his intestines outside of his body after being slashed uh, by Nikolai Miu. On the bottom row there, Riley Matson, and then the two brothers who attempted uh, to play peacemaker there from the quote-unquote Carlson tubing group nearby. They came over and then ended up uh, getting into a physical conflict with Nikolai Miu. As you've heard throughout, although defense trying to punch holes in it, they all believe that their friend Madison Cohen was punched or hit first by Nikolai Miu, uh, which then got everybody else riled up and led to uh, subsequent uh, physical uh, confrontation uh, between these young folks uh, in their 20s and Nikolai Miu. Isaac Schumann, interestingly enough, uh, although in that teenager group of Stillwater tubers, he is the only one uh, struck. Uh, by Nikolai Miu's knife that day and tragically uh, would die 
um, following that July 30th, 2022 encounter. With that, let's bring in uh, trial attorney uh, Mike Bryant on one issue. I just, um, I'm kind of interested. It sort of became a theme through several of those witnesses today. This idea that Nikolai Miu wasn't verbalizing anything, didn't talk, didn't say anything. Quick thoughts on that? Well, I mean, they're trying to get the opening, you know, uh, the opportunity to get in front of the jury, the evidence as they see it as the strongest so that the jury goes home um, on this day with a whole uh, bunch of, of things and images and thoughts in their head. Um, so they get an opportunity to be able to, you know, think about it over lunchtime and uh, basically add a whole bunch of uh, with the with showing the scars and with doing uh doing uh getting the testimony that they did getting the the real active part of it the first couple of days they're they've been working on getting the story out getting it so the jurors can at least understand so jurors just don't come in completely clueless and then today has been kind of the the here's our big show of all the scars and and all the the people that were actually in in direct com, uh, conflict with the defendant yeah, I meant more by just real life. Uh, well, you know, put put yourself there if you're seeing this video and have to present it to someone. This idea that Miu isn't verbalizing anything, isn't talking. You heard the one guy who badly injured AJ Martin um, kind of talk about he wanted to play peacemaker. It didn't quite work out. Obviously, one person can have a plan, and you know the crowd is going to dictate what then occurs. But this idea that that Miu didn't say anything, didn't verbally interact with anybody. I don't know. What do you? What, is he confused? Is he dazed? I mean, is he drunk? Uh, what what, so what do you think is going on there? That's going to go really towards you know. That's why I think he's probably in this case having to testify because he'll need to explain that. Um, and if he gives that some substance that the jury accepts, then the jury will be able to answer those questions for themselves. Um, he, you know, they, there's comments that they're claiming that he made at the very beginning that helped in, in getting this to start. But that all being said, the jury's going to get an opportunity to be able to hear from him, I would expect, just to be able to explain that. And I have a couple other questions, so stick around with me through the next couple minutes before, just in case we had some folks join us late. I did want to play a little uh, sound from A.J. Martin on the uh, witness stand talking about the severity of the injuries. I know you spoke about the stitches and how the, the injuries and, and, and their, their impact on these young folks' lives, uh, how that plays out for the jury. But let's listen back to A.J. Martin from earlier this morning. Um, well, after he had hit Maddie in the face, um, I saw someone else hit him, and I wasn't sure who. Um, I saw him fall into the water, and my intention was, because I used to work at elementary schools and had experience breaking up fights with little kids and stuff like that, so my intention was to um, go over there and try and break it up. I saw him in the water, and I saw people going around him, so I went to push his shoulder in the, the front, but ultimately didn't. Um, but I was going to try and just get him to stay down for another second and then tell everyone to back up and then we could have figured out what was going on. But as I reached down to push him in the shoulders, he reached up and um, I guess, I don't know if you call it a stab, but got me with the knife. What was your injury? Um, well, there was a lot, I guess. Uh, the most um, apparent thing, obviously, was that my stomach was open and my intestines were in my hands. I don't know what other parts were there, but, I mean, they were in my hands. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I know that and from there, but afterwards with, like, the medical records and stuff, I know other injuries. I don't know if you want me to go into that or not. Um, did you, after you're holding your intestines, did you see much of anything after that? Not much. I mean, after that, I remember screaming pretty, pretty viscerally, I think is the word. Uh, and then I remember kind of scooping it together with my left arm and putting my right arm down and standing up and then falling down and standing up again. And I think I fell down and stood up one more time. 
And then I was kind of, I mean, I was still conscious. I was, I was talking. Um, but after that, really, all I remember is that and then telling Tony that I was going to die and him telling me I was going to be fine and that I wasn't. And my response every time was, uh, like 100% I'm, I'm going to die today. And then I remember waking up in the hospital with a breathing tube and my parents looking at me. I want to bring Mike Bryant back, uh, right back. And I thought he was an effective witness. I know he got uh, frustrated towards the end with some of the cross-examination, having to answer the question. But clearly he wore his heart on his sleeve there, attempted, uh, he thought what, what, what was right in the moment to help the teenagers to at least try to separate the group, but again, um, the actions around him kind of dictated what would subsequently happen. Uh, Mike, before uh, this lunch break, and something I'd like you to clear up before we say goodbye to you, is the spousal privilege issue between Nikolai Miu and his wife. You heard the, the sides kind of discussing it. She's going to be the next witness up. I'm just going to point out here, Sandra Miu in the last month or so has filed, and it looks like it's a completed closed case file now, uh, for divorce from her husband. I don't know if that changes any dynamic here, but you heard jailhouse phone calls. You heard uh, conversations on the river after the stabbing. He returned to the group. Um, what could be the arguments here? What evidence, what testimony from her could we expect to see this afternoon? Well, I mean, the, apparently the judge has already been briefed on the issue because I think he, uh, it was brought up right at the, well, it's definitely brought up right at the beginning uh, or the end of the of the uh, uh, morning session, and the judge is going to make a record of it. So we'll get a ruling from the judge about what's going to be allowed and what's not going to be allowed, but it's basically an attempt to shut her down from being able to testify very far about what, if anything, she was told because they were married at the time those statements were, were made by him. All right, there you go. You heard, uh, again, if you were just joining us, 1250, we'll come back in. We'll hear arguments kind of on both sides. The jury won't be in the room for that. Uh, that should be on the camera, the live feed. Our live feed would be up, so uh, we'll come back at 1250. But I appreciate you joining us uh, this morning through this lunch period, and we'll see you a little later this afternoon. Thank you, Mike. Um, before we uh, uh, let you go, and uh, we wanted to get back to some of the victim testimony from this morning, during Riley Madison, one of the five... Uh, people stabbed on the river that day. You, you may have heard in her uh, questioning, they talked about her speaking to Fox 9. In fact, she spoke uh, to me in a video Zoom uh, from her hospital bed at Regions Hospital days after the stabbing. Uh, she was recovering, she was still foggy for her, what was going on. But I asked her what happened that day and we put together a piece that runs about four minutes in her own words. And given we've just seen her testify today to some of, uh, some of what she told me, we thought it was appropriate now to share her words with you. Can I tell me how this whole thing went down? And I thought he had punched me in my stomach. Um, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like I was telling my friends, I was like, I think he, like, he punched me really hard. Like this feels weird. And we both had looked down and I instantly was bleeding. Um, I obviously was stabbed like instantly. Um, I didn't really see a knife. I recall maybe something kind of poking out of his fingers, kind of like this, um, holding down by his side, but I don't recall for sure if it was a blade or not. Um, my friend instantly, you know, saw that I was bleeding out and yelled to my other friends, you need to call 911. And to be honest, after that, no idea what happened. Um, I remember holding my wound, kind of walking around, see, like, just kind of like asking everybody, like, what do I do? Do I walk? Do I go find help? Do I lay down on a tube? Like, I'm, I feel like I'm dying. Like, what do I do? Everybody's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, I honestly didn't even know anybody else was stabbed. I was not paying attention to any of that. I was focused on myself because I was so scared and just so worked up and anxious. Um, so from that point, I was put on a tube and my friends were kind of pushing me down the river. And uh, um, there was another group, I think, that was maybe ahead of us. I don't know if they were ahead of us or if they had came behind us, but they actually helped me hold my wound closed to stop the bleeding. Um, until the cops had came. And then when the cops came, they put me on the road and I kind of laid there for a few minutes until the ambulance showed up. Um, and then I was put in the ambulance and brought here and had surgery. All right. I was irritated to kind of hear, you know, about the self-defense thing. Because whether or not we 
were in the, whether or not we were in the wrong for going over and confronting him, he still was the one to make the first move. He still could have walked away. He could have done anything like that. And that's kind of what irritates me the most. I'm 5'5", five, five, 120 pounds. I can barely handle myself. So there's not a whole lot I feel like I could, I could have done. Because to be honest with you, I thought I was going to lose my life too. Um, and like I said, I didn't even know anybody else was hurt. The only reason that I knew somebody was hurt um, was because I was laying on the road and I could hear my one of my friends that had been stabbed um, say like, please don't help me. You need to go help her. Like she is doing bad. You need to go help her. So everybody else that was involved, I knew except for Isaac. So like on my left side, I was punctured a little bit in my left lung and then he kind of messed up my diaphragm. So I actually have about 30 staples going from my belly button up my stomach um, where they had to go in to fix my diaphragm. And then they had to put in a chest tube and then I did have a nose tube that kind of went all the way through. I'm pissed. I am very, 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 very angry because I have to almost like relive my life and relearn how to live. I have to, I mean, I have to have people sh help me shower, go to the bathroom. Um, it's, I, I choke on water sometimes, like just like every little thing like that. It's just, it's insane that you, things can escalate so fast and that people just don't care about anybody in this world. And the, the world is just getting sadder and sadder. It's, it's a very, very scary place to live in. And it makes me want to stay home for the rest of my life. There's no way that an outing on the Apple River should end like this, right? I mean, this is. No. Shouldn't. I've been there a couple of times before. I'm actually like, I'm from that area. Um, so I don't live out there currently right now, but I, I, I am from that area and I would never in a million years expect anything like that to happen. And just a quick note from that edited uh, story we put together in her own words. You saw Nikolai Miu uh, in handcuffs come in uh, during a clip of video there. Uh, he remains jailed, for some of you who haven't followed the case uh, quite as closely. Uh, he remains jailed, but of course during a trial he will show up in street clothes. The jury doesn't know he's currently in custody, but he has not otherwise been able to post bond uh, throughout this uh, process or bail. Uh, in the state of Wisconsin, so he remains jailed. Just some insights into Riley's mind two years ago to today. I want to go back and play the entirety or as much as possible up until this 12.50 uh, uh, window of time. They talked about central time, so we've got about 30 uh, or 25 minutes, I should say, till we expect to see the parties uh, back in court uh, to discuss the spousal privilege between Nikolai Miu and his now ex-wife, Sandra Miu. So join us at 12.50 for now. Riley Madsen on the witness stand earlier this morning. Madison, R-Y-H-L-E-Y-M-A-T-T-I-S-O-N. And Riley, how old are you? I am 25. And how tall are you? 5'5". Five, five. And how much do you weigh? About 110 pounds. And were you about the same in July of 2022? <sighs> Maybe 115. <clears throat> Uh, were you tubing on the river that day with friends? I was. And were you drinking alcohol? I was. Using any other substances? I was smoking marijuana. And do you believe you're intoxicated? I do, yes. Was that your first time tubing on the river? Um, I've been on the river before, but I've started at different points with friends, so I've never really been on that part of the river. Okay. If your medical records say, well, I'll, let's see. What do you, do you remember at some point um, <coughs> along the river that something catching your group's attention? Not specifically mine. I was just kind of hanging out with my friends on the tube and we had stopped. Um, and so I kind of asked why we were stopping. Um, and I heard somebody mention something about a group looking uncomfortable. Um, I hadn't got off right away, so. Did you walk over after some other folks? I did. Um, I kind of was like, what's going on? And then I had told Janelle, like, let's kind of go over there and see what's going on. 
and what do you do you remember everything sequentially perfectly or is it I, it's very choppy for me okay so what do you remember next um i remember getting off the tube walking up to mr Mayu, um and i just remember maddie being there and yelling at him um i remember her being punched in the face and then i remember being stabbed and that is completely it so you don't remember did did you see or don't you remember anyone else stabbed no then do you know if it's because you don't remember or you didn't see or i just i think i was just focused on myself doing what i was doing i was not really paying attention to anybody else at all and what when you saw madison get punched can you explain that in as much details as you remember um i I barely really remember that part. I just remember him staring at us and then not saying anything and punching her. And I was just like shocked, like, oh, oh my God. Um, and that I don't, right after that, I, I literally remember being stabbed and that's it, so. With him punching her, do you remember any more details than that? Like what hand he used no, or how the punch all. was? Not at all. And what else do you remember about you getting stabbed? Um, I just remember seeing Nick's face very blank and not lunging at me, but just kind of poking me. And I held my side and I was like, ow, like Janelle, I think he punched me. Um, that really hurt. Like, and I looked down and I was bleeding out and holding my stomach and it just like didn't feel real. Like it was just a lot of shock and from there, I was walking around the river asking for help, like just asking somebody to help me. Um, I told Q that I felt like I was dying because I just was losing, like I was losing so much blood and every time I'd walk, I just felt like I was getting weaker and weaker. Um, so another group down the river had put me on a tube and kind of pushed me down to kind of get away, away from the scene. And then um, they were holding my side and just kind of keeping me awake and then when the cops had showed up, they took me off of the tube and put me on the ground. Um, and I just remember like Janelle coming over, you know, asking me to stay awake and the cops trying to ask me what my name was. Um, and then just being put in the ambulance and going to the hospital. And when you, when you touched your side, do you remember feeling anything? Um, no, I just was, I thought I was punched or something. I didn't really know. I wasn't really paying attention and it, it really didn't hurt. Um, but when I looked down, I was instantly like, I believe I was holding my stomach. I think Janelle was coming to help me to hold my stomach and hold my side. Um, and then just blood kind of going. And I didn't, I didn't want to look down because it freaked me out. And I didn't really want to touch it either because I didn't, I just didn't want to feel anything. So I kind of just barely held my hand on it. I just didn't want to feel it. Do you remember telling law enforcement that you felt like something was coming out of the wound when you touched it? I don't remember that. And did you have any... So as after you were brought on the tube to shore, you said people were telling you to stay awake. Did yeah, you... like just asking me my, kind of asking questions and like my name, like who are you, just kind of what's going on, anything that would make me stay awake. Um, and I just remember being super tired and I'm like, I just want to be left alone. Did you have trouble breathing at all? Um, not right away, uh, slowly but surely I did. And then once I get, got in the ambulance and actually got to the hospital, I like felt like I couldn't breathe at all. Um, but it was, it took a little time before that to actually like happen for me. I don't know if I didn't realize it right away, but. And where, where were you brought? If you remember when you're brought to shore, were you brought to the grass, the pavement? I was laid right on the blacktop. Cause I remember saying, oh my God, like this burns my back. Um, I believe, I just, I remember the bridge, so I know it was right before, like, the bridge, but I don't, ex like, know exactly where, but I know it was up 
right on the asphalt, I believe on the road that like the cops would drive on and the ambulance and everything. And were there officers or an officer there with you? Um, I believe I had one officer um, holding, helping me kind of put pressure on my side and talking to me, yes. Permission to approach? Yes. Anyone that's been marked as Exhibit 68, Is that a photo or is that an image of you on the blacktop? Yeah. Should I move to admit and publish 68? No objection. 68 is received. Go ahead and publish. I'm going to do it digitally. <laughs> Did you mean on your laptop? Yes. I'll tell you on a minute. You can take it down. <laughs> Riley, at some point were you transported away from the scene? Yes. Do you remember how? An ambulance. Were you brought to a hospital? Yes. And? Did you go immediately into surgery? I believe so, yes. Um, I just remember the ambulance telling me there's going to be a lot of people asking me questions. Um, and I just remember being put on a bed. And that's literally all I remember. I mean, them asking me kind of, you know, who you are, what's your name, what's your birthday, and I wouldn't answer. And I just kept saying I couldn't breathe. And that was the last thing I remember. Until uh after surgery? Yeah, I barely even remember waking up from surgery. Permission to approach? Yes. And if you what's been marked as exhibit 33, what's that? That is um, the incision where the doctors had to cut me up to put my stomach back in. I'd move to admit and publish. Did we approach? Yes.
Judge, we have no objection to the uh, introduction and evidence of Exhibit 33 and Exhibit 79, and no objection to publication. All right, so 33 is received and may be published, and 79 is in your hand? Yes. All right, 79 is received. Green. And for the record, this is 79. And Riley, what are we seeing in this photo? Um, that is, the bigger one is the stab wound, um, and the little one is from a chest tube. And how about in this one? Um, this is the one where they had to cut me open to get my stomach put back in. And so like here where the mouse is, that's from surgery? That's all from surgery and then the staples. And then on over here? Yep. What's that? The incision wound? This, this stitch is right here. Is that the stab wound? Yep, that's the stab wound. The one we looked at? Prior, yep. Okay. Oh, and are you in the photo, are you taking this in a mirror? Yes. So the, which side is the wound actually on? On my left side. So it's reversed in this photo? Yes. You can turn off the screen. And I think you testified that you remember him looking at you and then reaching over. Do you, do you recall telling law enforcement you don't remember if you hit him or said something to make him angry? I do remember saying that. Um, I think I was trying to maybe find a reason why he did what he did to me. Um, or you know, after he had hit Maddie, if I had maybe put my hands on him because he had hit Maddie, I think I was just finding a reason. Do you, from what you remember of being stabbed, do you have any memory of actually hitting him or saying anything? I don't remember saying anything, hitting him, touching him, nothing. I'm gonna go through some slides with you. There's some still frames from the video. I'm on 2496, I'm ready. Riley, are you in that photo or that image? Yes. Okay. Is that your arm there? Yes. Okay. Can you turn off the screen? I'm going to go to a different one.
All right, I'm ready. All right, I'm on 24.58 and I'm gonna scroll through. And actually, th your arm again? Yes. Stopping on 24.70, uh, what are you doing in this image? Um, I'm not sure if I'm just touching his shoulder, if I'm going to push him. Twenty four ninety two. Have you removed your hand at this point? Yes. Did you see a push? I mean, kind of like a little. I guess I don't know what to call it, but just kind of maybe brushing his shoulder. Um, I guess a push. Yes. Do you want to see it again? Objection. Cumulative. Sustained. 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 <clears throat> Pausing on 2531. Did you see the knife in his hands when you're standing there? I don't remember. Is that your. Do you know if that's your hand or Maddie's no, hand? That is Maddie's hand. Okay, how do you tell the nail polish? Yeah, I don't wear nail polish. And do you see yourself in that image, 2662? I do. To the left of Dante? I do. To the right of Maddie? Yes. Can we meet this, turn off the screen? I'm gonna go to another image. We have the screen. This is 2861. Riley, do you see yourself in this image? I do. <clears throat> Where are you? I am standing right behind Nick Miu. What uh, color swimsuit? Uh, blue with flowers. I'm going to scroll. Uh, stopping on 2948, do you see yourself in this image? I do. Holding your side? I do. Let me keep scrolling. And I, you said one of your friends came to your aid after you were stabbed? Uh, yes, Janelle. Is she in this photo? She is. She is 
and then the black swimming suit. Okay, I'm gonna keep scrolling. Do you remember retreating or recoiling from Nikolai at that point or no? What do you mean by that? And these, I'll back up a little bit. Okay. So I'm on 3017. Like running away? Yes. Yes. You can turn off the screen. Thank you. Do you remember Nikolai saying anything at all when you were standing in front of him? Not one word. Did you have any indication or did you see anything, hear anything to indicate if he was with a group? I had no idea who he was. I didn't know if he was a part of the group we were going to. I had absolutely no idea. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Yes, thank you, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. I want to ask you some questions about your intoxication and your memory, okay? Okay. You've, you've made lots of statements in this case, is that fair to say? Yes. You spoke to the police a couple of times, correct? Yes. You have spoke to uh, CARE 11 News, correct? Yes. You spoke with Fox 9 News, correct? Yes. And one of the things I think you've consistently said in all of those statements to the police, to the news, is you're basically like, I was drinking a lot. I don't remember much. Correct. Fair to say? Correct. And the reason that you consistently said that is because that's the truth, correct? Correct. You were drinking a lot, right? Correct. You were intoxicated, correct? Correct. Uh, you were also smoking the marijuana, correct? correct? And that, I'm sure, impacted your ability to perceive things as well as remember things. Agreed? Agreed. Um, and I think what you've used different words to say, like, things are blurry, correct? Yeah, I think I just have kind of like a specific patchy spot that I've been trying to figure out what's what happened in that little spot. Sure. But the words that you used, I think you used on direct, like you see chunks almost, right? Right. And then also what I'm gathering is the chunks that you do see, those are blurry. Yeah. And then in between the blurry chunks, there's just blank spaces. Correct. Okay. And you don't know whether those blank spaces in your memory are because of intoxication, correct? Correct. Or perhaps because of, uh, imagine that was a stressful event for you? Yes. Even before you were uh, cut with a knife, you, uh, you lacked some memory before that, correct? Yes. And I would imagine some of that before that was a little bit stressful, correct? Yes. Obviously the stress increased once you were injured, right? Yes. But nevertheless, the stress that you were under may have caused you to not remember certain things, correct? Correct. Um, you've probably talked with lots of lots of your friends about this event, correct? We've talked, yes. Yeah. This was, and then again, I'm not trying to judge. Just in fairness, this is a life-changing event for you, right? Correct. And for your group of friends, correct? Correct. Imagine when you get together, you chat about it. Yes. Right? People share their experience, correct? Correct. And maybe you help each other process what the experience was, correct? I wouldn't say necessarily process it, just kind of, I mean, in the beginning it was more of like, 
this is what I remember. Like, you know, how? what do you remember? I wouldn't say we were trying to give each other answers. But, but you had gaps in your memory, correct? Yes. And again, you don't get into specifics, but other people, when you were talking to that, that were there, they had gaps in their memory. Yes. And so sometimes you would share information with each other to try and maybe fill in the gaps, correct? Sometimes, yes, but I never really took what they said and put it together. I just remembered what I remembered in. And I appreciate that. You've been very clear about that. But I just want to make sure that we know that you've, you've got other information, right? Yes. And part of that is because is you want to know what happened, correct? Correct. And there's still some things, as you sit here today, that you don't know, correct? Yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah. All right. Um, and just the human condition, at least for you, is you mm -hmm. want to try to make sense of it, correct? Yes. And sometimes you, I would imagine, like the rest of us, you use deduction to try to put things together, correct? Yes. Even if you don't necessarily have a memory, you try to deduce what it is that happened, right? Yes. And so here in court, when we were talking, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to focus on the memory. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Because um, some of the things you might have said or you might talk about are from things that you've kind of, you think because you've deduced it. Would that be fair? Um, I guess. Sure. Well, let's talk about this. Like one of the, the one of the issues in the case is, um, what happened to Matt, right? Yes. And one of the first things that you told the police is you said, "quote I thought he slapped her because, like I said, it was just kind of not comprehending." You said that to the police, correct? I don't remember, but if I did, yes. And since then, you've said. She was punched, correct? That is correct. And today when you were asked, tell us the details of that, you were like, I just want to make sure I get it correct. I think you said, no, not at all. I don't remember. And we're going to cut away from Riley Madsen's uh, earlier testimony. She wanted the stabbing victim stabbed along the Apple River uh, that day in, in an encounter there with Nikolai Miu, the defendant. Uh, the sides have come back a little early. If you joined us before lunch, Judge Michael Waterman has to sort out uh, some legal arguments here. Nikolai Miu's uh, now ex-wife, Sandra Miu, is uh, about to be called as a state witness. Apparently, there are some issues about spousal privilege uh, the defense is going to claim here. Uh, my understanding, uh, if you were listening at that time, uh, was about... Uh, a couple of jailhouse, maybe several jailhouse uh, phone calls uh, that were recorded. Obviously, the jail uh, does record uh, uh, phone calls. There's some conversations between husband and wife, uh, as well as uh, some conversations after the stabbing when Miu returns to his tubing group. I don't want to miss any of it right now. I believe the microphones are muted. I'll be quiet. Right, back on the and record. here we go, we back on the record, the Judge Michael the Waterman. Uh, Mr. Miu is present in the courtroom. Um, I want to conduct a short voir dire of the next witness uh, to see whether or not spousal privilege applies. Um, the general rule is that a person has the privilege to prevent that person's spouse or former spouse from testifying about uh, something that was uh, said between them in private. Um, that communication has to be made during the marriage. Um, can we all agree that the part or the, the muse were married on July 30, 2022? Yes. They remain married today? No, they divorced, I think, a couple weeks ago, okay. two, three weeks ago. Okay. Um, were they married when the jail conversation took place? Yes. Can we agree on that much? I, I guess I don't know. Yes, we agree that they were married. All right, so the question is whether or not it was a private communication. Right. So. Because the defense is asserting the privilege, I think they have the responsibility for establishing it. So I'll let them uh, start the voir dire. Mr. Uh, Anderson, you may ask some follow-up questions. We'll see where it ends up, uh, and then I'll make a decision. I appreciate the opportunity to start. I don't know what they're trying to introduce, so it's hard for me to start because I don't. Do you want to cede that position and let them do it? Yes, please. All right, Mr. Anderson. Which would I think also mean I they're trying to call her, so I want to be able to cross-examine her. Okay. And again, we're not getting into the substance of the conversation. This is just to explore whether or not it was private. That's all. Understood. Okay. 
All right, and I'm sorry, Mr. Mew's wife's name is? Sandra Mew. Sandra. All right, is she in the court courtroom? Yes. All right, um, Ms. Mew? All right, is she outside? She's outside, Judge. <laughs> Judge, while we're waiting, when she does testify, the defense moves uh, that any information about the divorce uh, be uh, inadmissible as it's irrelevant. It's going to open up other reasons uh, irrelevant to this. It's Is there any relevance to their marital status? I think it goes to bias or lack thereof because they're divorced now. The divorce is... Oh, here she comes. We'll talk about it later. Uh, Ms. Mew, uh, please come forward. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of so help you God? Yeah. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you state your first and last name? Sandra Mew. And Sandra, you were on the river with Nikolai on July 30, 2022? Yes. And do you remember him leaving your group at some point? Yes. And then do you remember some sort of commotion? Some sort of what? Some sort of commotion or disturbance? Yes. <clears throat> Did he come back to your group at some point? Yes. And was your group all pretty much all together then? Yes, I think so. And was Nikolai saying things when he came back about what happened? I don't know if he did then or this when he came back the next time. Okay, because so he left twice. Mm -hmm. So after the second time he came back, was he saying stuff about what happened? A little bit, not much. Um, do you talk about his knife? Mm -hmm. Yes. And was that when he was talking about that? Was that when he was back with your group? Yes. So did multiple people hear him talking about that? Section, no foundation sustained. Were you guys standing in a group? Objection or, bag. It's hard for me to understand what you mean by group. So yeah, sure. How many, how many people were in your tubing group? Um, I think there was about eight of us. And when Nikolai came back, if you remember, were you guys sitting down in your tubes, standing together? Objection bag. It, it, my point is... I think it's about whether Nick was talking to Sandra. So when he says you guys, is he talking about the entire group? Is he talking about these two? I'll, I'll, when he came back and was talking about what happened, was it to just you or multiple people? Um, I think it was just me at the beginning. And then later? Um, I think he talked to someone else while we were on the tubes. And you overheard some of that conversation? Not much of it. I, I couldn't hear what they were saying. Okay. But if, if... Do you recall speaking with law enforcement? I'm sorry, what? Do you call doing interviews with law enforcement? Yes. And do you remember if you told them about hearing what he was saying when he was talking to other people? I don't remember. Okay. But it'd be in the transcript? It could be. Uh -huh. And so when he said, he, when you said he was talking to you, where were you? Were you by other people? When we, when he came back to us, you mean? Yeah. No. Where were you? I was standing on the little sandbar. They were in the water. And where were the other members of your group? In the water. How close? I don't know. I didn't pay attention. Five feet, 10 feet? Probably 10. Was Nikolai speaking loud enough for other people to hear? 
Objection, no foundation. Was he whispering, talking in a normal voice, I don't animated? I don't remember. You, <clears throat> who was he talking to while you were tubing? Amy. Objection. I, I'm confused. Sorry. Tubing when? Uh, when you're tubing to the exit. Amy. Okay. And that's Amanda Torres? Yes. If other people talked about what Nikolai said when he came back, is that, if you know, did you tell them about it or would they have overheard it? I didn't tell anybody. Okay, so if other people knew what he said when he came back, it means they overheard what he was saying? Objection, leading, inaccurate. Yeah, this is Vladir, so I'm gonna give some latitude so we can get to the core of this. So, overruled. You didn't tell anyone else what he told you? No. Okay. Um, and then, while Nikolai has been in jail, you guys have spoken on the phone? Yes. And on those recordings, does it say these are being recorded? Yes. And that's at the start of every phone call? Yes. And... Um, at points, Nikolai has talked about the case. He tried. I stopped him. And sometimes he'd say something about the case before you could stop him? But I didn't. All I kept saying, if you're going to talk about it, I'm hanging up the phone. I don't right. want to hear it. Sure. But and he never got out very much. No, A couple but of words. some stuff he did. Yeah. Yeah. And... I think that's it. Mr. Nelson? So you were asking questions about uh, the conversations that you and Nick had after he came back the second time and you're standing on the sandbar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. During that, you consider that to be a private conversation, correct? Yes. Um, he was, uh, you two were engaged, just the two of you, correct? Yes. And no one else was within 10 feet of you, correct? Not that I know of, no. Uh, after that, there may have been times where other people talked to Nick between the time you spoke with him until he was arrested. Agreed? Yes. You don't know what Nick said in those other times, right? No. Because you weren't a party to those conversations. No, and I don't hear very well, so I want to hurt him. I wear hearing aids, so I don't hear, and I didn't wear them on the river, obviously. So all you know about is what Nick told you when the two of you were alone? Yes. That's what you remember regarding Nick's statements about what may or may not have happened? Yes. The phone calls on the jail, I want to ask you about that, okay? Okay. Um, you still consider those private, agreed? Yes. Um, there was a, you didn't know for sure whether somebody was or was not listening live, correct? That I don't know. I just know they say it's recorded. What they do with the recording, you don't know? No. Doesn't say, uh, okay, that's all. Anything else? You'd purposely tell them to stop talking sometimes because you knew somebody might be listening to those calls, right? Only if you started talking about what happened, I do. Okay. No. Mr. Nelson? The reason you stopped that is you weren't worried about somebody else hearing. You just didn't want to hear about the case. Fair to say? Uh, both. Okay. Nothing else. Thank you, Ms. Mew. Um, please have a seat in the back. Do you have other witnesses? On this issue? Yes. Um, I have a 911 call where you can also hear Nikolai talking in the background. Well, that's different. I mean, as far as this question of whether or not the statements to Ms. Mew were private? No. Mr. Nelson? No, we assert the privilege. All right. The privilege has been asserted. It's a statutory privilege. Uh, as I mentioned, a spouse may prevent another spouse, the other spouse, from talking about private conversations uh, that were made during the marriage. Uh, we're talking about two different uh, conversations between uh, spouses. 
Uh, one occurred on July 30, 2022, uh, shortly after the incident. Uh, on this record, um, I'm convinced that it was a private conversation because it was engaged between two people standing apart as far as 10 feet away from others. Uh, I consider that to be a private conversation and uh, will allow the privilege to be asserted for that communication. As far as the jail communication is concerned, that clearly is not private. Um, Ms. Mew testified that she knew it was being recorded. If it's being recorded, uh, somebody else has the ability to listen and the conversations are taking place uh, knowing that somebody else is recording and possibly could listen. Uh, so that conversation was not private and the state may inquire about the substance of those conversations. Uh, how does the, I don't know how the court wants me to handle that. I know it's very publicized that he's in custody. The jury probably knows, but I know we're trying to not make it obvious. He's in civilian clothes. So should I just not give a, ask a time frame so they might think it's shortly after the arrest or I don't know, or do I just say jail phone calls? Did he say this? Well, what do you propose to say? Well, you, you frame the question for me and let's find out whether or not there's an objection. Can I weigh in before that? Well, you want to give him a shot? Give him a chance to, unless you don't care. Oh, I, I care. I okay, let's, care. let's hear what he proposes that he's going to say and you tell me your thoughts after that. I would just ask, while Mr., while your husband, well, actually, I guess we got to address that too, but um, when Nikolai was in jail, did you have conversations with him? And did you talk about this? Did he say this? And leave, essentially leave it at that? Uh, I would permit the state to lead, and I don't think that there would be any reason why they would need to go beyond between now and July 30th. Did you have conversations with your husband? Yes. Did your husband tell you X, Y, Z? She says yes, she says no. If she says yes, we're done. If she says no, they play the recording. The fact that there's a recording, I don't, the fact that where it is, is irrelevant. The only issue is, is that there's a recording. Your Honor's already ruled on that, and if she doesn't agree with it, they can play the recording. But I don't think we need to know why they have the recording. Mr. Anderson? That's fine, I'll, I'll just say. Use, use leading questions. Yes. And if she, deviates from the script, then you're going to be able to impeach her on things that may be uh, more sensitive. All right, what else? I, would, I don't think there's any, my request is that we don't say it's a jail recording. Just, it's a recording. It doesn't matter where it came from. That's what I understood the agreement to be. Okay. Correct, Mr. Anderson? Yes, I'll just say, did you have recorded phone calls with Nikolai? No, did you have conversation? Okay, sure. And in that conversation was X, Y, and Z said. All right, let's um, circle back on the relevance of the divorce. Um, how is it relevant? Well, for one, defense said in their opening, she is his wife, present tense. So, I mean, I think they could have just. I'm not his divorce lawyer. Well, okay, well. Um, also, I mean, it's. It goes to bias or prejudice on, you know, we're asking all these witnesses, what are their relations with each other? Are they friends? Do they still talk to each other? So they're divorced. Um, the finances are done. She doesn't have a financial stake in this trial because the divorce is finalized. So it goes to bias or prejudice. Who's saying she's biased? I mean, we're not claiming she's biased. Is the state claiming that she's biased because she's divorced? I'm not tracking the rationale behind the relevancy. Okay. If she, Are they going to? Well, let's, let's put it this way. The, the relationship of the witness to the defendant is relevant. What is their relationship? That's, that's where the relevance lies. Um, you said that if we get into the fact that they were divorced, it's going to open up a lot of other issues. And what are those issues? Well, I think I get to ask her, you didn't divorce him because you don't love him anymore. You didn't divorce him because you disapprove of his behavior on 730th. This was a financial decision. And other than the, you know, state of Minnesota's financial, you still care and support. And I mean, I think I get to say all of those things if they get into that. Okay, well, I'm, I think the relationship is relevant. 
I don't think there's any unfair prejudice if, if the jury knows that they're divorced. And um, it'll be subject to cross-examination if you want to explore these other topics to rehabilitate. So if you want to ask that question, that's what you're going to receive on the other end. Uh, I just want to point out one thing, though. At the beginning of the trial, when I was asked to make a, an exception for the sequestration rule, it was written to me that they were married. I and now I'm learning that they're divorced. I didn't know that the divorce was final. I am not his divorce attorney. I apologize if I was misleading. I don't believe she sat in the trial at all. And so it was not my intent to. I did not know the status of their proceedings. All right. Is there anything else that we need to address? I don't think so. Mr. Nelson? No objection. All right. Uh, let's bring the jury in. Hmm. Here's you. Uh, why don't you have a seat in the back? Uh, and then we'll call you back up to the witness stand. She. She's not a victim. I guess. Just so everyone's aware, we're going to re-administer the oath so that their jury sure. Is. Be seated. Welcome back, members of the jury. We are ready to continue with the next witness. Uh, who is that witness, Mr. Anderson? Sandra Mew. Ms. Mew, would you please come forward? Uh, please face the clerk, raise your right hand, and she'll administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name? Sandra Mew. And Sandra, do you work? No. Um, where, what city and state do you live in? I live in Lakeville, Minnesota. And obviously you know Nikolai Mew? Yes. <clears throat> where did you guys where did you two meet? At work. And is that Richie Engineering? Yes. Were you tubing with Nikolai on July 30, 2022? Yes. Were you with a group of people? I'm sorry, what? Were you with a group of people? Yes. Yes. I'm handing you it's been marked as Exhibit 12. You can take it. Are those the people you were tubing with? Yes. Okay. Um, move to admit and publish. Any objection to 12? No objection. Can you see that? Do you yeah. go by Sandy or Sandra? Sandy. Okay. <coughs> Far left person, who is that? It's Ariel. And how do you know Ariel? He's Ernesto's nephew, and Ernesto used to work with us. Okay. How many times were you and Nick, or just Nick, close friends with Ariel, just met him? 
Um, we sort of were close friends with them. We'd go over to Amy and Ernesto's house, and he would be there. Okay. And how about the woman next to Ariel? I don't know him, know her very well. That's Ariel's girlfriend. Okay. And then, um, guy third from right? I don't know him. That was the first time he had been there. Okay. And then that's Nikolai next to fourth from right? Yes. Okay. Where are you in this photo? I'm in the inner tube, in the middle. Okay. And then, where's Ernesto? Ernesto is in between Amy and Rosie. Okay. Maybe I'll go back. Can you still see it? Yeah, sort of. Okay. And who's Rosie? Rosie is Ernesto's sister. And how do you know... Ernesto and Rosie. I know Ernesto because we worked with him. Rosie's been over at his house when we would go over there. Okay. How long have you known Ernesto? Um, I, I don't even know. Ten some years. Probably maybe a little bit more. Ten to fifteen? Yeah, I'd go ten to fifteen. Okay. Do you guys, you and Nick, would you socialize with them a lot? Yes, we'd go to their house. Would they come to your house? Yes. Okay. So decent close to close friends? Yes. How about Amanda or Amy? That's Ernesto's wife. Okay. You knew her pretty well too? Yes. And Tatiana, did you know her? I only knew her a little bit. I met her a couple of times when we'd go over to Amy and Ernesto's house. Okay. And, and same with Peachy. I only met him when we go over there, and I only met him maybe three times. Okay. And you, that's what you know him as, <coughs> Peachy? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay. Sorry. When you were tubing in the beginning, did Nikolai have a knife on him? I don't know if he did when we were tubing. In the beginning, at the start? He only did to cut the strings on the tubes. He went back to the Jeep, and I thought he put it away. Okay. Um, and as you guys were tubing... So you didn't see him put it there, you just thought he put it in the Jeep when he went back to the Jeep? Yes. And is that what he brought it for, to cut the string? Yes. So you could tie up at the beginning? Yes. Okay. Actually, Ernesto called Nick and asked him to bring it okay. so we could, he could cut the string. Did, you, did your group stop on the way? Did you stop anywhere on the way while tubing? While we were tubing? No, did you stop? Before we got there? Yeah, did you stop somewhere to eat or no. hang out on a beach or anything like that? No. You remember telling law enforcement you stopped and you were eating for like 30 minutes or so and using the bathrooms? That was why we were tubing. What do you mean? Can you explain that? We were tubing down the river and there was a spot that is covered where they must have played a band or something there once okay. in a while. It was on the river while we were tubing. We stopped to eat. Gotcha. You thought I was asking about before tubing? Yes. Okay, sorry. And did Nikolai have uh, snorkel goggles with him? Yes. And was he snorkeling by a group of young guys at one point? I don't know. He just took the snorkel and went out there. Did you see him by a group of young guys at some point? I did later. Okay. When the incident started. And was there actually a couple times that Nikolai went over to that group? That I don't know for sure. Did you tell law enforcement that he went over there twice? 
I know he, I, I think he went to that group, he came back, and then I didn't know he went back to that group until later I saw him over there. Okay. So he had, he had gone to the group of the young guys, came back, and then at some point he went back there, but you didn't see him go back there again? No, I didn't keep track of him. Okay. How, how long um, was he back that you remember before you noticed he was gone again? I don't know, maybe five minutes. I don't know for sure. Do you remember saying maybe 10 minutes? I, I may have. And then when he went, Judge, can we approach? Yes. And at some point, did Ariel's phone get knocked in the water? I don't know how it went in the water, but yes. <clears throat> and do you remember, in relation to the two times Nikolai went over to those, the group of young guys, was it before the first time, after the first time? Do you remember? Was what before or after? When the phone got lost. Oh, it was before. Okay. And was Nikolai looking for the phone? Yes. What, what were you guys doing, the rest of the group, while Nikolai was looking for the phone? I don't know what they were doing. I was busy sitting in the inner tube because I had a hard time getting out of it. And I was just looking at the sky and the trees and just relaxing and enjoying my day. You guys, I mean, your group was kind of by a sandbar, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And when Nikolai was back at the group of young guys the second time, did something catch your attention? I happened to, every once in a while, I'd sit up in my tube just to see where Nick was at. And the one time I did that, it looked like there was people around him and all of a sudden I saw him on his hands and knees in the water and somebody was hitting him. Didn't you originally say that the first thing you noticed was all the young guys jumping out of their tubes? I may have. And it's that that point that you alerted your group and sent some people over there? Or asked some people to go over there? Yeah, I had asked two of them. And who were those two people? Ariel and Ernesto. Okay. And again, Ariel in the group photos on the far left. Yes, he's with the red, white, and blue. And Ernesto is the guy, the only one without a shirt off in that photo? Yeah, he's on the other side. It's like second from where I'm at on that side. Okay. And so you saw, and just to clarify, this is the second time Nikolai's at the group that you see them jump up? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. And 
do our Nesto, after you see the boys jump up and you alert the group, do our Nesto and Ariel start walking over there? Yes, Ariel went first and then Ernesto went. And then I think you said the next thing you remember was he's uh, or saw was he was on his hands and knees in the water and somebody hit him. Yep. And then did you see anything after that? I did not. And how at some point after what what do you remember happening after that? They just brought him back. And, and I saw the police come and people were screaming and um, kid was by a tree, I guess. And later, because we stayed there for about 20 minutes. And I'm going to get to that in a second, but I just want to back up a little bit. So you said they brought him back. Did... Nikolai come back before or after or with Ernesto and Ariel, if you remember? With them, I think. Did you actually see Nikolai walking back from the group or did you just, was he just there, like next thing you noticed? I saw him coming. I didn't see him leave that group. I saw him though walking back. And were you watching him the whole time he was walking back? Not at the beginning when he left the group. I didn't see that. And did you watch him? So I just want to make sure I'm understanding. <laughs> the last sheet of paper? Yes. Um, one of the bailiffs, I think there's another pack just outside the store leaning up against the wall. Take that one down. We need to mark it in any event. So if this is the river, mm -hmm. let's say this is the sandbar, okay, you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Were you, you guys are somewhere around here? Yeah, right next to it. Okay, in the water? Or? Mm, yes. Okay, like right here? Yep. Okay. And then the, do you remember where the young boys were or young kids or adults? Yeah, whatever? they were on that side. The other side of the river? Yes, they weren't on the same side we were on. And they're, were they downstream a ways? Yes. Okay. So, right, I mean, it, there's no scale, so yeah. I'll just draw them generally here. So, at some point, Nikolai walked back, mm -hmm. and you said you didn't see him when he left at first. Do you know, like, at, if, if you know, I don't want you to guess, at, like, if, when he was halfway, did you start to watch him come back, when he was almost back to your group? Um... Probably a little less or a little more than halfway. Okay, so maybe like around here? No, the other way. Lower? Oh, this? Down yeah. here? Probably saw him about in there. And did he walk straight back to your group from there? Yes. And you watched him walk back? Yes. Okay. Do you remember... You met with... Essentially, the people sitting at this table prior to testifying, is that right? Yes. And do you remember saying in that meeting that you weren't watching him when he walked back the whole time? Yes. 
Okay. So, do you know which one it is? Yes, I probably didn't watch him the whole time. Okay. And after Nikolai was back by you, your group, what did you see, what did you hear? Not, not amongst your group, but downriver. Um, there was a lot of commotion down there. Um, I saw um, the police arrive. I saw someone, I didn't really see the person laying by the tree, but I saw somebody give him that person CPR. Yeah, um, let me ask a question about that. So the person who is getting CPR, was that on the other side of the river from you? Yes, it was by where the other people's troops were. So, somewhere down here? Yeah. And, did you see that CPR going on? You said you were there about 20 minutes? Yeah, I think it was about 20 minutes. I don't know for sure, but it seemed like 20 minutes. And was somebody getting CPR on the shore that whole time? Um, pretty much. Okay. About 20 minutes. Did you see... And the commotion, um, can you describe the commotion? Um, people were more frantic, it seemed. Um, they were just going to people that needed help. And what do you mean needed help? Did you see people who were injured? No, just, I, like I said, I didn't see the one by the tree either. I'm just assuming, but no. So what did you, what did you see to know they were doing CPR? I saw somebody pushing up and down on the person's chest. Okay. Did you see blood? I did not. And so you said you saw law enforcement arrive. Mm-hmm. Yes. And... You remember seeing a couple of officers in the water? Yes. Is that is that what you remember as far as law enforcement that you saw before you guys left? Yes, there may have been an ambulance, but I'm not sure. But do you do you remember telling us in the meeting that you saw a police SUV, a couple officers in the water and no ambulance? Yes, I do remember that. Okay. So, did anyone from your group, once Ariel, Ernesto, and Nikolai are back with you, did anyone walk over to where the commotion was going on? I heard somebody did. I didn't see them. Prior to the incident, I'll call it, was the, what was the atmosphere like among your group? Were you guys drinking, listening to music? We were listening to music until the phone got lost because that was the one that was playing the music on. Okay. Um, some of them were drinking. Okay. Was Nikolai drinking? He had about two beers. about just an estimate yeah you were the designated sober driver home right 
Yeah, I was just drinking water. And that was pre-planned that you would be the one to drive home? No, it was not pre-planned. And then after the incident, what was the mood like when you're tubing down the river? Quiet. And I'm not, I'm not asking what was said, but while you're tubing down the river, was Nikolai talking? He was, I think he was talking to Amy, but I'm not positive. Okay. I didn't look to see. So when you, fair to say when you guys tubed down, the person was still getting CPR? I don't remember. There's, the scene, was the scene still chaotic? I don't think it was back then, no. No, but it was before ambulances arrived, right? I don't know for sure. Well, you said there, you saw a police SUV, two officers in the water, no ambulances, right? I didn't, I don't know for sure. I didn't pay attention, but I told you before there was no ambulance, so I guess not. Okay. You'd agree that when you told us that, we just asked you to tell us what you remember, right? Yes. We weren't and crying or... No, but, you know, I've been trying to block this out, so... Okay. Since, even since I talked to you, I don't remember. I'm not going to sit here and read the transcripts you gave me. I don't remember. Okay. Um, I imagine, and I... I want to be respectful. I imagine this is extremely difficult yes. for you. So when your group left, you had to tube by the spot where the incident happened, right? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. Since this incident, you've had conversations with Nikolai about, briefly, about some parts of the incident. Agreed? Yes. And Nikolai has expressed to you frustration with you and your group because you didn't hear him yelling for help, right? Right. And he cast some blame on you and your group for not coming in response to his yells for help. Yes. And you responded, you couldn't hear any yells for help. No, couldn't hear it, not over the water. Nick's knife, um, you described it as, you believed it was a silver blade, black handle folding knife. Do you remember that? I don't remember, it could have been. And 
you described that it had a clip and a a clip on the knife, right? Yes. And he'd clip it into his lower pocket on his shorts. Yes. And Nikolai's right-handed, right? He's right-handed. Do you remember telling law enforcement that you heard screaming? I don't remember. I may have. I just don't remember. You um, would it refresh your memory to see a transcript? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Did that refresh your memory? No, but it says it, so I must have said it. Okay. When the, when you saw CPR being done on the shore, was the, was the rest of your group looking in the same direction, watching what was going on? I'm assuming Actually, so. no foundation. Sustained. You're there for 20 minutes? About, I guess. Sorry. Just wait till sorry. you address the objections. That's fine. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the objection. Uh, I objected. Asked an answer. I, I hadn't finished. All right. Ask the question, we'll start over. So... You were there for, you estimate, about 20 minutes with the other people from your group. As you were there, did you make observations about the people in your group? No. No, you didn't see anything that anyone was doing or looking at? No. Where were you? Okay. And... What about Nikolai? Did you see where he was looking? No. Did you see what he was doing? No. So Nikolai walks down to the, I'm talking about the second time now, the group of young guys. You see him get hit. When he's down on his hands and knees, he eventually comes back, and you're not paying any attention to what Nikolai is doing? Leading sustained. May we approach? Yes. So during that 20 minutes, were you watching after everything you've testified about, during the 20 minutes you're there, were you, what, were you paying any attention to Nikolai? I don't recall. I must have at some point. I just don't recall. The... 
The did Nikolai have any injuries that you saw? I didn't notice any, but I didn't pay attention either. And the people that Nikolai was down by downstream were they bigger, smaller, same size as Nikolai? Um, I noticed some of them were skinnier, some of them were bigger. They were all younger. Do you remember telling law enforcement that they're all smaller than Nikolai and Nikolai's a big guy? No, I don't remember saying that, but if I did. You remember saying didn't look like Nikolai got hit that hard? I don't remember. When Nikolai came back after you saw him get hit, did you go to him, render any aid, anything like that? Did I what? Go to him and render any aid or anything like that? I just made sure it didn't have any, I didn't see any blood or anything, so I'm assuming he was not too badly hurt. Okay. Nothing else, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Ms. Mew, can you tell us when you and Nick got married? When? Yeah. Yeah, it was June 4th, 2011. Why'd you marry him? Because I loved him. Still true today? Yes, it is. Um, over the... The course since, did you know him before 2011? Yes, I met him. We started dating in 2008, and I met him at work a little before that, so. What did he do there at, at your place of employment? He was an engineer. What type of engineer? Um, I think he said it was a mechanical engineer. Okay. What did you do at the place of employment? I was a supervisor of a department. Of what department? Um, I was a supervisor of the packaging department. Okay. And it was through that that you and Nick grew to know, meet each other and then know each other, right? Yes. It sounds like there's a group of other people that you guys got to know and hang out with from work, right? Yes. Um, so you've known Nick since 2008? I knew him a little before that, maybe 2007. And during that time, you uh, eventually married him and lived with him, right? Yes. You worked with him often? I did. You interacted with his work, uh, him at work and at home? Yes. Right. Imagine you really knew this man. Yes. Would you agree that you know his character as to whether he's peaceful or violent? Jackson, Judge Yes.
Objection overruled. So my question was, do you have an opinion as his character for peacefulness? Nick is a very peaceful person. I want to ask you some other questions about what you know about Nick, okay? All right. Um, was there a time when What are the numbers? Um, I'll go through them. I just wanted to publish and ask you when they're on the Elmo. Okay. That's fine. Um, we'll turn on the document examiner. Yes, thank you, Judge. So I'm going to show you um, some photos and ask you some questions about those, okay? Yes. Um, this is exhibit number 106. You see that? Yes. What's, what's that a picture of? It's a picture of Nick and I. When is that from? Do you know? I don't remember the exact date. Um, probably about 2009, 2010. Okay. And you might not know, but roughly where are you at? Um, I don't remember. We went to some park and um, for the day and just decided to take some pictures of us while we were there. Did you and Nick often enjoy outdoor activities? We tried to when we could. Sure. And so is this unusual in any way for you guys to be out someplace in the outdoors enjoying yourselves? No, it's not. Showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 107. You see that sticker? Who's that? It's Nick and I and our little boy, Tiki. Okay. Who's Tiki? Our dog. All right. Um, and showing you then uh, picture 108. There's three different pictures there. Do you see those? Yes. Is that Nick and all of those? Yes. Is that Nick uh, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side? Are those pictures of Nick working on some property you guys owned in South Dakota? Yes. Um, Nick a bit of a handyman? Oh, yes. Does he fix stuff around the house? Yes. Fix stuff around the yard? Yes. Is he good with tools? Yes, he is. Do his friends sometimes call him if they've got a some sort of problem that they want fixed? Yes. He's the guy to go to? Yes. And does he solve it often with tools? Yes. Have you seen him carry a, a pocket knife before? Um, all the time. You see him, you know, we, in this case, I think it's, we've called it a utility knife or a pocket knife, but it's a small knife that he puts in his pocket, right? Yep. Have you seen him use that before? Yes. 
Have you seen him solve problems around the house with that? Yes. Solve problems around the outside property with that? Yes. Have you seen other people ask him about, hey, Nick, can you do this? And he'll use the pocket knife to, to fix something or solve something? Yes. Showing you what's uh, marked as Exhibit 109. See those three photos there? Yes. Uh, is that Nick? Yes, it is. Is that Nick in the hospital on the two ones on the left? Yes. Why was Nick in the hospital? He had a quadruple bypass done. And when was that? Uh, I think it was 2020. Okay. And um, you see in the one on the left and in the one on the right, he has some sort of uh, red pillow that's on his chest. Do you recognize that? Yes. What was, what was the purpose of the red pillow? So when he would sit up, he could hold that pillow against his chest to help prevent the pain. Okay. Um, how long was he in recovery as a result of that? Do you know? Um, I don't remember. I know he wasn't in the hospital long because they try and get you out right away. Um, I don't remember if he was home three to four weeks afterwards. Now, you knew him well before 2020, correct? Yes. And then you knew him till today, sometime after the surgery, correct? Yes. Fair to say that since the surgery, he's had some more limitations? Yes. On his physical ability, correct? Yes. Um, he wasn't quite as fit as he was before, would you agree? Yes. And uh, maybe this happens to all of us men when we get into our 50s, but appear to you that he lost some of his confidence in his fitness? Yes. Lost some of his uh, ability to think he could go off and do anything and that he's invincible? Yes. This certainly humbled him to that degree? Yes. And did he limit himself to some degree? He did to some degree, yes. Yeah. Did he at some point tell you, like, I just can't do this anymore or make complaints about his own fitness? His... No, Nick never did that. He wasn't a complainer? Not too much, no. And he tried, if he could do it one way or the other, he usually did it. Okay, all right. Problem solver. Yes. All right. Um, was, he, did he, was he on any sort of like exercise regime that you saw him do, or is he just somebody that stayed like active working around the house? It was just active working around the house. He's not like a jogger, a biker? No. A lifter or anything along those lines? No. Okay. Um, there were some questions about um, alcohol use. And before I get into um, that day, just in general, Nick a big drinker? No, not real big drinker. Occasionally he'll, he will, but not very often. He'll have a beer, a couple beers. And after work. Okay. Um, on this day, were you concerned about his alcohol consumption on July 30th of 2022? Oh, no. No. Was he in any way, did, did you seen him impaired on other days? Oh, I've seen him, yes. Yeah. On that day, was he in any way impaired? No. Were you worried about his uh, uh, intoxication level in any way, shape, or form? No. Um, and in your group, was there anybody in your group that was just like slamming drinks? No. They had beers, but everybody shared them. And I don't know how many they had, but there was nobody that was intoxicated in our group like that, no. Okay. Um, showing you what's been, uh, I think we talked before about that other exhibit. Now here's exhibit 110. You see that photo? Yes. In, uh, is that Nick on the left? Yes, it is. Okay, and I'm going to... Um, Nick there, is that what he wore on the way to the to tubing? Yes. Uh, his shorts, they're camouflage shorts. Does he have a lot of clothing in which is, you know, camouflaged? Yes. Okay, that's just kind of his, I don't want to say signature, but he's got camo clothes. Yes, he does, lots of them. Okay, and... Um, is it unusual for him when he's doing outdoor activities to wear some of those clothes that are made for outdoor activities? 
No, it's not unusual. Okay. Is it unusual for you to see him out and about in a camo shirt? No. And so that's what he wore there that day? Yes. We see in that picture there that he has a ball cap on, is that right? Yes. And I think there's some other, uh, the original picture here. Exhibit 12, he doesn't have the ball cap on, is that right? He does not there. Were there times when you guys were on the river that day that you saw him with the hat on and with the hat off? I didn't pay attention. Okay, other than what's documented in the photos though that you don't have any particular memory? No. Was it unusual, would it be unusual for you to see him with a hat on? No, that's not unusual. Okay, he wears a hat pretty regularly? Yes. Okay, and then I think in both of these photos he's wearing sunglasses, is that right? Um, yeah. Do you remember him wearing sunglasses on that day? Yes, I knew he brought them with. Okay. Again, on a fair to say that it was sunny out that day? Yes. Um, anything that you thought was unusual about your husband wearing sunglasses on a sunny day outside? No. Uh, were there times that you saw him take the sunglasses off? I didn't pay attention. He brought some snorkel and goggles though, right? Yes. And there was certainly a time when he would, before this incident that we're going to eventually talk about, there were times that you saw him in the water using the snorkel and goggle, correct? No. You didn't see that? No. Okay. So has anyone ever showed you the photos or the video of him kind of just resting in the water with the snorkel and the goggles? No. Okay. Um, is that something that you've seen him do in the past? Um, well, he goes in the water, but he usually doesn't bring the snorkeling and goggles with. Okay. He did this time only because I had mentioned that not to wear any jewelry because the water's cold because he wanted to know why. And I said, because your jewelry falls off, your rings will fall off your hands because the water's cold. Okay. So he thought he'd bring it with and looked, look for jewelry in the water. Oh, okay. That's and why he brought it. Okay. And that's something that you guys discussed prior to that? Yes. All right. You'd also mentioned prior to, in addition, in addition to the snorkel and goggles, had you said, I think, on direct, Ernesto called and asked him to bring the pocket knife. Do you remember yes. saying that? Yes. Were you there, present, when you saw Nick answer the phone? Yes. And did you know who Nick was speaking to? He told me who he was talking to. Okay. And it was Ernesto? Yes. Not yet. Okay. And... At some point after that phone call, did you see Nick go and do something? I saw him leave the room. Okay. And then when he came back, did he have the pocket knife that he often has? I, I don't know. He told me he, Ernesto wanted him to bring wait, wait, the knife. I'm sorry. This is Ernesto talking? Sustained. Did you eventually um, see uh, Nick at the Somerset a uh, tubing parking lot using the knife to cut some strings? Yes. Were you surprised that uh, he had his pocket knife with him to cut the strings? No. Okay. Um, at other times during the day, did you see him using the knife to fix his shoes at all? No, I did not. So I want to ask you some questions now focusing on really about July 30th, okay? Um, at some point there was a time when somebody in your party lost the phone, correct? Yes. And that was Ariel, correct? Yes. And there was a discussion about what you guys were going to do, correct? Yes. And eventually Nick went off looking for the phone, correct? Yes. And when you saw him leave looking for the phone, you saw him with the snorkel and the goggles, correct? Yes. And at that point when he left, he didn't have his hat on or his sunglasses on. Agreed? Right. And his shirt, had he been taking his shirt on and off that day? He may have. Okay. Do you remember when he walked away that time, did he have his shirt on or his shirt off? I think it was off because he was going in the water. 
Okay. Um, did you find it unusual when Nick decided to go help a friend and go look for a phone? No. Is that just kind of what Nick does? Yes. Is um, when he did that, did you think you needed to keep an eye on him? No. Were you worried about him? Like no. his behavior? No. Throughout that day, had you seen him cause any conflicts that day? No. Uh, engage with anybody in a way that made you, like, want to control your husband's behavior? No. Were you worried about that in any, con in any way? No. Um, you were just basically like, look for the phone. I'm going to sit here and relax in the tube. Exactly. And that's what you did. That's what I did. Um, at some point... He came back and then he left again, correct? Yes. Do you know exactly what he was doing each time that he was gone from your group? No. You weren't keeping an eye out for him? No. I would sit up in the tube once in a while just to see where he was. Okay. And so this first time you saw him down in the same area that you eventually saw him the second time. Is that fair to say? Yes. But you couldn't hear what was going on? No. You didn't see any conflict, right? No. You just basically saw Nick in the middle walking around or occasionally putting his face in the water looking for the phone? Yes. That's what you saw? Yes. No conflict at all? No. Agreed? Yes. Um, and then at some point you said he comes back and then he leaves. Is that right? Yes. And some point during the second trip is when you notice, when you sit up in the tube, at some point you notice that there's some sort something going on down there, correct? Yes. And it causes you concern? Yes. Causes you concern for the safety of your husband? Yes. Because... You heard stuff, right? You heard like commotion noises? I don't know if I heard anything. Okay. But when I sat up in the tube, I saw stuff. And when you saw them, did you see him surrounded by other people? Um, I'm trying to think if I saw that. I, I don't remember if I saw him surrounded by people. Did you see him raise his left hand and make a motion towards you or other people in the group? No, I did not see that. Okay. Had you seen that, would you have responded? Oh, yes. Um, is your husband somebody that takes calling for help lightly? No. Have you ever seen him in a situation before where he calls for help? No. This is the first time? Yes. Um, have you ever seen a situation before where you felt like he needed help? No. So what you saw, that must have been pretty scary. Yes. Um, what exactly did you see that raised your level of fear so much that you said these other guys, they got to go down there? Um, I, that's, I don't remember if I saw anything before, but I remember seeing him in the water on his hands and knees and getting hit. Okay. Did, you, did he look to be in a safe space? No. That's why you sent your friends down there for him? Yes. And you were worried about him? Yes. Um, the prosecutor asked questions about what his injuries were. Why didn't you just wait to see if they, like, drowned him? Objection, Judge. Why did you send the help when you did? Because I wanted my husband back safe. Why didn't you wait until you wanted it to get more serious? Why? You don't do that. You, I wanted him safe. I wanted him back. You wanted to get him in a safe spot before it got so bad that it couldn't be fixed? Yes. And you were worried that it might get so bad that it couldn't be fixed? Exactly. That's all. Mr. Anderson? Yes.
All right, let's continue. Mr. Anderson. Sandy, you testified on direct. The thing that you saw that caused you to send people over was the young guys jumping out, getting up out of their tubes, right? Yeah. Okay. And then that's when Ariel and Ernesto walked over. I don't remember, I guess. I, I don't. I thought it was when he was in the water getting hit, but it may have been before that. Do you remember what you said to law enforcement? If it was when the kids or the young guys, however you want to clear, describe them, got out of their tubes? I don't remember. And also on direct, you testified you never heard Nikolai yell for help, right? No, I did not. And would you agree smiling and going like this? No. No what? No, I didn't see that. Okay. So you didn't see anything? You didn't see a visual call for help? You didn't hear a call for help? No, like I said, I wear hearing aids. I can't wear them in the water, and the water's loud. I wouldn't have heard him. Okay. <laughs> when was Nikolai's surgery? I want to say it was August of 2020. So about two years before July of 2022? Yes. And you said the recovery was about four to five weeks? Three to four. Three to four, okay. And then after that, you said it didn't really slow Nikolai down. He still did what he did before? Well, he it slowed him down some because sometimes it took him a little bit longer. He always got everything done, but he just couldn't do it as fast as what he did before because he didn't have the strength. Okay. Still did yard work, chores around the house, that kind of stuff? Right. Wasn't feeble? Hmm? Wasn't feeble? No. He could still run? Yeah, he just had the pain. Okay. Yes, sorry, Judge, I was trying to... Thank you. Um, what I understand you saying is you didn't hear him call for help, correct? Right. And you didn't see him call for help, correct? Right. But you would agree, had you seen him make a gesture with his left hand waving you, you would have considered that a call? Speculation, it's a hypothetical. She's already answered the question. I wasn't done asking, I guess, when he, I'm not. Good point. Finish asking the question, but I think we've already gone through this. I was following up on his redirect, so. I know, but I think we've already gone through this, so I don't want to waste I'll time. try to be really quick. You would agree, had you seen him raise his left hand in a motion like this, you would have considered that from your husband, who you've known for that long, a call for help? Yes. Sustained, and she's already answered the question again. Next topic, please. You were asked some questions about when you actually raised a concern so much, though, that you sent two men over there to help your husband. Remember that? Yes. And what I believe you first said on the first time was when you saw him getting hit, you sent the two people over, correct? Yes. But we came to learn that you may have been concerned even before that and sent people over to help him even before that. I may have, yes. You were worried. You didn't wait until he got hit. You were worried about it even before that, correct? Yes. You just saw a situation in which he looked like he was outnumbered by a bunch of young men, correct? Yes. And that concerned you? Yes. And that's why you sent some other people over there, correct? Yes. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mew. Being may step down. Judge, if I didn't already, the exhibits that I showed, I just moved for their admission. I believe I 
did before, but. Were those photographs admitted? 111 was not included in that, so I'll have to do that later. I just want to make sure the clerk knows. All right. Uh, Ms. Mew, please uh, see the witness coordinator in the back, and she'll tell you where to go next. How are you doing? You want to keep going or take a break? Keep going? Okay. We're going to keep going unless somebody needs to use the restroom. Okay, everyone's good. Uh, who's the next witness? Larry Ann Davis. Judge, I, I guess I should know for the record that Mr. Davis has requested that he also not be recorded. I know how the court feels about it, but I'm making the request. Is he a victim? No, he's a witness. The statute allows an exception for victims. Please come forward. Keep coming. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smestad. Can we state your name for the record, please? Larian Davis. Mr. Davis, how old are you? 24. Uh, what uh, city do you live in? Minneapolis. Um, were you tubing on the Apple River on your Somerset, Wisconsin on July 30th of 2022? Yes. Uh, were you with a group of your friends? Yes. How many folks, if you remember? It was four of us in total. Um, were you drinking some alcohol that day? Yeah. How uh, do you think you were impaired? No. Um, at some point, did your group have contact with a group of uh, teenagers having a confrontation with an older male? Yes. <clears throat> Do you remember what time that was? Uh, I don't remember the specific time, but it was during the day while we was, we was on the river. All right, and uh, your group of folks, do you remember how many tubes you had? We had like four strung together. All right, I'm gonna show you, we have a video from Parts of the river. I'm going to show you a still frame from that video. It's uh, number 2670. It's going to pop up right here. It will in a second uh, once they're ready. Mr. Davis, if you can look at the monitor on the jury box there, um, showing you uh, still 2670 from our video. Do you see yourself in that in that still frame? Yeah, right there with my hand up. All right, is that you standing up? Yeah. Blue shorts? Yeah. Is that your group? Yes. I'm in the foreground. Do you see a gentleman who's uh, splashing down into the water? Yes. Um, in this particular still frame, is your back to the person going in the water? Yes. All right. Um, what are you holding up in your hand? My phone. Oh, were you taking a picture or something? Yeah, I was recording a video. Of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> At some point when you were recording that video, did you realize something was going on behind you? Yeah, when I was recording the video, and I like I, I showed, I was showing the whole 
like when I was recording my video, I was showing my whole view, and that's how I noticed what was going on in the background. All right. did, it, did eventually you turn around and start actually recording what was happening? Yes. <clears throat> Do you remember um, when you first started recording, um, how many seconds or minutes was it after that picture where you're doing the, the selfie? If you I say, I say it was like right after that because I, I was on Snapchat, so I saved that video and then I tried to take another video. All right. I'm going to show you another uh, still frame from our video. It'll be uh, 3093, Judge. We're ready. Larry, in, in uh, still 3093, do you see yourself uh, in that photo? Yes. Are you uh, standing or sitting? Standing. What are you doing in this particular frame? I'm recording the incident. All right. Um, we're going to play uh, Mr. Davis's video here. It's exhibit. Oh, pardon me. Uh, did you get a chance to come to our office and uh, review the video that you took? Yeah. And did you uh, put your initials on the flash drive that your video is located on? Yes. I'm going to show you, Judge, if I can approach. Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 21. Does that look familiar? Yes. Is that the flash drive you watched earlier today? Yes. Are those your initials on there? Yeah. And the date? Yes. <clears throat> and I guess before we play it, I'll ask you a few more questions. Um, at some point, after you were finished recording, and we'll get to that part, did you tell law enforcement that you had a video of the incident? Yeah. And did you try to transfer that to a law enforcement officer? Yes. Was there a problem with the transfer? Yes. Um, with the video that you transferred, is it garbled in some sense? It's the video. Um, it's like what's the what's the word? It's like blurry because I sent it from my iPhone to the officer's Android phone. All right. After that initial transfer of the video, did you have an issue with your phone? Yes, it had water damage. All right. Did you drop it in the river that day? Yes. Um, was it, did you try to figure out a way to extract your original video out of the, the phone? Yeah, I tried to do the iCloud because with iPhones you got your iCloud storage, and with Snapchat I tried to see with um like with your storage on Snapchat it up back up to the cloud too. I tried to see if that was going to work, but it never worked. Did you eventually send your phone in to try to be repaired? Yeah. Uh, were they ever able to retrieve the original video you took? No, they only got that that video. All right. At some point, did you tell the police where your phone was or they were trying to repair it? Yes. And, uh, did, did you give them permission to take it? Yes. All right. Um, we're going to play it, Judge. It's Exhibit 21. I uh, move to admit and publish to the jury. It's, Any objection to 21? The 21 is received. Go it's ahead and play lengthy. it. Wait till they give us the cue.
Judge, we're having some technical issues with the video here, if you can just <coughs> bear with us. We're ready. As you were recording it, were you watching what was happening at the same time? Yes. What did you see happen? I saw him. I saw him stab. I saw him stab the light skinned dude before, and like slice his whole stomach open. And you could see him like push the next person in that video, but it's like real blurry. That's pretty much it. Were you able to tell the people had been injured? Yes. Did you and your group make any efforts to assist these folks that were injured? Yes. What did you do? Um, me and my brother, we had helped carry. It was a girl. She had got stabbed. And then we helped. It was another dude that got stabbed in, like, his arm, I think. We helped him. We walked him out the water, too, because he was, like, hysterical. Officer. So, Mr. Davis, you provided two interviews to law enforcement. Do you remember that? that yes. Correct? Okay. One uh, on August 10th of 2022, and then another one on March 7th of this year. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And I want to make sure I understand your testimony correctly in terms of the video. Are you saying that you recorded, there was more video that you recorded, it was just lost in the transfer? Yes. Okay. And is what was lost in the transfer, I mean, you, you've provided the police with information on what you said you saw, right? Yes. Okay. And you were asked today about what you saw, and you said... You saw that a light-skinned dude got stabbed, right? Yes. Did you see more than that? Yeah. It was like a tussle. Okay. Well, I'm going to get into that with you for a minute, okay? Um, so what you've provided to the state in terms of what you say you observed, there's much more than that. True? Yes. Okay. And... It, your, um, can I ask you this, is your memory of events, so you give two statements, one about 11 days after the incident, 12 days, and one 21 months after the incident. Which memory, in terms of the dates when you give those statements, is one better than the other? Well, it'd be the one that was closer to the event, that would be better, but I also... I gave a statement to the officer that day. Okay. So, if I said to you, memories normally better closer in time to an event, would you agree with that? Yes. All right. Now, on the interview that you gave in March of this year, though, you told the police uh, that you remember, you remember it like it was yesterday. Remember that? I don't remember saying them exact words, but... Uh. Officer or investigator, sorry, Investigator O'Keefe said to you, you said you remember it like it was yesterday, though, and you say, yeah. Okay? Yep. Okay. Now, and you had described, at least in your interview with the police, that you were really kind of paying attention to what was going on. 
Yes. Okay. Um, in your statement in March of 2024, you say, tell me if you remember this, I remember he had a hat on. He had it, he had on. Like, he looked like he wasn't supposed to be in the water. Like, he just came out of, um, he came out of the bushes. He just came out. Do you remember that? Yeah. So is it your testimony today, under oath, that the person involved in this incident had a hat on and came out of the bushes? No. You told the police. I that told them that yes, but I don't. But I don't. Like you said, it could be foggy. I don't think that's what it was no more, though. Okay. Well, this is less than a month ago. You had this conversation with them, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And were you intentionally lying to the police? No. Okay. So, where do you come up with the idea that he came out of the bushes? Because that's why I saw him running to the bushes after the incident. Okay. And tell me if this is fair. You tell the police he walks in the water. He had pants on and everything. He had a jacket on. Right? Yeah. I don't recall that. Well, the police say you said it. Do you deny saying it? Mm. If the, if that's what y'all got, I guess yeah, I said it. I don't I don't remember saying it. I should say. You don't remember March of this year talking to the police? Yeah, I remember talking to him. I don't remember saying he had a jacket and, and a coat on. Okay. I rem I remember he had he had on he had on a a hat. Okay. And he had on shorts. Okay. I don't remember recalling no jacket though. All right, but you don't dispute that you told the police that? No. If, Why would you tell the police that? Like you said, our memory is a little joggy over two years ago. But you told them that you remembered it like it was yesterday. Right? Yeah. Do you? That was a month ago I said that, though. So a month ago, you remembered 21 months ago, like yesterday. In the 26 days that have passed since then, it's all faded. I, I object argumentative. Sustained. You made your point. Okay. You also said to the police, he came out of the bushes. And he was taking pictures of the girls. Yes. I said that. You saw that? No, I said that. I, I understand you said it. Did you see it? Yes. So you saw Mr. Mew with his camera that afternoon taking pictures of little girls. That's what you're telling this jury. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. No, that's what I said. No, I, like I said, I understand you said it. Is it true? Oh, I don't know. Why would you say it if you don't know if it's true? It was a lot going on. It, a lot was going on on March seventh, on March seventh of twenty twenty four. No, March. that. It's actually argumentative. Overruled. Say it one more time for me. I just want to make sure you understand. Okay, on March seventh of twenty twenty four, you have a. You March. Have a hold on. You have a recorded interview with uh, investigators O'Keefe and Justness, I think is how you pronounce his name. They speak to you about this incident, right? Yes? Yes. And on March 7th of 2024, you tell these law enforcement officers that he comes out of the bushes and that he's taking pictures of girls, right? You yes, that. yes. That's not true, is it? I guess so. That's, 
it's it's hard to say because like that's what I recall from the the day that happened. That's what I was telling the officer. Okay, you'd agree when you were interviewed by the officers back in 2022, you never said anything about him taking photos of little girls, right? Um, I don't remember that. Okay, you don't remember ever telling them that he came out of the bushes either, do you? I know that's. I know I said that. Of that, sir? Well, no, it's over two years ago. Okay. I just want you but to... I believe that's what I told them. Okay. And you didn't tell them that he was wearing a hat and a jacket and pants back in 2022, did you? But also, 2022, mm -hmm. we, we were on the water, we were drinking and everything. I saw, what I saw was a scuffle and a man stabbing people. Okay, you said much, much more to the police on your interview in March of 2024. You provided far greater details, okay? And okay. That, and that's the stuff that I want to talk to you about. You told the police he walked into the water fully clothed. That's not true, is it? No. You told the, the police he got caught taking pictures of little girls. Objection, ask and answer. Over, overruled. That's not true, is it? I guess not, no. Actually, can I say, I don't know on that one. With the with the with the pictures and the girl taking pictures, let him ask the question and please give an answer. Okay. It, when this whole thing kind of starts, you're making a, a a video. You said right. Yes. Okay, and I think back in in Mar I'm sorry in. August of 2022, you said that you were taking a video, and I don't want to get this wrong. You were recording your girl because you said she was kind of arguing with you. Is that true? No. No? So if you said that, that wouldn't be true. Wait, you said I was recording my girl because she was arguing with me. I, I can just tell you what you said, and you can tell yeah. me. Yeah. I'm recording me and my girl because she has an attitude. Yeah, that sounds, yeah. That sounds more. Yeah, that sounds more like it. <laughs> Very good. Um, so you were recording your, your, the person you were with because she but, had an attitude according to you. Right? But, yeah, but in a sense, I was still using this camera. So when I say I do that, it's like this. Okay. And that's how I seen what was going on behind me. Now, Okay. You indicated back in August of 2022, they asked you about what you saw when I said they law enforcement. And you said, you know, we just drinking and stuff. I wasn't even paying attention. Is that true? Yes. So you weren't paying attention to what was going on. You were just, and that's okay. You were just drinking and stuff. Objection after Overruled. Great. Is that another thing that I said that was, yes. But I can't just say, you can't just say I wasn't paying attention if I noticed in my phone camera, I was still paying attention. That's how. Mr. Davis, I'm not saying you weren't paying attention. That's what you said. Fine. Okay. So. In August of 2022, you say you weren't paying attention. In March of 2024, you said you remembered it like yesterday and were paying close attention. Which one's true? Both of them. That's how I felt when I said it, right? So you have the ability to not pay attention and pay close attention at the same time? No. Then how can they both be true, sir? Objection. You've made your point. This. You don't have to answer.
my last couple questions and then I'll let you go. Sure. Your initial interview with um, law enforcement back in August, you indicated that you don't, you said the following, I don't recall like what the old man looked like or anything. I don't even know if it was an old man. Do you recall saying that? Yes? Yep. Okay. So back in August of 2022, you didn't, if, if I'm hearing or reading what you wrote correctly or said, you, you didn't remember what the person who was involved in this, if they were old, young, what, right? Yep. Okay. Have you, um, as this has been going on, um, the case, have you been following it, like, on media, social media? I'm not just talking about the trial. I'm talking about from the time this happened up until now. Have you been trying to gather information from those sources? No, nah, the only thing that I ever seen was right after it happened, the little news article about the stabbing and stuff, and that was pretty much it. Okay. All right, Mr. Davis, thank you for your time, sir. Any questions? Just one question. Mr. Davis, did you know any of these folks other than the people on your tube? Didn't know nobody but my girl, my sister, and her boyfriend, and my brother. Nothing else. Thank you. Mr. Shroffacy? All right. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Um, the witness coordinator in the back will tell you where to go next. Uh, it's 2.45. This is a good time for our afternoon break. Uh, let's come back at 3 o'clock. Please take the jury out. We are in recess until 3. And welcome back to our Fox 9 streaming uh, center. Uh, I am Paul Bloom uh, joining you this afternoon after uh, a couple of uh, witnesses, some significant developments there this afternoon out at uh, out inside that St. Croix County Circuit Courtroom. Judge Michael Waterman presiding over this Apple River stabbing trial. Nikolai Miu on trial, uh, charged with first degree intentional homicide, four counts of attempted first degree homicide. We have just heard from Nikolai Miu's ex-wife, uh, as well as another tuber on the river that day. Now, he was not part of the altercation in any way, shape, or form. This is a separate group. Uh, we hadn't really been told about a separate group being so close, but uh, Larian Davis of Minneapolis, the 15th state witness, called, and he, uh, he has some foggy, blurry uh, cell phone video uh, that uh, was shot. Uh, certainly after uh, the encounter, not nearly the significance uh, evidentiary wise as um, Jawan Cockfield, three and a half minutes. Uh, I don't know if it was 10 or 15 seconds or so. It played quickly. We have it queued up. I don't know if we could play it while I speak, but here we go. Uh, certainly captures uh, what I would describe as the injuries, uh, perhaps even one of the uh, stabbings. Here it is uh, queued up on your screen as we take a look at it. Again, blurry, there was some talk about two different phones, one falling in the water, one the video getting, you know, obviously losing generational quality between phones, how it was passed, Snapchat, a little bit all confusing, but uh, this is what you're looking at. That's uh, A.J. Martin there uh, clearly getting stabbed. That's Larian's uh, girlfriend. And again, uh, we are looping it now. So it is quick. Uh, obviously, you can see an altercation in the water, the aftermath, uh, and again, um, uh, the injuries that occur. 
Uh, with that in mind, why don't we bring in a uh, criminal uh, defense attorney, trial attorney, uh, Michael Bryant. Michael, you've been with us all afternoon. I'm just, or all morning, I should say, now joining us this afternoon. I'm just wondering your quick thoughts on, on seeing that video. Does that add anything uh, to the jury's understanding of what took place that day? Well, I mean, that was a far more, it was blurry, but that was far more of a, of a uh, specific video. Um, and, you know, it's interesting in the way that, you know, we, it came out now, um, and the impact that, you know, I mean, the jury gets to see yeah, a different version of it. So, you know, we got to see, you know, uh, another, another opportunity for them to see it and, and to make some more conclusions and the things that they'll pull out of it. Um, but, um, that was, that was quite the, the, the extra, uh, unex or to me, I, I didn't know there was another one like that, but it was unexpected. And uh, I think it add, it'll add to the overall texture of what the prosecutor is trying to do with the case. Can I ask you something legally about what I just saw? I mean, clearly this is a guy who's just in the river. It's quickly established through uh, direct examination. He's taken a video. He's not pointing any fingers at anybody. I, I mean, sure, he sees the slash, uh, maybe describes the act as, as, as being aggressive. But the defense really tried to go after some of his statements that he's made previously to law enforcement, what he thinks he saw, kind of quoting from a transcript from, from two different interviews he gave to police. Why do they want to go after someone like that so hard? Can't, isn't just what he's presenting is his video evidence? Why, why go after him and what he's told police? Why make it an issue? Well, I mean, they're trying to get anything they can out of it, and they're trying to make sure they, they gain, you know, any other points or anything they can do. But, yeah, when it comes down to it, his big issue was the video, and, you know, they they are trying to find something else as a defense to do with that. And when you do that, you're trying to either get the jury off the video to think about the video or at least think about all the different things that happen so that somehow maybe if you've got somebody in there that's that can figure out ways to get out of things they'll they'll use that or use one of those questions to build off of perhaps creating more uh, confusion chaos like this guy he's going to be 100 feet away with his cell phone ready to go and i see he sees me you running from the woods that's not what happened are, are they sort of preparing perhaps to use that in a closing argument to, to kind of to, uh, give an example of how how confusing how chaotic it was is that what you're, you're kind of getting at yeah yeah i mean that's what that's the possibility i mean they're trying to get anything they possibly can out of it Interesting. Let's go back to Sanja Miu, the ex-wife. The state called her. Obviously, at some point, she's going to testify because if they don't call her during the case in chief, the defense will. Yes, they're divorced now, uh, but certainly you could see Aaron Nelson there spun her into what I would describe as almost a defense witness, uh, a propensity towards peacefulness, why he might have a knife that day, why he might have a snorkeling goggles. Is, was the state's hands tied? Do they have to call her? Does it matter where she's called in the overall trial? Uh, she seemed more defense witness sympathetic than she did for the state's case. Yeah, I mean, and that's the problem when you call a witness that, you know, isn't really for you. You're trying to get what, something out of them. But what, what happens is the defense gets the opportunity or the other side gets the opportunity to use the witness in cross-examination, which means they can lead the witness. Uh, where if they'd called the witness, they can't. You can't lead somebody that you uh, call. What that means is you can't ask questions, you know, that it suggest an answer. But on cross, you can do that. And so the def the the defense was able to expand on that witness. And at times, you thought, why the heck did the prosecution even? They didn't gain that much out of her. Why did they put her on the stand? Because the defense did a lot with her, and they got into character evidence and got into what kind of attitude he had that day, and did it look like anything was going to happen, and that she still loved him, and you know a whole bunch of other things that you know at some point you wonder, boy, is this really what you want with the way you had today built all around the scars? You had this video coming. Do you really want to put in the middle of that a whole bunch of defense case? It seemed out of place, Mike. I just observed, uh, you know, from the live streaming center, it seemed out of place. Seemed like a strange time to call her, even even calling her in general. I mean, perhaps the one point she brought up for them, I, I think I heard it in real time, was a jailhouse phone call where perhaps Nikolai said something to the effect like he was blaming the group for not responding to his calls for help sooner. 
Um, perhaps the state was really interested in getting that little nugget in there as they build their case. But to me, that's all I saw from uh, Sandra Miu. Yeah, I think that that makes that's right. I mean, there's a lot there and and it's something that, it, you know, I don't know that it was the it, it, as far as tactics go, if that worked that well. And let me ask, I know we have uh, the graphics to show us uh, the tubing groups uh, that are on the river that day. Again, Larry and uh, Davis, this last, last witness, is outside of these tubing groups. So I want to call it up on our screen if we can, uh, just to show um, the Miu group and then Sandra uh, in that group, uh, Isaac's group there, and then the Carlson group. Mike, I don't know if you can see us, but it's, it's just basically trying to separate out witnesses and who's with who and, and whatnot. I do want to ask you, one of, one of the young men with Isaac that day, Owen uh, Peliquin, uh, he's the one uh, that is set to call uh, um, Isaac Schumann's mother from the river. He's one of uh, that small group that has not yet been called. I am curious, now that we've gotten away uh, to the ex-wife, now that we've gotten away to another witness on the river, do you think we're done with, with, with Isaac Schumann's group of, of witnesses? Or could more people, even the Carlson group, uh, the young adults who are nearby, uh, would you see another witness kind of involved in the altercation itself coming back? Or, or do you feel like the state's case has taken a turn kind of a little bit further away from the actual physical confrontation with Miu? Mike, did you lose me on that one? Can you still hear me? I, I lost you. When oh, okay. I'm just curious. We've gotten a little bit away from the physical altercation itself uh, today in, in this afternoon's testimony with the ex-wife and then the person who took the extra video. Do you think we've now sort of, as the state's case, moved away from the actual confrontation to a, another stage? Is that your gut? Or could we still bring back a couple of other people that we see in, that, uh, in the main video? Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think that 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 does make sense. And, you know, and and, uh, you know, the point you make there does make a lot of sense. Correct. And I know we had, we talked a little earlier today about the jury makeup, uh, you know, male, female. You could kind of see uh, how it could play a role in the way people take in this, uh, the information, what they're seeing, the video, the claims of self-defense. We just had this spousal privilege issue developed again. It's eight men, six female, six women on this um, uh, on this jury, I will point out several in, in their the older. I think that we've got yeah three or four or seventy plus. Uh, so we have an older jury. Um, any sense on on now seeing the wife? How that could uh, influence a uh, male female uh, gender breakdown I mean, as we assess uh, what the jury could be thinking? It's it's you know it's a tough thing, especially with a two two week trial. I mean, I think you can read way too much into what happens in a particular witness or a particular time. But you know, with the with the whole list of scars they saw today, with the the video they just saw, you know, they've got a lot of information that's coming today that uh, that's got to have some impact. And you got to think that if at this point they haven't made a big impact on the prosecution, then they've got an issue there. But it all keeps adding up to the need that I think. The defendant's going to have to testify to give his version of what he was thinking. Yeah, I know you really have that strong belief that Miu has to testify. I certainly agree. Um, just, just talking about the claims of self-defense, Mike, as you assess the case at this point, we're almost three full days in. I think I have on my sheet here uh, Mr. Davis, Larry and Davis, who provided that video, is about uh, the 15th witness. I told you we're probably going to see upwards of 50 total from the state. Just your thoughts on where we stand at this point. I mean, I know there's a long way to go. I know Miu's likely to take the stand, but just your quick uh, assessment, if you will, if you're keeping score. Well, I, I, it's hard because it all kind of adds on top of each itself. And, you know, they, the, the, the impacts of today what will primarily come down to what they saw with all the different people who got stabbed. Um, and, you know, they'll they'll start getting an opportunity. It'll be interesting to see if the defense does anything to try to mute these uh, these videos by putting the videos up and pointing this out or pointing that out or saying, you know, this is going on here. But they still need a witness to do that. And they're not going to have this person who just testified. He's not going to be back. So, you know, again, I think that goes to the point that I think a lot of this trial is going to hang on what the defendant says on the stand 
And again, I remind people, he's not required to take the stand. Mm -hmm. He's got the constitutional right to remain silent. I just think this is coming down to one where the jury's going to want to hear what the heck were, what was going on with you. And okay. if it's believed he was scared and I'm, I thought I was going to be attacked and all these things are going to happen, you know, they might have a shot. And I'm glad you brought up that point. I am told, you know, as part of our live stream, there have been a lot of questions. Is, is Miu obligated to take the stand? Does he have to take the stand? I know that's part of the ongoing dialogue uh, for those of you for joining the live stream. And I, I think we've tried to clear it up a couple of times. Uh, but here on the air, thank you for doing that. Miu does not have to take the stand. It will ultimately be his choice. It could depend on how they see this case coming in. But you, like other uh, legal minds we've spoken to, certainly believe he will. And his attorneys uh, hinted at that. Uh, during their openings that the jury would eventually hear him, uh, that he would tell them directly himself. Mike, after this morning's uh, testimony, we had now heard from the four surviving uh, two birds who, who were stabbed. Uh, you talked about the scars and the impact of just hearing directly from them. Uh, I'm just wondering now, as, as you look back at uh, perhaps even A.J. Martin's testimony this morning, uh, you know, uh, the takeaway uh, from today uh, on them. Uh, you know, th there are these claims of self-defense, but I think you also heard from people who were trying to be peacemakers out there in the water that day. Yeah. Mike, can you hear me again? I, I heard, but I- uh, Just, the, you know, the, the people who were stabbed, uh, kind of you heard from three of them sure directly. You're sorry, I, I missed if you were done. Um, the difference in the people that came out, I mean, you do have people, the different groups. You got people coming forward that were really what it sounded like when the bartender testified yesterday and his kids came forward. They were trying to settle things down, it sounded like. And you, the, the, the female that Riley uh, testified that they didn't even really know everybody that was going on at the point that they were showing up. So those are all going to be different factors the jury's going to have to look at and say, you know, is this a consorted effort by a whole bunch of people that are doing all these things all together or are they all in part you know different people and if so then there may be some charges they'll they'll have a much harder time uh uh finding him uh innocent on than if uh, than the other charges and michael the way jury deliberations eventually work uh, will they have that will the jury have access directly to that three plus minute video will they be able to go frame by frame in their deliberation room if there are those types of questions that arise it usually depends on what kind of capacity they have and the agreements that are made by the parties. Um, sometimes they have a computer that they're able to do that. Other times they're not. It just kind of depends on the courthouse, depends on the agreements between parties. But they, they can ask to have uh, evidence reread. They can ask to have to look at, the, well, they'll get all the exhibits that come in. They'll be able to look at the exhibits. Um, so there all are things. They'll probably get stills is my guess. And we've seen a number of situations where stills have been offered. Um, and so they'll probably have a number of those also to look at as part of this uh, deliberation. And speaking of those still frames, what do you think about their effectiveness? Obviously, that video moves quickly, especially once the stabbing and, and really the physical confrontation ratchets up. I mean, we're only talking 20, 25 seconds. Um, you know, they, they seem to jump around. Sometimes witnesses seem confused. Was this before or after? Why is your head turned? Well, the head could be turned for like literally a fraction of a second. That's when the camera caught it head turned. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Uh, probably have to be used, but uh, is it effective for either side? Well, that's always a hard thing because you don't know for sure what witnesses are going to say. And you, you know, I think we've talked about that earlier in the day. You know, that's part of the reason why the state has this list of witnesses they're for sure going to call and other witnesses that they might call or maybes they might call. And there there be little things that they decide, you know, look, I don't know that we've got this completely to the jury. So we may call this person just to lay foundation and foundation would be basically so the evidence can come in or to add to the texture of the story. So so that they are able to understand what what it is that you know is being presented by the prosecution and the defense's job is not to really prove anything the defense's job is to put as many holes in everything as possible and create chaos and point out all the different problems that are in the case and the reasons why they haven't proven their case and a good point there, Mike, and I've mentioned this in earlier in our coverage this week, is you're seeing some of these witnesses on the stand really kind of get beat up by Aaron Nelson and the defense team. Just remember, Nikolai Miu told falsehoods, lied to police. Um, he's going to have to, if he takes the stand, have his testimony repaired. And he, too, will be questioned 
challenged on some of the things he told law enforcement that day and how his story changed. So don't think this is just directed at these witnesses right now. This is going to go across the board as both sides try to prove their cases. And as yeah. I... As I uh, wrap up with that thought, Mike, Judge Waterman has come back out onto the bench. So uh, with that, we'll uh, go back into the St. Croix County Circuit Courtroom and join you, Mike, on the back end. Let's wrap up. Uh, we'll chat with you uh, in a little bit. Thanks again for joining us. All right, please be seated. We are back on the record. The jury is present. The attorneys are present. Mr. Mew is present. Uh, we're ready to continue. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who is the next witness? Sheena Lowell. I'm sorry, what was the name? Sheena Lowell. Lowell? Okay. Yes. Ms. Lowell, uh, please come forward. Yep, keep going. You're good. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. <coughs> Mr. Anderson. Will you please state your first and last name and spell your last name? Sheena Lowell, L-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Sheena, where do you currently live? <coughs> Nebraska. And did you used to live closer to the area? Wisconsin, yes. When did you move? Um, two years ago. And <coughs> May I approach? Yes. So this is twenty six A. Were you with these folks tubing on the river on yeah. July 30, 2022? Yes. And did you did you actually take this photo? Yes, I did. Okay. And then is that you kind of cropped in there on the bottom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Were you in a relationship with Quinton at the time? Yes. Okay. So that was your connection to other people in the group? Yes. <clears throat> Are you and Quentin current, or have you guys separated since? Yes. And have you had contact with anyone from that group since you and Quentin separated? No. And Sheena, do you have any prior criminal convictions? Yes. How many? Three. On July 30, 2022, um, were you drinking? No. You were sober? Yes. Do you just never drink, or were you a sober driver that day? or? I'm a recovering alcoholic. Okay. And at some point along the tube, tubing route, did something catch, catch your group's attention? We were coming around, it looked like a bend on the river, and a group of younger kids were screaming for help. And what do you remember after that? I remember as we were getting closer, they were yelling, help, please get this person away from us. The kids in our group got up off of the tubes, walked over to get in between to get him away from them. And do you, do you recall who the first ones that walked over were? Madison. And did Madison make contact with the gentleman or speak with the general, the, the guy? She was pointing downriver, just saying, get away, go, <clears throat> leave them alone. Okay. And what happened after that that you remember? They all were basically doing the same thing, um, and then he punched her in the face. Did you see which hand he used, right hand, left hand? Could you see where, from where you were? No. Okay. 
You just saw a hand go to her face, but you couldn't tell. I don't remember. Okay. Were you looking from profile or from straight on or? From straight on. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you some, let's see. And have you ever seen the video of the incident? No. And you, when did you get to Wisconsin from Nebraska for your testimony? Yesterday morning. Okay, and you haven't, and when we, did, you spoke with us prior to testifying? Yes. And by phone, not in person? Yes. So you still to this day haven't seen the video? No. After, after the guy punched Maddie, uh, what did you see after that? After he punched Madison, Dante punched him twice. He went under the water the first time, he came back up, Dante punched him one more time, and then it looked like he was punching them back, but he was actually stabbing them. And when you say them, who did you see? And when I say he, I, you didn't know who he was at the time? No, sir. Now you know to him to be Nikolai Mew? Yes. Okay. And when, when you said you saw him, you thought hitting people, who did you see him hit? Riley, Dante, Tony, AJ. And when he... When you thought he hit Riley, could you see what she was doing? She was yelling. Was, did you see her push or strike at Mew at all? No. She turned around and started running. And what about, um, what do you recall about seeing uh, Dante hit? When Dante was hit, it, it just looked like he was being punched, and he did. He retreated also. And did you ever see Dante hit Mew after those first two strikes you saw? No, sir. And when Dante was, when you thought hit, turned out to be stabbed, was that sometime after Dante had hit Mew? Yes. Sustained. Why don't you, as best as you can remember, what do you remember about, do you remember this specific sequence? No. Okay. And I wanna bring up some stills here. Can we bring up 1980? And do you see yourself in that image? I do. Can you describe where you are in that image? Standing up behind the two kids. And are you in the white bikini top there in the background? Yes. Was your hair light back then? Yes. And you're facing pretty much straight on towards the cameraman and the person off to the left? Yes. Okay, can we go to 2166? Where are you in that? Or do you see yourself in that photo? Yep, in the same spot. Facing straight on towards the cameraman, essentially? Yes. Can we go to 2564? Mm -hmm. 
see yourself in that still frame? Yes. And Standing up between the twos. Can we go to 3003? Three zero zero three. Do you see yourself in that one also? Yes. Same thing looking towards the incident. Yes. Okay. Do you recall do you recall seeing where Nikolai went afterwards? Straight back up into the woods. Do you see him go towards the woods or into the woods? Towards the woods. And then when you saw him going towards the woods, um, did you look away before you actually saw where he went? Yes. Did something else catch your attention? Yes, Riley did. So you were basically standing by your tubes and watched everything? Yes. And you're stone cold sober? Yes. Was, do you remember, did, it, did the incident happen fast, slow? How do you remember it? It happened really fast. Is it hard to say exactly what happened first, second, third? Yes. You're sure you saw him uh, punch Maddie? Yes. And you, did you tell these, were you interviewed by law enforcement shortly afterwards? Yes, I was. And you told, did you tell law enforcement what you saw? Yes, I did. Ms. Lowell, um, you say that you, do you hear this group of six, the six boys, young men asking for help? Yes. Okay. And do you look over and see what's going on? Yes. Okay. And you see that there's one man there, right, Mr. Mew? Yes. Okay. And you say to the police that this guy was harassing them, right? Yes. Okay. What did you see him doing? He was holding their tubes. He would not let them go. He would not let the tubes go? No. Did you see Mr. Mew walk around the tubes and walk away from the boys downstream a little bit? No. You didn't see that? No. Okay. At that point, you say Madison gets off her tube and starts to walk over there. Is that right? Yes. And do you recall Mr. Mew walking over toward Madison? No, Madison met him. At the tube. At the tubes? Yes. So you're saying that Mr. Mew didn't walk towards Madison at all? No. If I told you the distance from where you were, where your group was to the incident, is about 131 feet. Sound about right to you? Yes. Okay. So you're... 45 yards or so away. Yes. Yes? Okay. And when Madison, so you say Madison walks over to Mr. Mew, she just starts yelling at him, doesn't she? She put her hand up like this and said, get away from them. Well, what she actually said on tape was, go, go, 
Get your fucking ass. Objection, Go. Judge. What's the objection? Come on up, please, please come on up. <clears throat> Again, the remarks of the attorneys are not evidence. What the witness says is evidence. So if the witness says something different than what the attorney says, you may disregard the attorney's suggestion entirely. Next question, please. Um, Ms. Lowell, do you hear uh, Ms. Cohen say, go, go, get your fucking ass, go? Do you hear that? I do not. You see her pointing down river to Mr. Mew, is that right? Yes. Okay. And do you see at that point Dante? Yes. yes. Let me finish, okay. Next to Madison. Yes. Okay. Do you see Dante pointing for him to go down river as well? Yes. Do you know where or if Mr. Mew has a group with him? No. Okay. So you wouldn't know if the group is actually behind you almost, right? And he's got to go the other way. Upriver to get out to get out of that situation, right? You wouldn't know that. No. Okay. And would you describe Madison Cohen as getting in Mr. Mew's face? No. You wouldn't describe her as getting in his personal space. No. Do you see her put her hands on him? No. Do you know if she did? Yes. You know she did? I know she didn't. You, all right, so you're testifying under oath not only that you didn't see it, but you know she didn't do it. Right? I know she didn't. Okay. Did you see Riley put her hands on Mr. Mew? No. And you've you've testified that you saw Mr. Mew punch Madison. Yes? Yes. Okay. You don't recall with which hand, is that fair? That's fair. Do you see Madison come back to your group? Yes. Okay. Is she holding her face? Yes, she came straight to me. What side of her face is she holding? Her right. Do you have a phone with you? I do, it's shut off. No, I don't mean right now. Yes. <laughs> back then I meant. No. Okay. Um, on that day, it's okay. On that day, you didn't have a phone with you. No. Okay. There comes a time when I think Madison is calling nine one one though, so she has a phone, right? To your knowledge. We found a phone and hit a button to call nine one one. Okay. Here's my question. Do you recall anyone taking photographs of Madison's face? No. The police. You saw the police take photos yes. of her face. Okay. Can I ask you this? There's a gentleman on the end there with a beard. Is 
he the gentleman who was taking the photographs of her? There were several police there, not just one. Okay. So I you don't know. That? I believe I spoke with him once, okay. but I've spoke with probably six or seven officers. Can you describe um, the punch? It's been described various ways in court. Can you describe it? It was just a quick punch, as you would see somebody punch somebody. So it was, it's been described different ways. So it was just a punch, like straight on punch. Yes. With his right hand. No? I don't know. Okay. And at that point, you see Dante punch Mr. Mew in the face. Yes. And you see Mr. Mew go down, is that right? Yes. Okay. And you see Dante hit him again. He comes back up and Dante hits him one more time. Do you recall Dante hitting Mr. Mew while Mr. Mew was on his back in the water? No. Okay. Are you saying that you saw Mr. Mew rise to his feet and Dante hit him again? Yes. What did, when that happened, did Mr. Mew go down again? No, that was when he just started punching. Okay, so just wanna make sure I'm hearing you. Mr. Mew gets punched in the face by Dante and you see him go down. Yes. yes. Then he rises up. Yes. He being Mr. Mew. <clears throat> he rises back up. Dante punches him again in the face. And then Mr. Mew, I think you describe it as gets to punching. Yes. Okay. Do you, you know, do you know A.J. Martin? I very briefly met him before our tubing trip. Okay. Do you, from your vantage point. Do you see A.J. Martin come up behind Mr. Mew and shove him? No. Do you see Mr. Mew, as you describe it, punch or stab A.J. Martin? Yes. Do you see A.J. Martin, when, when that's happening, pushing Mr. Mew backwards into the water? No. Do you see Dante, I'm sorry, do you see uh, Anthony Carlson get stabbed? Yes. Do you see Anthony put his hands on Mr. Mew, on Mr. Mew's kind of backside, when I say backside, like his back, shoulder area, before that happens? No, because he was facing him. Okay. I know you don't know or didn't know Isaac Schumann. Did you see the interaction between Mr. Mew and Isaac Schumann? No, I did not. Okay. Did you see the interaction between Mr. Mew and Dante? Yes. Okay. And do you recall when that happens in this kind of like sequential events. Dante was the second or third person. Okay. So you didn't see Dante and Mr. Mew have contact after everything was done when Dante No, was because they had come running to me. Okay. So <clears throat> to make sure I understand. In your recollection, Dante is second or third? Yes.
Just one second, Jimmy. for you. Thank you for your time today. Yeah. Hold on a second. There might be another question. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Um, Shana, what I, what the, do you recall the questions I asked you on direct, generally? I'll, I'll be more specific. Your interview with law enforcement, um, has this gotten a lot more detailed, the questions you've been asked here, than what you talked about with law enforcement? Yes. So you're trying to remember back almost two years ago. Yes. You're trying your best to answer as truthfully as you, the best you can remember. Yes. We're, given where you were about 130 feet away, your ability to see would, would it have been affected depending on if there's other people between you and what's going on? Yes. <laughs> And you testified on direct that you couldn't remember the sequence of events of when who, when people were hit, turned out to be stabbed. Are you so? Do you know? Do you know for sure that Dante was the last one stabbed? Objection. No. Sustained, but she's answered. If you hear objection, just hold your answer. Okay. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Mr. Schaffelsey. There were there was a group of people around that incident when it was going on. Is that fair? Not until after after the fight ensued. We were the only people at first. I, I guess what I'm going to ask you is this, Judge, my approach. Yes. I'm going to show you what has been moved into evidence as Exhibit Number One Hundred Four. Okay. Yes. show you or I'm showing you what is exhibit number 104 okay yes now if you look at 104 there's a G1 I'm telling you that stands for the group of boys yes okay and G2 is the general location of where I'm calling it the Carlson group where your tubes were yes right? these little dots have initials on them do you see that yes okay and those initials are the names of people that were involved in this yes okay do you recognize what rm would be riley okay and mc madison okay so you i'm not going to quiz you but you understand that's kind of where we're going yes okay this has been well, can i ask you this would you agree that based on your rec recollection of events that this is an accurate depiction of the general location of where people were at the time that Madison and Riley were standing in front of Mr. Mew. Yes. Okay. And so tell me if this is fair. You're around G2. Can you bring that up there? Can you bring up 104? Um, Can we have it? Maybe you just Can I just use this, Judge? Yes. Okay. All right, can you, I don't want to, can you see that okay? Is that okay, ma'am? Yep. Okay. So you're, you're standing in the general direction of 
where it says G2. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And you're looking toward what's going on, right? Yes. All right. And would you agree there are people between you and Madison? Yes. Okay. And having people between you and Madison could impact your ability to see specifics, right? Yes. Okay, and that is that one of the reasons it was difficult for you to see how she was struck? Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Church, can we approach real fast? Yes. We're almost done. Uh, Mr. Anderson. This is frame two one six six. I'll be try to be really brief. Yes. So in that still frame two one six six. Can you see Dante? Yes. Can you see yourself? Yes. And then can we have the Elmo? On this diagram 104, is Dante in between and would be obstructing view from G2? Yes. In that still frame, was he obstructing your view? Yes. Can we, let's bring up, can we bring up two one? I object, Judge. She's answered. Bring it up. I'll let, I'll let both sides clean it up from time to time. I guess I'll re-ask it. 
depending on where, what you're viewing, you know, whether, whether you're looking at something to the left of this frame, or to the right of the frame, or directly on the, behind Dante, it would depend on whether Dante is blocking your view or not. Is that fair? Yes. Mr. Shafferson, can you bring up 2166 here? That's this. That's what I want. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready if you're ready. Ms. Lowe, while you might have a clear shot without Dante in your way right there, you don't have any idea if anything's actually happening at that moment, do you? No. That's it. Ms. Lowell, thank you. You may step down. Please see the witness coordinator in the back and she'll tell you where to go next. Who is the next witness? Williams, uh, please come forward. Please face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but Please have a seat in the witness chair. <clears throat> Just messed up. Your Honor, I need one second here. I'm having a uh computer malfunction. Sorry. All right, sir, can you state your name? Um, what town do you live in? How old are you? Did you, were you part of a group of uh, folks that were tubing down the river, the Apple River, on uh, your Somerset back on July 30th, 2022. Uh, was part of that group, did that include Nicol Nikolai Mew? Yes. Did you know Mr. Mew? Uh, how did you get invited to their, their tubing party? Co-workers. All right. Um, did you know all the folks that were in the group? Yeah. Oh, was Mr. Mew a co-worker of yours? No. Was he the only person that wasn't a co-worker of yours? Had you ever spent any time with them before that day? No. Um, <clears throat> at some point, as you're as you're going down the river, um, did one of your party lose a phone? Yes. Do you remember who that was? No, I don't. Um, was there some any concern by the person who lost the the phone? Objection. No foundation. Sustained. Did you hear the person who lost the phone make any comments about that? Objection. No foundation. Sustained. Is your tubing, your group of tubes, are they connected together yes. with rope? Yes. Uh, did you, how many tubes did you have, if you remember? Be about eight. All right. Um, were you able, as you were going down the, the river that day, to converse with the other folks in your party? Yes. Um, once the phone was lost, did you, were you able to hear um, the conversation about the phone being lost? Yes. All right, did uh, Mr. Mew at some point indicate that he wanted to go look for the phone? Yes. Did you see him do that? Yes. All right. At some point, well, first, did you see where he went? Yeah. Where did he go? He went down the river, though. I don't know how far it was. It's quite, it's quite, it's probably good to have it, well, I'll say about 20 yards, 30 yards. All right. Did he, was he... Did you see him near any other groups? No. Eventually, did you realize that um, he was getting close to a group? Oh, um, I seen him. I don't know. I don't know if it was an argument. I don't know what it was. But I seen him competition. And um, pretty much all I seen him. I looked away for a quick second. 
Yeah. All right. Well, in be, you're, you're getting ahead of me, uh, Mr. Williams. So when you saw him go off to look for the phone, uh, was he wearing snorkeling gear? All right. Um, did you have some concern about that? Objection. Irrelevant. Sustained. Did you have a conversation with the police um, after this matter occurred um, on August 3rd of 2022? Yes. And with that, was that your home in Inver Grove Heights? Right. <clears throat> and do you remember telling the police that you had some concern? Objection. Leading and irrelevant. Sustained. I, I don't understand why his concern is our concern today. So that's why it's not relevant. It is a leading question. Judge, can we, can we approach? Yes. Mr. Smithstead. Um, Mr. Williams, if I showed you a transcript of your conversation with Investigator Sheppey from August 3rd of 2022, would that help you refresh your mind with, with regard to or your memory with regard to any concerns you had that day? Objection. He never said his memory's not refreshed. He's not been asked the question because the previous. Did you have any concerns that day with Mr. Mew getting in his snorkeling gear and snorkeling down by these other groups? Yes, it is. Right. And do you remember telling the officer what your concern was? That people was going to think that he was up to no good as a predator or whatever. That's, that's my thing. You know, that's my thing. Okay. <clears throat> All 
as you were keeping an eye on him, did you see him um, talking to a, two women? No. Uh, did you see anything that may have happened between him and the, the two women? No. Um, did you see him involved in a fight with anybody? I did look away for a second, and when I looked back, we did see a brawl in the water where me and Nesto start rushing towards him to help him out and he'll break it up. All right, when you, when you saw that, was, was Mr. Mew in the water already? Yeah. All right. Um, the group, was one of the groups that he was snorkeling near, did you see what, what, what the age was of the, the, the folks in that group? And who was snorkeling with? Sit, sit, ask me a question. When he was there? snorkeling downriver from where your group was, huh? were you able to determine the ages of any of the people downriver that he was snorkeling by? No. All right. Do you remember having a conversation with uh, Investigator Williams, or pardon me, Investigator Sheppy about that? I might have. I don't, I don't remember. All right. If I showed you the transcript, would that refresh your memory? That's one. Page. I got approached, Coach. Yes. Mr. Williams, I, I'll ask you to read from the middle of the page down a couple of lines and let me know when you're done. Does yeah. that refresh your memory? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what did you tell the police you thought the age of the boys were? Skip, say that again. What did you think the ages of the people were in the tubes down river? 17 to 20. <clears throat> Is that what you told the police? Could be, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I forgot to ask you, just oh, strike that. When you first saw the physical altercation occur, did you, what did you think was happening? I don't know. We just rushed down and helped him out, you know? All right. Did, did you have a belief that Mr. Mew wasn't involved in the fight at first? seeing people on him, so he had to be involved. <clears throat> Is it fair to say it's been, I don't know, almost two years since you talked to the investigators back on August 3rd of 2022? Yep. And you may not remember exactly everything you told them? It's possible. Um, do you have a memory of telling them what you thought was happening in the fight before realizing that Mr. Mew was involved in it? Yes. What did you tell him? I think I may have told him that I was concerned about the young kids being intoxicated. We didn't want to stop by them. We want to stay far away from them as possible, but, the, you know, the pedophile thing, that's, that's, that's why I watched. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want that, you know. That's sure. possible what I could have told him. I didn't want to think, you know, Anyone to think that he was up to no good. Sure. He's looking for a fall. Did you see Mr. Mew uh, injuring anybody? No. Um, by the time you got down to him, was he already up on his feet and heading back? Yes. Did you see any injuries on him? No. He wasn't bleeding? I didn't see anything. Um, at some point, did you realize that there had been some folks uh, that were injured in the river? Yes. Folks that were injured in the river in the spot where he was involved in the altercation? Laying along the side of the river, yes. Um, did, as you walked up to Mr. Mew, did he say anything to you as he came up to you? No. Did he ever say anything to you about what happened? Never, we, we never spoke after that again. We were, after that, we all goes, everything was just quiet.
<clears throat> How serious were the injuries of the folks that you saw injured? Objection beyond his opinion, I guess. S sustained. What did Foundation. you see? Oh, pardon me. What did you see as far as the injuries of the folks in the river? Bad. <laughs> did you call 911? Yes, I did. Did you call 911 more than once? Probably about two or three times, but I'm not sure. Why did you do that? Concerned about the people on the edge, uh, laying, on, laying on the bank of the river. Did you attempt to give other assistance? No, I just went and met paramedics at the river, met the bridge, and kind of walked them back where everybody were, you know. Uh, with those paramedics, were there some law enforcement folks too? Um, yes, there were. And I think if I understand what you're saying, you sort of directed them to where these injured people were? Yes. Anybody else from your group do that? No. You're the only folk, only person from your group that, that came over to help? I think so, yeah. At some point, did you end up walking back to your group? Yes. Um, did anybody say anything to you about what you, what you saw? No. Anybody ask any questions? No. Did you eventually float away? Got on tube and we didn't listen to no music. We just floated and just ready to get off the river at that time. We didn't want to be there no more. Was there any kind of conversation as you're floating down the river? Never. Uh, at some point, uh, did the officers think that you had some videos on your phone of what had happened? Had you taken some videos that day? Yeah, I took videos, just our party together. Right. And when we stopped, we you know, took videos of each other, not of the, that's about it. You didn't have any videos of this actual incident? No, no. stayed uh, in that area before floating down the river to the end? Mm. Could have been about 15 minutes. How long did it take you to reach the end uh, of the, the trip from where this incident happened? Probably about another half an hour, um, 20 minutes to half an hour. What did you do once you got to the end? Turn the tubes in and just prepare to go back to our cars, get on the bus and go back to our cars. All right. Um, <laughs> At some point, did, was there more contact with law enforcement at the end? Yes. Did you witness that? Yes. All right. Nothing else. Mr. Nelson? Uh, Mr. Vaughn Williams, I've seen it written both ways. <coughs> Williams. Yeah, well, it's Eric Vaughn Williams, yeah. So your middle name's Vaughn, but your last yeah. name's Williams? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Williams, I'm Aaron Nelson. I represent Mr. Mew. I want to ask you some questions, too, okay? Yeah. You were with Nick that day, right? Right. Um, there's been some pictures that I think have been... Like 106 through 110. Please. There's been some pictures of your uh, party of 10 people or so mm -hmm. on the river. Have you seen any of those photos from that day? Yeah. Exhibit 112. You see yourself in that picture? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. And mm -hmm. next to you is, is Nick Mew, correct? Yep. And in that photo, you see him wearing sunglasses, is that right? Yes. Um, do you remember that day? Did he have sunglasses on most of the time? Yes. Were there times that you saw him 
uh, you said he saw him with a snorkel and goggles, right? Yes. And he certainly went up to look for the phone, and I'm going to get to that. Yes. But prior to looking for the phone, had you seen him resting in the river or using his snorkel and the goggles any time in the river? No. You didn't see that? No. Okay. Had you seen him at times without his sunglasses on during that trip? No. And then here's a, a photo 110. This photo, you You see Mr. Mew with a hat on? Mm hmm Is that yes? Yes, yes. That's all right. Um, were there times that day that you saw him with a hat on? I'm not sure. With the hat on? Yes. I'm not sure. I can't, oh. I can't remember. I'll be honest, I can't remember. Okay. Do you remember whether it was, do you remember not having the hat on or having the hat on or you're unsure about either? I'm not sure about either. Okay. That's fair. Um, Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 111. Does that appear to be another photo of your group? Yep. Yes. Move for the admission uh, to 111. Any objection? No. 111 is received. Um, and you see Mr. Mew uh, in that photo there. He's got sunglasses and the uh, hat on, correct? Yes, I do. Mm. All right. You're not in that photo? No. Is that right? No. Okay. So sometimes people would wander off from the group maybe and do something else? Yes. Or you're just perhaps just not in that photo. You might be just behind the person or taking a picture. I can't remember. Oh. Um, in all of those pictures we saw, Mr. Mew had a shirt on. Is that right? Right. Do you, and then uh, I believe when he went to, with his snorkel to look for the phone, do you remember, was his shirt on or was his shirt off? I can't remember. Did you have a shirt that day? Yes. Did you sometimes take your shirt off? No. Okay. You kept it on the whole time? Um, did you snorkel at all? No. <laughs> did you get in the water and swim? No. Okay. Um, w there was your group of people was generally people my age, your age? Right, yes. Okay. Um, some people were having a couple of beers? Yeah, yes. Did you observe, were you intoxicated? No, no. Did you observe anybody in your group that you thought was intoxicated? No. Did you, were you worried about anyone being loud or obnoxious or rowdy or anything along those lines? No, no. You'd said that you had, I think, and I want to really make sure we get this, you know, you were concerned people were going to think he was up to no good, that he was a predator. You said that, right? Yes. I want to really get into that, okay, a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's a, something that you had in your own mind, right? Yes? Yes, yes. And that's a concern that you had when you learned he was going to go snorkel down the river, correct? Right. You, you didn't think he was up to no good, agreed? No, no. You agree? I agree, I agree. You didn't think he was a predator, you agree? I agree. You had no reason to believe, based upon what you had seen him do that day, that he was preying on little girls. No. Right? You agree with that? I agree with that. And, but you, like a lot of us, are able to kind of think about what are other people going to think, right? Exactly. Yes. And I would imagine on the river that day, you saw other groups of people, right? Yes. And some of those other groups of people appeared to be intoxicated? Yes. And some of the, you said young people, right? Yep, yep, yes. And you look about my age, like, how old does somebody need to be to not be considered young by you? How, you said how old? Uh, yeah, so when you say young people, do you mean like littles, or do you just mean like 25 and under? Teenagers and 25 and under 30. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yep. So it's not like they're young, young. No. So the people that you saw on there, you saw some people in this age group and teenagers, 20-somethings that were intoxicated, correct? Yes. And based upon your observations, you were kind of worried about some of those people, right? Yes. Based upon your life experiences, you know a group of drunk young men might not be people you want to be around, correct? Yes. And that was a concern that you had, right? That's a concern we all had. 
Sure. Mm -hmm. And that uh, you're like, look, drunk young people, when they get together, bad things can happen sometimes, right? Right. And that's why you were trying to be kind of more conservative, like, let's just stay together here. Let's not mix ourselves up with these drunk young people that might be dangerous. We had to make an agreement not to stop by young people, get, you know, stop a little farther down the river. And why were, you, why, why were you, personally, all you can talk about is you, why were you concerned about not stopping by young people? Intoxication. Okay, and why were you worried about young people that were intoxicated? Do they cause problems sometimes? They could. It's a possibility, but I see. Do they have conflicts sometimes? It could be conflicts. All right. Do they sometimes, are you uh, concerned about their decision making when they're intoxicated and in a group of young men? I'm just worried about what Nick was doing. Looking for a phone. I didn't want anybody to think sure. that he was up to no good. And if there were non-intoxicated people, you wouldn't be worried about that, correct? I'll still be worried about that. What was that? I, I would still be worried about that. But you were more worried because they were intoxicated. Right. And I imagine you were more worried because there's more of them, correct? Object, Your Honor. Sustained. You had said... Um, I think you'd said before, we were out there with his wife and these young guys, they're quick to test us. That's what you told the police, right? I think you're talking in general, not that day, but in general, did you feel as if sometimes young men as a group are quick to test you older men? Well, yeah, I do remember that conversation that day. Uh, you you did say that. Talk to me, yeah. Yes. And that's because you're, in your life experience, sometimes young men get a kick out of challenging perhaps an older guy, right? Objection, Your Honor, Robert. Overruled. You can answer if you are able to. Yeah, I, yeah, I ran into it a couple of times, so yeah. yes. And that's, why, and that's why you were concerned, yeah. right? When you saw, you saw Nick come back, is that right? Yes. Um, Fair to say he was quiet? He's quiet. Nesto, guy Nesto grabbed Nick and walked him back, and I kept going forward. Okay, so your interaction with Nick there on the river was very brief, right? At that, at, at Nick, well, with everything that went down, me and Nick didn't talk at the, you know. I'm just, it sounds like you're walking in this direction towards Nick, mm -hmm. and then Ernesto gets there first, is that right? Right. And then Ernesto grabs Nick and helps Nick get back to the group in some manner, right? Yes. You don't know because you're not looking at him, right? No. Because you continue on in that direction to go down to see what all the yelling and the screaming is about, correct? Right? Yes. Yeah. And at some point, 15 minutes or so, you eventually go back to the group where Nick is, correct? Yes. And at that point, Nick is sitting there quietly, correct? Yes. You don't hear him say anything, agreed? No. Do you make observations of his person? Yes. He appears to be somber? Yes? Quiet, yes. Have you heard the expression, white as a ghost, before? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, I did. Did he have that look about him? He had a look. You know, yeah, you know, just say he had a look, and um, yes, he did. Have you seen people when they're in shock before? No, I personally, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you know what that looked like if you saw it? <coughs> Probably would. Yeah. You look like he was in shock. Objector, right. the foundation. Sustained. Wait for the next question. That's all. Mr. Smestad, anything else? Thank you, Mr. Williams. You may step down. Thank you.
Uh, please see the witness coordinator on your way out and she'll give you further instructions. It's 4.10. Do you have a short witness? Is there any administrative matters that we can tend to? I mean, offering exhibits that need to come in? Yes. Anything we can do in the presence of the jury is my point. Oh, oh. <laughs> Mr. Shrafasi? No, I can't. I don't think we're in that position at this point, Judge. All right. So given the hour, I think we will simply adjourn. Uh, we'll send everyone home. I'll give you the same reminders uh, as before. Uh, no talking about the case. Do not begin your deliberations. Do not conduct any independent research or investigation. Do not visit the scene. Uh, do not speak with the media, the attorneys, the parties, the public about the case. Uh, and do not uh, read any media accounts or engage in any social media accounts about the trial. Uh, we will get started tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, please uh, come back at that time, and we'll get a prompt start to the trial. Please take the jury out. All right. Please be seated. We are outside the presence of the jury with the attorneys and Mr. Mew. Um, we do have at least one illustration on the uh, easel uh, that needs to be marked. And I think we have another one over here with the clerk. That too has to be marked. So we have a record of what it is. Um, Mr. Anderson, I, I can't remember who you used the one with the clerk. So you'll have to uh, connect the dots for us. Oh, that was Anthony was, Carlson. Was Tony. Yeah, Tony Carlson. That's 77. So the Tony Carlson illustration is Exhibit 77? Yes. Yes, although I, yes, it was used during that. I believe I objected and it sustained. So, I mean, you can certainly mark it, but I don't know the... The objection was to drawing Isaac on there, not everything else. Yeah, I mean, it was it was used during the trial, so I just want to have it marked. Sure. Um, I, I don't know what value it will have, but uh, I just don't want to lose sight of marking things that have been Judge, and I don't think used. I've offered the um, group photo of Nikolai's group. No objection. Offer. What number is it? Just, we're just labeling A. What's the small one? Uh, 12. Right, 12A, Judge. All right, so 12A is the blow up of the group shot of Mr. Mew's group, correct? Yes. <clears throat> and which illustration is this? This is the one I did with Sandy Mew. 80. 80? Okay. Yes. So I'll have that marked. All right, is there any other exhibit that needs to be addressed? Mr. Shrafasi, any exhibits that we need to tend to? I think we marked them all. You got them all? Yep. Is there something you wanted to talk about outside the presence of the jury? I, well, I don't know if you would want to put on the record the objection there was the discussion at the bench. You want to make a sidebar record, Mr. Uh, Nelson? I think it was Mr. Shrafasi with the third round of questioning maybe is probably the... No, I think the one we're talking about is uh, Mr. Williams and his concern about Mr. Miyu's intentions being misunderstood by others. We had a lengthy sidebar about that, whether it was relevant or irrelevant. Yeah. And you made an objection. 
I objected that it was irrelevant. Your Honor listened to arguments and eventually ruled that it was minimal probative value, but enough to be relevant, and so we did what we did. Okay. If you want to add to the record, Mr. Nil, or Mr. Anderson? I think our, our point uh, was there's been significant challenges against the children's credibility and that they were just, they should, they jumped to conclusions, but then we have a adult who had the same concerns. So I think that's why we thought it was highly relevant. Okay. And that, that's what persuaded me was drawing the connection back to the um, Schumann group um, and it validated their perceptions or concerns. Uh, again, it had minimal probative value, but it was relevant. We weren't dwelling on that topic, um, so I don't think there's any uh, unfair prejudice to the defense. Something else? No, I was going to just articulate my argument, but probably not necessary. All right. Okay, we will uh, resume tomorrow, 8 a.m. We're in recess. Some of these people we might be able to eliminate, but there's... And good afternoon from our Fox 9 streaming center. You, of course, have been watching the Apple River stabbing trial in St. Croix County Circuit Court in Hudson, Wisconsin. The 17th state witness just finishing up on the witness stand, Eric Von Williams. He uh, was uh, tubing uh, with Nikolai Miu and friends on July 30th, 2022. You heard his testimony. Uh, sharing some insights uh, from that day uh, and his reaction to it. I do want to call up our graphic that we have ready to roll that kind of shows these groups of tubers. For the first time, we heard from members of the MIU group today, this third day of trial. And again, these are the ba basically the three uh, major players and in, in this tubing, uh, deadly tubing encounter. Uh, of course, on the bottom of the screen there, the Miu group, Isaac's group is the uh, Stillwater teenagers in the middle of the river that have that confrontation uh, with Miu. Isaac Schumann, of course, killed there. And then the Carlson group, the young adults, four of them end up stabbed as they come over initially uh, to try to shoo Miu away from those Stillwater teenagers. Interesting to hear from Eric Von Williams. I thought he provided a little bit of um, uh, support uh, for his friend, uh, uh, in terms of uh, Miu's um, attitude that day, uh, but he did raise concerns about putting on the snorkel uh, gear, uh, what it would look like. I don't care if he's looking uh, for a phone or not, uh, he testified, uh, but what others might think, uh, even using, I think, the word predator, uh, or uh, yeah, predator there, um, as it related to Nikolai Miu donning uh, the snorkel and goggles to search for that lost cell phone. That was being used by the Miu group, we learned today, to provide their music. So if it's provide their music, you could see why perhaps once it disappeared, it might have become uh, significant for Nikolai to think about going to get it. It was interesting hearing earlier in the day something we learned from Miu's ex-wife, Sandra, who ended up, uh, she was called by the state, but certainly seemed uh, more friendly uh, to questioning by the defense. Uh, but she said she had... Uh, sort of encouraged Nikolai to bring snorkeling gear basically along the lines that the Apple River is cold. People tend to lose jewelry. She told him not to wear any jewelry, but perhaps uh, he'd want to bring the snorkel and goggles uh, to, I suppose, look for jewelry lost in the river that day. So perhaps explaining why he had that snorkel gear uh, ready to go and would then subsequently apparently draw the attention of those Stillwater teenagers drunk. Uh, apparently some chirping begins. And as Jawan Cockfield has testified, Miu said something about looking for little girls and that really ratcheted things up. With that, let's bring in Mike Bryant one final time. Oh, there's the uh, close up of the Isaac uh, Schumann group. I want to bring in our uh, criminal defense attorney trial lawyer, uh, Michael Bryant, for one last uh, thought on this case. Uh, you heard those last couple of witnesses. They were on the river. Um, they cut both ways, I thought, uh, um, in terms of what they provided this jury, uh, one from the MIU group, one from the Carlson group. Michael, your thoughts on their testimony late this afternoon? Well, this afternoon was interesting. Um, and that last witness, 
Um, it'll be, yeah, it, it'll, it would be interesting getting the uh, minds of the jurors to see what they thought of that last witness and what they thought came out of that last witness. Um, the, 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 the afternoon witnesses were a good example of how the prosecution is trying to use people kind of, uh, in a way that, that are outside the video that are, that are not tainted by looking at the video that are just giving their impressions of what they saw and what part of it is and why they think that, you know, this, that, that this was done, you know, questions about whether or not he was injured, whether or not that he looked like he, you know, anything that had been done to him. Um, and in the end, you get these horrible uh, renditions of people that have been, you know, actually stabbed in the and the person that lost his life. Um, alternatively, the defense is using them to say their memory's bad or to bring out anything good that they can about, you know, that the young teenagers, they're drinking, they're dangerous. And, you know, they created this whole giant problem. Um, so it was it was an interesting afternoon and it was a good example for on both sides of what they're trying to do with the case. Mike, as it relates to Sheena Lowell, the, the, the young woman, I, I, shouldn't, I don't want to uh, try to guess her age, but she had taken the witness stand right before Eric Von Williams. Um, and, you, and, and the state, you know, the defense on cross-examination really tries to push hard on, on, on memories and how they differ today versus what they said to police two years ago. Could they go too far? Does that have the potential to either make those witnesses sympathetic or the jury just whether they turn it out, tune it out? It just seems they're awfully aggressive. Is there a line they're, they're getting close to uh, by challenging all these quote unquote memories given the video exists? Well, it's those different parts and what they're trying to get, you know, each side is trying to get out of these witnesses as far as what they can, you know, advance as far as their, their evidence goes. Again, you know, and we've said this a number of times, the defense doesn't have to prove anything. They just have to use witnesses to say their memory's bad or or they, they got this thing wrong. Now, what's interesting about the whole thing is you got a video or you got two videos now to look at. So in part of it, some jurors might not care. I mean, if someone gives an opinion, it's different. Like so what we still got the video and this is what the video shows in 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 their opinion but you know it's one of those things that they keep doing to try to take the credibility away from witnesses and create more chaos as far as what the defense is trying to do i may not have a question in this it may be just uh, some paul bloom commentary here but the aftermath of this stabbing incident sort of just baffles me from where i sit uh Eric Von Williams, uh, you know, he calls 911 a couple of times there. He's concerned about those injured on the river, but then just sort of let Nikolai Miu come back to the group. Uh, he sits there. They're quiet. They go down river. It, it just that aftermath, um, you know, at some point I'll have to kind of perhaps do this trial, understand more about what's going on. But Miu isn't arrested. I mean, it's not like he runs and flees, is our understanding. He floats down the river and gets out, and that's where he's eventually arrested. I just find this aftermath with five people gravely, you know, one gravely injured, maybe two gravely injured or critically injured, three others hurt, blood everywhere, how, how that group just sits there and, and just floats by i i just i don't know um uh finally mike before I, I know you wanted to say good night you had you talked about how this judge is handling this case it does appear we're moving efficiently through we're through 17 state witnesses this judge seems quick decisive he gets uh you know i don't want to call him mad or anything at times but he's short with these lawyers he's trying to keep them on path on track here um as a as an experienced trial attorney did you have some some comments on judge waterman Question. So, right. Judge Waterman, your thoughts on how Judge Waterman's handling the case so far? Oh, the judge? Yeah, I know you wanted to talk about that to close this well, out. The thing that I've liked about the, you know, the judge, as far as what the judges have been able to do is, you know, the judge seems to stay out of the way and let them try their case. But when he rules, he rules decisively. I mean, he, whatever it is, he rules. He's told them a couple of times, I don't want talking objections because sometimes lawyers will try to add their objections by saying more things. And this judge has done a really good job of getting down to just, nope, I just want an objection. I'll rule on it. And he does. And then when he's wanted extra uh, argument, he's asked for that later on. And that's, that's a sign of a good judge. So he seems to be running a good trial overall. 
Well, we appreciate you, Mike Bryan, sticking with us throughout this full day of uh, third day of the Apple River stabbing trial. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, before we say goodnight to our streaming viewers, we did just want to provide uh, a little look back. Sandra Miu, we think her testimony is awfully important here. Uh, the now ex-wife of uh, Nikolai Miu, the defendant, uh, his fate soon in the hands of this jury charged with first degree intentional homicide, a conviction there. Uh, would uh, would send him to prison for life. His now ex-wife, she she filed papers just last month, nearly two years later, uh, but they are officially divorced. But her uh, testimony awfully sympathetic uh, to her now ex-husband. I want to close out our show today by looking back at her testimony. When you were tubing in the beginning, did Nikolai have a knife on him? I don't know if he did when we were tubing. In the beginning, at the start. He only did to cut the strings on the tubes. He went back to the Jeep and I thought he put it away. Okay. Um, and as you guys were tubing, so you didn't see him put it there, you just thought he put it in the Jeep when he went back to the Jeep? Yes. And. Is that what he brought it for, to cut the string? Yes. So you could tie up at the beginning? Yes. And okay. Actually, Ernesto called Nick and asked him to bring it. Okay. So we could, he could cut the string. And was Nikolai looking for the phone? Yes. What, what were you guys doing, the rest of the group, while Nikolai was looking for the phone? I don't know what they were doing. I was busy sitting in the inner tube because I had a hard time getting out of it. And I was just looking at the sky and the trees and just relaxing and enjoying my day. You guys, I mean, your group was kind of by a sandbar, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And when Nikolai was back at the group of young guys the second time, did something catch your attention? I happened to, every once in a while, I'd sit up in my tube just to see where Nick was at. And the one time I did that, it looked like there was people around him and all of a sudden I saw him on his hands and knees in the water and somebody was hitting him. Didn't you originally say that the first thing you noticed was all the young guys jumping out of their tubes? I may have. And it's that, that point that you alerted your group and sent some people over there? Or asked some people to go over there? Yeah, I had asked two of them. And who were those two people? Ariel and Ernesto. Nikolai has expressed to you frustration with you and your group because you didn't hear him yelling for help, right? Right. And he cast some blame on you and your group for not coming in response to his yells for help. Yes. And you responded, you couldn't hear any yells for help. No, couldn't hear it, not over the water. And some point during the second trip is when you notice, when you sit up in the tube, at some point you notice that there's some sort, something going on down there, correct? Yes. And it causes you concern? Yes. It causes you concern for the safety of your husband? Yes. Because you heard stuff, right? You heard like commotion, noises? I don't know if I heard anything, Okay. but when I sat up in the tube, I saw stuff. And when you saw them, did you see him surrounded by other people? Um, I'm trying to think if I saw that. I, I don't remember if I saw him surrounded by people. Did you see him raise his left hand and make a motion towards you or other people in the group? No, I did not see that. Okay. Had you seen that? Would you have responded? Oh, yes. Um, is your husband somebody that takes calling for help lightly? No. Have you ever seen him in a situation before where he calls for help? No. Is this the first time? Yes. Um, have you ever seen a situation before where you felt like he needed help? No. So what you saw, that must have been pretty scary. Yes.
Um, what exactly did you see that raised your level of fear so much that you said these other guys, they got to go down there? Um, I, that's, I don't remember if I saw anything before, but I remember seeing him in the water on his hands and knees and getting hit. Okay. Did, you, did he look to be in a safe space? No. And that's why you sent your friends down there for him? Yes. And you were worried about him? Yes.